They think you'd be up. There may as well be sat here stirring up walls as laid there stirring up ceiling. It's quite nice. I won't settle last night. I'll make a cup of tea. Oh, fine. What's these? Is that my mum and dad? It's your Christine. Are you on this? Oh, aye. On the back, out a road. I didn't recognise you with long hair. I was a different man then. Yeah. My uncle. Aye. Your uncle. So what do you get him out for? What? What do you get him out for? Don't know. I was thinking about thee and me. And what about us? Now, Dr. Ramsden, do you want to marry? What if he did? What's that got to do with Don't get it up, You're taking his side, aren't you? No. Just because you wasn't the one that brought me up. No, Ashley. Joshua was my son. I wish you hadn't said out now. I thought you'd help me, Dad, not make things worse. Oh, come on, Maria. I'm not going in the sink. Uh, who are you? Well, you've got worse taste in women than you have in boxer shorts. And that's saying something. Well, at least your Craig won't be kissing David Beckham's signature every night, which Rosie would have done if she'd won that football. Oh, Craig's been doing worse than that. The dad would take it off him for treating it like a football. You're joking. Didn't I give you a tenner? No, I don't think so. I must have, because I only had a tenner. No, I'm sure you only... What's up? It's an easy mistake. What are you telling me for? I never said out. I got mixed up, sorry. It's fine. See ya. See ya. Tell the difference between a mistake and someone getting light fingered, you know. <laughs> Tat. Here we go. Nelson's back to square one again. Just when Kevin were being sound mate the other day, even though he were trying to get stuff out of us. Didn't offer you your job back, though, did he? I'll get someone. Right, well, I'll get these then, shall I? Hey, there's no need to be like that. I want to work. Well, you wouldn't say that if you had to spend all day listening to Karen MacDonald's sappy gob. Want something to eat? Let me take him. Go up to Grandad. No, you're not having him. Oh, Ashley. You misunderstood me. I wasn't taking Ramsden's side. Oh, I had a bad night, that's all. I, I was just all let up about the past. Yeah. Well, me and our Joshua are different to me and you. I'm not saying it isn't. It's not me you should be angry with. The person to blame... Is not here, is she? Don't you dare say anything about Maxine. I'm only saying that we shouldn't be falling out about this when it's neither my fault nor is it yours. Right. It's about time. I'm not any good times at the minute. Look, I just wanted to say about yesterday. You know, getting it wrong, coming over. I'm sorry, mate. Aye. Uh, and I wasn't asked to come. I want to help. So, uh, if you want to talk. Talking just makes things worse. Yeah, well, you change your mind. See, can we start today again? I'm on your side, yours and Joshua. I want to help. Oh. You can't stop Matt Ramsden coming round trying to get him off me, can you? No one can. I've already lost his man. And if I lose him, what would he have left? Get Arthur. Give me a ring. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> no, well, I'm not going to ring him, am I? No, not that. That. Like it's got anything to do with you. Uh, excuse me, I've had to tell a pack of lies to my best mate because you can't keep your legs shut for more than two minutes. Oh, I'm late for work. Do you know, you're very good at your hobby. Have you ever thought of turning professional? Hey, go off, Fizz. What's up? No, I'm late for work. Oh, ask her! Working on a Sunday? Yeah, blame that. I used to have one of them. What's wrong with it? Uh, fuel's not coming through. Had it down as half our job yesterday. Need it ready for tomorrow. I know a good out of work mechanic could help you out. If I could, mate. You've got me wrong, you know that. I wish you did. Stacked up over there, but this wallet business just doesn't add up. Come on, mate, help us out. What do you know about this, Thomas Harris?
Sorry, mate. You see, my credit card's registered to this address now. It only occurred to me when I was ordering that they might deliver it what here. What is it, Geoffrey? I don't know. And there's no sign of him getting to the points. Norris, is this what you're after? There it is, thank you. You know, Emily, I don't know how you and me manage oh, without the shopping channel. I, I hear you've stopped backing that Critchley boy at last. Well, uh... About time. Maybe I can venture to the Rovers without the risk of hearing a side to the story I've no wish to be party to. So you, you think he's guilty now? I don't know what to think, Norris. I'm not saying you shouldn't see blokes. I'm just surprised it was so soon, that's all. Look, Toya, I've already had this once from Fizz today. It's been upsetting watching you go through all this. It's only because I care about you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. What are you thanking me for? Because if you and Maria hadn't dealt with all this in such a mature fashion, then Toya probably wouldn't be speaking to me now, let alone moving in. <laughs> mature? So, thanks. It was a close call. Well, you can say your thanks and you can... Did you ask for a big head on that? Was the barmaid too tight to concentrate? I said it's up to her who she sleeps with. But she can be so defensive. It's not like we're judging her. I mean, she's not hurting anybody. Better hide the silver. Hey, Look, if you've got nothing to do, put some overalls on. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Hey. Still no luck with the fuel? Yeah, well. Not wrong with the pumps or the lines. Is that a bump, has it? I do know that. It's done a good job with the bodywork. Our Angela had one in ours. One of them women versus gate buff things. <laughs> she still managed to blame me, like. So you know what it is then, do you? Come on, tell us. Probably something as simple, is it? I'm not sure I should give away my secrets. Well, maybe you should. Might make your life a lot easier. <laughs> Doubt it. Come on. Is it that bad, whatever you did? What I did? It got this big secret. I know what name your Craig put on his book by mistake. Harris. The same name what was on that card and the wallet you found said was yours. So come on, what have you done? I've done no. Change your name? Upsticks? Says to me you've got a past you want to forget. All right, look, I might have been wrong about this wallet. And I'm all for second chances, me, but if I don't know what you've done, how can I judge? Well, you were pretty quick to judge when you sacked me. What else could I do? I didn't know who Tommy Harris was. All I knew, it wasn't you. And it's still in. All right, maybe she'll put a call out, put an advert in the cabin. Will the real Tommy Harris please stand hey, just up? just shut it, will you? All right. Hey. You shout that around. You might as well torture our house with us, innit? Torture house? Well, it's happened once before. Just forget you ever heard that name. Just keep thinking of me as Tommy Nelson Thief. Yeah, but you don't know, are you? A thief? No. Listen, we've got nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, I'm proud of my family. What's that I'm insane, then? Look, I know the name you had, and I know there's people after you. So why are you telling me the reason going to make it worse? Look, trust me. I want to take a risk. I want to give you a chance. If you take a risk on me and you're wrong, what are you going to lose? A couple of tools, a bit of cash. If I trust you and I'm wrong, put my kids' lives in danger. What would you do? There you are. Cheers. He said we dealt with it in a very mature fashion. I'll give him flaming mature. Fred, Ashley spawned. Come through. Will you shut up about your flaming kitchen gadgets? We got them channels for sport, not for shopping. Yes, but it's a remarkable feat of engineering. Do you know, it can slice any vegetable to any thickness, from peel thin to very chunky. Well, as long as it slices up my Sunday dinner. The presenters were ever so enthusiastic about it. What is for dinner any road, Doris? Uh, nothing for you if you keep calling me that. It's roast chicken with peeled, chopped, sliced and diced vegetables. In fact, I should be getting on with it. Look, don't be late. Hey, Sunday dinner. Room for a little one. No chance. That's our reward for living with him and his flaming shopping channel. It's mostly jewellery on it, anyway. Uh, how do you know? Matt Ramsden? It was a one-off. If Maxime was still alive, I'd never look back on it. 
Are you sure Josh is his? No. Maxine was sure he wasn't so she said. But it didn't make a difference then. Joshua's man and Maxine's were a family. So, if Matt Ramsden hadn't got in touch, do you think you'd have been able to forget about him? Carry on as if Josh was your own? Yeah, I reckon so. Do you feel any different about your David than what you do about your Sarah? <laughs> yeah, of course. What, because one's your real son and the no, other one? because one's our David and one's our Sarah. Ashley, I love our Sarah as a daughter. Well, that's what she is to me. I feel like he's my son. Good. Because it doesn't always have to be down to blood, does it? There's plenty of people out there who love kids who aren't their own. Yeah, but what do we say to our Joshua? Matt Ramsden can show up any time and try and pull us apart. Can we have another knife from Fork? Please. Uh, please, can we have another knife from Fork, please? Hey, up, it's Kylie Minogue. Feel it. Feels it weird. Hey. You like it, then? Yeah, should do yours. So, uh, what's the special occasion? Nothing, I'm just practising for Friday. You know, Sarah's party. Party? Well, where's my invite? Uh, I'm not doing invites. Just bring a present and you're in. Expensive, then, are you? She is. But I'm not. There you go. Cheap dinner. Cheap girl. What more could you want? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? This meant to be toasted, please. Happy? Well, uh, you're obviously not. Yeah, well, I love spending my weekends giving in here, don't I? Well, everyone else is having a laugh. I tell you, I can't wait until I'm as far away from this place as possible. Why? Uh, toaster's playing up. Well, let's have a look. You're an electrician? Well, my dad was. My dad's a mechanic. Don't mean I could fix cars. You should come to Sarah's party this weekend. I'm not invited. Well, I'm inviting you. Uh, it's not your party. Yeah, well, it says on the invite and guest, so be my guest. I'll uh, check my diary. Yeah, do that. You should have done the air thing. And why do you think I haven't? Because I've got an eight-foot scar on my head, haven't I? Do you even look at me? No, I've got enough. I got that fiver back, didn't I? Well, she wouldn't have meant to shortchange you, that, Katie. Don't you start. Why does everybody assume I think the worst of folk? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tommy, are you going to put me out of my misery over that car or what? I was going to tell you, but I got distracted, didn't I? Sorry about that. That type of car, <laughs> once it gets a bang, it can trigger a fuel cough. Hey, look, forget it. Don't tell me. Yeah. Fix it for the first thing in the morning. You open up. I fancy a lion. You serious? Look, you're wrong thinking you can't trust me, you know. And I'd be happier knowing what I'm putting on the line. No, but... honest. <laughs> you know what you said? Well, you were right. You already know the bit that I've been trying to keep a lid on about the name and everything. It's the rest. Look, you don't have to tell me, mate. Yeah, but I need you to know why it can't go any further. Angela will take someone off the streets. Somebody who should have been in prison a long time ago. Your Angela did? Yeah. She used to be a barmaid. This one night, she's late home from work. I thought she'd just stayed home for a staff drink or she was chatting to some at regulars. Dead popular she were, where we used to live. You wouldn't think that round here, would you? Anyway, turns out she saw a man get killed right in front of her, stabbed. Everybody said they saw no, but Angela, she couldn't look the other way. She the only one? Oh, uh, everybody else bottled it. This bloke had some reputation. Anyway, the day the identity parade, we get this picture posted through a letterbox. It's of Angela getting off a bus near where she used to work. On the back it said, choose him, I'll be choosing you. She still picks him out. Went to court a lot. He got six years. We've got a life sentence. Here's his lot. Giving you a rough ride. Anyway, that's that's why I kicked off at you. I'm sorry. Secret safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> Say this. He stops here. Thanks. See you later. What if you just give in? His job back. You're joking. My decision and the discussion. So, you got me point? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Les, are you feeling all right? Me, really, right? 
Well, I don't want to get personal, but Emma tells me that you've washed your nets. Uh, Doris has washed our nets now. I haven't noticed. The shame of it. Do you think if I knock next door the lenders that rabbit so I can get the grass down a bit? Don't be daft. Rabbits can't operate lawnmowers. <laughs> Idiot. So, uh, you planning on washing me overalls? Yeah, I was going to put them in in the morning. Tomorrow? Well, I can't be going to work with damn gear on. <laughs> what work? Kevin Webster's took me back on. Why? Why? Because I'm a brilliant mechanic. And? And? You've told him. It's not like you think. It's more dangerous to keep him guessing. I think we can trust him. He, he seems sound. Are you mad? No. Relieved, I think. It's easier taking people's attitude when a couple of people know why we're being how we are. Yeah, well, let's not make habit of it, eh? Just because no bad's happened yet. Right, well, better get these in the wash. So, are you going to keep the muck off your clothes? You know, you've got to rise in the back of your head with this one. Five steps forward, and then he falls over. You've got all this to come. Yeah. So, uh, where is little Joshua? Oh, my dad's got him. Ah. Well, are you all right? I didn't see you in the pub earlier. No. Just so everyone keeps asking how I am all the time. Oh, sorry, mate. No, I don't mean that. I think our Joshua's keeping me busy. Well, it's a full-time job being a dad, you know. I won't settle again last night. Just kept waking me up. I just wish I could have had a row with Maxine over whose turn it was. It's always my turn now. It's good that he's got you. It's good that he's got that stability. Yeah. And he's going to help you through this and all. Me and Ben, we're making the most of this time, aren't we, eh? Him thinking that I can do no wrong. It's almost a shame they have to grow up and find out the truth. Come on, soldier. Hey, you Doris say he was making a full Sunday dinner? Yeah, but well, I'm not that hungry, me, after all them crisps, you know. I'll make him wear them flaming nets. Come on! <laughs> here, Doris. When we start pubbing it, we'll go to them trendy bars in town. Not in there, it's minging. That's if we're still going out, then. Why won't we be? He still annoyed me about before. No. How can you think I don't look at you? I never stop looking at you. You're gorgeous. No, I'm not. Take this off. Sarah, your hair covers your scar. And even if it didn't, I wouldn't feel any different about you. No. Hey, there's a machine in the toilets. Do you want me to get you something? Yeah, get lost, day. Eh? Ooh! <laughs> He's an idiot sometimes. He's probably just worried I'll get caught. What with having Bethany already. You should tell him. Don't think of me in that way. What way? You know, really fancying. Who says I don't really fancy her? Well, you've never tried anything. Candice says... Candice? What does she know? Well, d d didn't you tell her I don't want to rush you? No, because you've not said that. I, I thought that you didn't want to. Do you? Do you? Yeah, of course I do. You don't, do you? Yeah, of course I do. It's just, you know, that... Well, you... You've done it before, and, like, you've, you've got something to compare me with. I thought you loved me. I do. Yeah, well, our Bethany's dad didn't, so you better already. I'm right. I should have just left it in the oven to ruin the state of you two. Still, you may as well come and get it now and turn that off. Can't we have it here, Doris? Uh, Norris. Mmm. Chicken. With one, two, three, four, five, six, seven veg. Good, is it? You're a slice of gadget. Well, it, it was until I bent a blade on my butternut squash. It'll have to go back. Hey, 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 what's this? Cucumber with chicken. It's courgettes. Was it meant to be that core? Mmm, tastes like slimy notes. No, 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 you'll ruin the delicate flavour. 
You mean delicate flavour is in no flavour? Emily was very partial to my courgette. As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the Emily bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Thanks. That'll be two pound fifty. I thought maybe we'd have a little toast. Toast? Ah, I've got some good news. I've got some very good news about Dr. Ramsden. Now, wear your sweat. I know I upset you this morning and I had no business to, but that were all to do with me and the regrets I have to live with. Yeah, well, I've been doing something to myself. Well, that and this will help you then. Turns out, if he shows up here and thinks he can take our Joshua away, well, he's wrong. He can't. Not now, not ever. <laughs> Why not? I phoned a solicitor friend. Well, a friend of a friend. Well, his wife, actually, but that's of that, that's no matter. That Bobby were conceived in your marriage. Your name is on the birth certificate. If Ramsden thinks he can show up here and demand a blood test or what have you, well, he can't have one, not without your permission. If he tries to get one any road, then he'll be breaking the law. Listen to yourself. Hey, fifth, fifth. The law can't stop him coming round today, tomorrow, when the lad's ten years old. Ah, but there's no he no. can do a... So don't you see? It doesn't need a test to mess up our lives. He only has to say something to the lad, then what? Well... Well, I can't live like that. Not on top of everything else I need to know. Know what? If he's mine. I want to be able to look at him in the eye and tell him who he is. So I'm going myself. I'm going for the DNA test. <laughs> You can't keep Kieran waiting forever. It isn't fair. I don't know what there is to think about anyway. <laughs> Becoming partners is a big step. Yeah, well, most things in life are, and if people didn't take them, well, nothing would ever change, would it? It's not always a bad thing. Oh, look, I'm going to work. I need to get things in order before Mr Baldwin gets back. I'll see you. So, do you reckon all my stuff will fit into your flat? Well, you might have to leave the Mason Grace CDs behind. Sorry, it's both of us or nothing. Us women stick together. Second to us. Maybe I can get used to her. Oh, spider web. Come and meet John. Oh. Heard a lot about you. The eco warrior who inspired Toya to greater things. Well, oh, I've heard a lot about you too. All good, I hope. Definitely. Uh, beacon bound, please, Vera. Oh, Faith, are you going to come and join us? No. All right. Oh, don't be daft. Come on. By the way, uh, me and John have decided to move in together. Really? Yep. Yeah, well, I'm pleased for you both. Especially Toya. She deserves to be with someone who'll make her happy. Where are you off? The doctors. I'm an anxious here about the test. I was hoping once he'd slept on it, you'd change your mind. Well, he haven't. He's an acting all his real daddies. Just like you had. This is because of thee and me, isn't it? Well, if it is, if I've learnt out from all that, it's this. I do no good trying to protect folk from the truth. It brings more heartache. Thank you, that's beautiful. Did you make it all by yourself? Yeah. With a little help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tell you what, you look miles better without that flipping bandana on. Yeah, don't she just? <laughs> I can hardly see the scar now. <laughs> so what are you doing? Anything special tonight? Oh, just having a family tea, you know. Ah, right, well. I'd better be off, then. Oh, well, thank you very much for the voucher. No, I just wish it could be more, you know? No, it's great. I'll buy something special with it. OK. All right, then. See you, then. Have a good day. See ya. See ya. See ya. Bye. Oh, what's this? Oh, who's it from? Bran? She give me 20 quid. Well, that's, um, that's very nice of her. Right, what do you want for your breakfast? It's your birthday, so you can choose. Oh, actually, I said a meat todd in the cafe. Oh. Come on, oh. we'll drop Beth Neal. Oh, thank you. Oh, and thank you very much for the necklace, cos it's beautiful. Yeah, uh, no wearing it in school, though, remember. Right. Oh, are we still on for tonight? Of course. Hey, get a load of her, eh? Hey, yeah, how are we going to do then? I know you don't have to. Do you know, I'm going to miss him when he's gone. Well, you never know, he might be just sticking around. Really? Mm, I think they're jacking the Navy all together. Oh. If something better was to come up. You never know what life has in store for you. <laughs> Do you, Roy? 
Hiya. Hiya. Happy birthday. Thank you. Did you get anything nice? Yeah, I got a really cool necklace from my mum and Richard. It's um, Amethyst, my birthstone. All oh, right. Well, I got you this. It's not much. You, you can take it back if you want. I kept the receipt. Oh, Todd! There's no way I'm taking it back. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Really? I mean, I, I know it's not as good as Amethyst. No, it's not. It's better. I'll put it on under my shirt so the teachers don't see it. Are you all right? You seem a bit quiet. Oh, it's just all these intellectual conversations. I can't keep up. I'm just a humble factory worker, me. Hey, I told you before, don't put yourself down. Well, it's better than making myself out to be something I'm not, eh? <laughs> what did you have to be like that for? Like what? Dead sarky and horrible with John. I just don't like being patronised, that's all. It wasn't being patronising. OK, OK, you know him best. Except you don't. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, you barely know him, do you? I mean, you've been going out with him, what, a couple of months, and here you are talking about moving in with him. I just think it's a bit soon, don't you? No, I don't. Look, what is it you've got against him? Nothing. It just gets on my nerves, that's all. Are you all right, love? Of course I am. Why? Well, it's... It's just that, you know, people forget to ask, don't they? I mean, they're that bothered about young Ashley that they, they forget how hard it is for the relatives and all. That's very kind of you, Betty. I'm holding up. You have to, don't you? Yeah, you do. He means everything to me, that lad. I know, love. And I'm sure he knows it, too. I hope so, Betty. I hope so. Oh, it's all right. I've already done it for her. You shouldn't have told me that. Why not? You know we all do it. It's what mates are for, innit? Yes. It's pretty you haven't got any. No, what I mean is knowing is one thing. I can turn a blind eye to that, but telling me is another. So? It's not like you're going to go run into Joe and shop us all now, is it? Gary. In here. No. <laughs> ah. You're late. No. So I'll come when I looked at your chair before you weren't there. I was making tea. No, you weren't. All right, maybe I was one or two minutes late. I tried ten, Callum. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what, there's one easy way we can settle this. I can go and check your card, see if it says 8.32 on 8.40. But I've got a funny feeling. It's not going to say either, is it? I wasn't born yesterday, Karen. And anyway, I thought you said you weren't going to try any more tricks when I took you back on. Yeah, but clocking in for each other, that's different. That's tradition, that, innit? Then break with it, all right? You owe me ten minutes at dinner time. Off you go. So, what was Fizz saying to you, anyway? Oh, nothing. She seemed to think you were being patronising. Certainly didn't intend to be. I know. I mean, what is her problem? You've bent over backwards to be nice to her and she just shoves it back in your face. Probably upset. Doesn't want to lose her mate. I don't know why you can be so understanding. Well, I don't have to live with her, do I? Come to think of it, neither do you. I mean, what are we waiting for, anyway? Why don't you move in today? Do you mean it? Of course. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I suppose I could. I mean, uh, Maria seems to be over things now. And... Exactly. So? All right, you're on. Yeah, so how's Emily doing? Much better, thanks. Starting to get the confidence back, you know. Which is just as well, because I've got to get back to London tomorrow. Can't take any more time off work. Oh, of course you've got that juice bar to run out, yeah. Juice bar? What's that one at home? Well, it's more of a cafe and a juice bar, really. But, um, well, everything in it's organic. Ooh. And it's successful, is it? Oh, yeah, very popular, that sort of thing. Anyway, I'd better get back to Auntie Em's. See okay. if she needs anything. Ah, oh, see you, love. Nice no, love, we should try that. <laughs> I think you'll find that people around here have rather different tastes to the people from the capital. Anyway, I've not decided to go ahead with you. Ah, come on. We'd make a great team, you and me. This place could be whatever we wanted it to be. 
organic, fast food, especially when we expand? Yeah, I think it works rather well as it is. We always stick to a little backstreet cafe with a few farm worker top tables and we could have, well, something with a bit of class to it, you know. Thank you. I think you've helped me make up my mind. I, I'm sorry, I'll have to decline your offer. What? Oh, come on, Roy. Look, this might be just a little backstreet cafe to you, but I happen to be rather proud of it. I didn't mean that. Well, I'm uh... sorry, the matter is closed. <laughs> well, go on. What did this doctor say? I want to see if they could have the test done without vaccine. And? They can. Well, that's good if it's what you want. Only there's no rush, is there? Maybe it's best if you... if you take a bit of time to mull it over. I don't need any time. I've been seeing solicitors and it's booked for next Monday. Hi, Mike. So, how was Spain? Oh, things are going great. How are things here? Oh, fine. Just fine. How's that Fletcher you already going? Finished it two days early. Fletcher was well pleased. Oh, good. <laughs> Is that it? Don't even get a, a well done? Sure got your brownie points off, Fletcher. Right. I'm going to take me dinner now, OK? Mason. Hiya, Jace. Are you still coming to Sarah's party on Friday? Yeah, well, I might do. Depending on who else is coming. Well, if you want to scrape the barrel. So, have uh, you decided yet? Yeah, I'd love to come. Nice one. See you on Friday then. Look, I'm going to the cafe if anyone come in. Yeah, in a minute. Oh, she's going to be sulking all day now. <laughs> hey, I hope we get some time on our own tonight. Maybe, if I can persuade Mum and Richard to go out, and then we can get rid of David. What's up? You didn't mean what you said the other day, didn't you, about wanting to? Yeah, of course. Do you still...? Yeah. Let's keep our fingers crossed for tonight, then, eh? I suppose we'd better go and catch candy, so otherwise she'd be moaning about that and all. Actually, do you mind if I join Jason in the pub? Go on, then. I'll see you later. Oi! You owe me ten minutes, remember? Okay. Get us a pint in, Janice. Yeah. Hello? Do you want to get you longer or something? Yeah. Oh, I nice, Stuart. Hey, there's no problem, though. Good. All oh, right, well, uh, I was about to go down the Rovers, actually. That's right, where we met last time. OK. Well, I'll see you in a minute, then. Oh, Angela? Are you not coming for a drink? Uh, no, don't think so. Just go home and have a sandwich. She'll stick into her, Karen. She's like that with everyone. Yeah, right. Listen, I don't suppose you've got enough for two bottles, have you? I'm not much of a drinker myself. OK, yeah, come on. Faze! I just thought I'd let you know I'm moving out today. Why? I think you know why. Hang on, if it's about this morning, I was just being a bit grumpy, that's all. Not on light, first thing in the morning. Oh, come off it, Fizz. It's a bit late to start making excuses now. Anyway, it's not the first time you've been off with John. I just think it's best all round if I go. No, you can't. Not like this. I've already made my mind up. I just don't think you've thought this through properly, that's all. I spent all night thinking it through. I remember when I felt when you first told me. My whole life felt like it was a sham. I'm not having had Joshua going through that. If I'm not his dad, it's going to come from me. Well, then what? Yesterday, you said it were best if he stopped with you. What if he decides to stop with Ramsden? It's a risk I'm willing to take. I still thought as Bill and Sam as my parents, even though they weren't. And the old part Joshua feels the same. But I know I've got more chance of him believing that if I'm honest with him and not lying. I may think you're being a bit foolhardy doing what you're doing, but I want you to know that I also think you're being very brave, and I admire you for that. 
I'm not brave and silly fight. There's no need, cos I'm here for you, son. Whatever. You haven't got any pound coins, have you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Why, do you want some uh, money for the fruit machine? Yeah, I'll ask my tea. Uh, no, it's all right. You forget it. Oh, I get it. You've uh, got a different sort of jackpot in mind, have you? Well, why not, Todd? You know, she's 16 now, all legal and above board. Well, not that that's ever bothered you. Hey, but at least didn't wait till I was 18 to do it. Well, just, just get lost then. Well, there you go. Cheers. Well, I've got to admit, Stuart, I'm intrigued. Why did he want to see me without Mike? Well, for one thing, I wanted to thank you for delivering that order early. And if Mike had been here, he'd probably tried to take all the credit like last time. Been a bit difficult, considering he was in Spain. Well, I'm glad he was. Or I'll probably still be waiting for it this time next week. Which brings me to the, the other thing. The way you handled that order made me realise you could probably handle something even bigger. You all right? No, I'm not. Toya's moving out today. Yeah, no, she said. Oh, did she say why? <clears throat> it was something about the atmosphere being awkward, I think. Oh, I wonder why that is. I bet she gave you a big hug, didn't she? Said she was going to miss you. Whereas me, she can't wait to see the back of me. I've just lost the best friend I ever had, thanks to you. Never mind, eh? Come on, you'll make more friends, won't you? Fizz, where are you going? Ay, 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 ay. Where are you off to? Look, I'll be a minute better. No, you won't. You're not leaving me here to manage on my own. Yeah, but I need to... Customer. Uh, have you got any... Uh... Any what? Um, 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 chewing gum? No, uh... Mints? Uh, no. Uh, any... Um... Oh, it doesn't matter. Hey, Todd. <laughs> Come here. These are what you wanted? I've got the, the these. I've got these. And we've got these. Right, yeah. Hey, no need to look like that. It's the ones that don't use them. should be embarrassed. At least you're playing safe. I suppose. Hey, listen. You won't mention... Mm, to... <laughs> My lips are sealed. Mind you, being a strict Hindu, if your mother should ask, then no... Oh, no. It's a joke. <laughs> On the house. I just don't understand why he can't see the potential in it. Well, Roy's very set in his ways. You can say that again. I suppose this means you're going to have to stay in the Navy now. Why would you miss me if I did? Of course I would. Well, don't you worry. The fight's not over yet. I'll think of something. I always do. Where's Fizz? I don't know. You don't know? I think she may have gone home, say. Uh, no, she looked fine to me. So, first up, Karen rocks up late. And now Fizz has done a book. Remind me, what is your job title? Supervisor. And what do supervisors do? Supervisor girls. Exactly. Why don't you try it sometime, eh? It's Mr Carter. What are you doing here? I can't leave things like this. I don't want us to fall out, Toya. Then you shouldn't have said what you said. I mean, I don't think that Kirk's the most wonderful person in the world, but do you see me having a go at him? No, I put up with him because you're my mate. Or at least I thought you were till this. I am. I'm only thinking of you. No, you're not. No, if you were, then you'd be happy for me, instead of trying to find fault with everything. But then that's typical of you, isn't it? Always thinking of yourself. No, I'm not. If I was, then I wouldn't be what? Trying to patch things up. Just go back to work, eh? Leave me to get on and pack. Well, that's great news. If Matt can't take him off you, you've got nothing more to worry about. Set me, Dad. How do you mean? I booked him for the paternity test. He's not too happy about it. Oh, yeah. 
I can see that probably came as quite a shock. Yeah, well, I need to know what to tell Joshua when he's older. Well, have you thought how you might feel if you turn out not to be Josh's dad? I knew there was a chance of that all along. Yeah, but if you do this, you won't be talking about chances anymore. You'll be talking facts. All I'm saying is, knowing you're not his dad, it could be very different from just thinking it. Yeah, well, I'll have to deal with that when it happens. Until then, I've got enough to think about. Yeah, oh, where's Fizz? Sure, I saw her this morning. Yeah, Eddie said she uh, went home sick. And you fell for that? No, I told her she'd have to toughen up a bit. Yeah, maybe you should as well. Things seem to have slacked up since I've been away. <laughs> Hang on, I'd hardly call getting an order out earlier in case of things slacking off. But, uh, you know, go on, scramble around for something else, why don't you? And what's that supposed to mean? Well, you're obviously dying to pull me up on something, aren't you, Mike? I mean, what's your problem? Don't you like you when things run smoothly without you? I'll tell you what I don't like. Coming back and finding you full of yourself. Expecting a pat on the head. All right, you got the order out, but so what? I mean, that's what you're paid to do, isn't it? <laughs> well, maybe you don't pay me enough. Oh, so that's what all this is about. If you're looking for a pay rise, you can forget it. Well, perhaps you should take Stuart up on his offer, then. What offer's that? Oh, just uh, a job offer. <laughs> you going into retail? I don't see that somehow. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, uh, Stuart's decided he's going to do everything in-house, and he wants me to run a new factory for him. Really? Yeah, so he's done it, so. And you saw the new factory, did you? And that row of gleaming new machines? Oh, and the contract. You saw the contract, did you? Well, no, not yet, no. No, I don't think you will. You see, I know Stuart. He comes up with these half-baked ideas, but <laughs> nothing ever happens. Still, nice to be asked, eh? Are you still here? Yeah, I am. And I am not going until we've sorted this out. Look, right, I'm not the only one who's got doubts about him, you know. Maria has as well. Maybe. But at least she's making an effort. Because she's a real friend. That is so unfair. But it's true. Do you know when I think of how I used to defend you to her? Oh, Fizz is all right, I said. Give her a chance. She was right about you all along. You're not worth it. No, she's the one who's not worth it. You've always had it in for her, haven't you? You've never been able to stand the fact that I might have other friends apart from you. Even when she was going through the abortion, you couldn't bring yourself to give her any support. I have given her loads of support, actually. Oh, come off it. No, even John has shown more concern than you have. Yeah, and you know why? Because he's the one who got her pregnant. You what? That is how wonderful your precious John is. And that's how good a mate Maria is. She slept with your boyfriend behind your back. So now you know. You lying, spiteful little cow. You're just making this up. No, I'm not. It was that time you went to the pictures with your mum. I walked in on him. Maria begged me not to tell you, and I didn't because I knew what it'd do to you. I don't believe you. I'm telling you the truth. He was still getting dressed. Maria came out of her bedroom. She chucked his jacket at him. She was dead upset. She was shouting at him and stuff. He didn't say out. He just liked it, the coward. No, they wouldn't do that to me. Anyway, Maria said it was some bloke that... I already had a girlfriend. She meant you. No. It's true. If you're making this up... I'm not. Honest, why do you think I've not been able to stand being around him, eh? Cos I knew what he'd done to you, that's why. Did he know? The baby... Was his? Yeah. I'm so sorry, Taya. Right. Well, what are you going to do? Tell ya? Is it true? <clears throat> what? You've told enough lies. I want to know, is it true? OK, not here, eh? I held your hand at that clinic. I talked things through with you for hours. I deserve to know. What's that, baby Johns? It's not what you think, Toya. It happened once. Is that supposed to be?
to make me feel better. Believe me. It's not what I wanted. Believe you? Yeah, you know what he's like. You yeah, I thought I did. He gets an idea in his head and he pushes and pushes. And all the time he's got that sickly smile on his face like what he's doing can't ever be wrong. I don't get you. Look, I'm sorry. I flirted with him. But I mean, that's okay, innit? You can do that with your mates, blokes. It's safe. I didn't think for a second he'd take it seriously. Well, he obviously did. It's my fault. I should have tried harder to stop him. How do you mean, stop him? Afterwards, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I'd let it happen. Why do you think I kept avoiding you? I felt so ashamed. I don't... Are you sure about this? John, what did he say? He said it was a mistake. So he admitted it? Yeah, but he knew what he was doing. Are you all right? It's just a, it's a shock, that's all. I can't quite take it in. Why didn't you say, Maria? This is me you're talking to. But don't you see? That's what makes it worse. After everything that you've been through, how could I drag you down again when you were so happy? With John. Yeah, with John. I hate him now for making me feel like this. Even just being in the same room as him, acting all Mr. Nice Guy with you when I know. Did you really think you could just brush it under the carpet? Yeah. Sometimes a lie's better than the truth, isn't it? Better for who? Better for him, maybe, not for you. You were pregnant. Sorry, don't, don't be like this. Don't be decent about it. I don't deserve it. Well, that's what he wants you to think. I'll get angry, scream and shout, but please, you can't be understanding. Angry? Angry's nothing. I'm sick to the bottom of my stomach. I never meant you to get hurt, Toya. Where are you going? What do you think? No, this wasn't a mistake. You can't just walk away like nothing's happened. Wait, you can't go on your own. Toya! Look, are you all right, love? Betty, I've got to go out. No, no, Hold your no. horses. I'm not happy dinner yet. It won't take long. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What's up with you? Oh. You're all giddy. Oh, well, it's my 16th birthday. My math teacher's got flu. Supply teacher's down with a flu. <laughs> and my boyfriend has got a double free period. As my mum is saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know my first lieutenant, don't you, Joe Carter? Adam Mooney. <coughs> Watch and learn. We are in the presence of greatness. He's been headed. Really? Oh, yeah. Fletcher's this week. Amani next. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you taking this so seriously, Mike. Oi, you just couldn't keep your big mouth shut, could you? Don't blame me. Of course I blame you. I thought you was meant to be Toya's mate, Fizz. Yeah, and so are you. But only when it's soon. Hey, you two, do your own on your own time, please. Uh, shut up, Ayla. This is just getting interesting. And what's he got to do with our Toya? Look, you outside. You back to work. Come on. Right, I'll see you later. No, you'll see me now. Oh, the situation firmly under control, Ayla. Ha <laughs> ha, nice one, Fizz, come on, everyone. Back to work, all of you. Ayla, call it time in low. What's up? Come on. If you're gonna drag our Toya into things, you're gonna drag me in and all. It's got nothing to do with Toya, Janice. Just come back to work. Well, it didn't look like that to me. She's right. It's summer and now. Yeah, so it's just flat business, so unless you fancy chipping into the kitty. Oh, do you know, it's no wonder our Toya wants to move in with that, John. It must be like Beirut round your place. Wind your neck in, Janice. Oh, I'm going. I'm going. But you two had better sort yourself out. Sharpish. Our Toya won't always be there to referee, you know. Bet. You're dead when she finds out, you know. What, you think Toya's going to be broadcasting it, do you? Cos I don't. She was gutted. I can't believe she didn't rip the face off you. No, she didn't. She was weird. And you're surprised? No, I mean, really weird, Fizz. Like, she kind of felt sorry for me. You what? You but mad with John. Like, she wanted it all to be his fault. Yeah, she's got a downer on fellas, hasn't she? One raped her. One tried to marry her to get her passport. Now, it turns out the big intellectual one keeps his brains in his trolleys. Do you really blame her for thinking they're all as bad as each other? It was more than that. Oh, my God. She thinks he's raped me. He's 
that what you said happened? No, it's an egg. She's obviously just put two and two together. And you've let her make five. You cow. Hey, what's up? Your bottle's gone. <laughs> Yours has. I've gone through a gallon of mouthwash since we got here. Thought that was your perfume. <laughs> no. But that's definitely Richard's aftershave. Cool, aren't I? I think so. Right, you're Hitchcock and you're filming Tilly here. What are you going to go for? Shower scene. Yeah, and? Cleavage. Good. Lots of cleavage. Saxophone playing. Good. Sexy music, good. Where's Tom here? We're going to see him. Hi. Hey. Don't mind me. This is Toya, everyone. Uh, news of my fame <laughs> spreading. <laughs> Enjoy. Won't last forever. Where were we? The male gaze. Yeah, I remember this one. Not that I churn out the same material from year to year. <laughs> Poor Tilly. No, the sequel's much better. She finds out what Tom's been up to with her mate and cuts his head off. Kind of, uh, Thelma and Louise meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I know about Maria. I'm sorry. Truly, it was a big mistake. So you admit it? I swear, it was a one-off. We had a few drinks. That doesn't excuse it, I know. What made you think you'd get away with it? She was pregnant! I felt bad about that, really, I did. Yeah, not enough to help her through it. Enough to pay for the abortion. She didn't tell you about that. You're a gent. You thought that I'd get you off the hook. I thought it was fair, in the circumstance. And the pregnancy was what convinced me. See, Maria's been around the block. She sleeps with who she likes, when she likes, but she's always careful. She'd never, ever have sex with you, with anyone, without protection. Not willingly. Willingly? Do you know what you're implying? Implying? No. Saying you raped her. Come on. You raped her. Says who? She does. It's a lie. You don't believe her, do you? Yeah, you would say that. Hey, how desperate are you to hang on to your mates? Because you've backed the wrong horse, Sawyer. A woman who sleeps with her best mate's bloke. A woman who cries false rape, knowing full well that kind of talk could ruin my career. Right on, sister! Just because you didn't hold a gun to her oh, head... Oh, slogan! ...doesn't mean it wasn't rape! Yeah, real. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you mad bitch. What are you doing? <laughs> get off me! <laughs> Toya. Come on, then. Let's get real. Because this is what men and women really do when the mask slips. Hurt each other. <laughs> Hurt each other and get off on it! Sorry, please. There was a bloke. He jumped me in an alley. Raped me. Beat me up. Knocked me out. Do you know what the worst thing was? I knew him. Poor old Phil. One of life's losers. I'd helped him. This was how he repaid me. And then when they told me the truth, for weeks, for months, I thought it was my fault. Wrong clothes, wrong signals. It made me hate myself. I'm sorry. I had no idea. And you've done that to Maria. You didn't use a 
weapon and him beat her up. But you raped her. And she blames herself. Well, I don't. I blame you. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, it's fine. No, it's not. I don't want to mess you around. You're not. I am. Who says? The packet of condoms in your pocket says. Have you been going through my jacket? I wasn't looking. I went to hang your coat and you fell out. I'm sorry. They were just... I wasn't presuming. I just don't want to be like Neil Ferns, that's it's all. hard. Can we forget about him? Yeah, maybe you can. But I can. I just wanted things to be right. And I didn't want to get caught out. I've wrecked it now. No, I have put my big foot in it. I'm just nervous, that's all. Sarah, I can wait. As long as you want. I just want to be with you, that's all. I want to be with you too. I love you. Well then. When are we ever going to get the house to ourselves again? My 60th, maybe. I'll pass the sell-by date by then. Well, it seems a shame to waste them. <clears throat> I need to know. Did Maria put you up to this? Or was it you? Was it revenge? Who's pulling whose strings? No one. We were moving in together. They reckon ignorance is bliss. Why didn't she try and stop you? If I'm as bad as you say, her and Fizz, why didn't they protect you? Has that never crossed your mind? I'm racking my brains all the times we made love. Was I ever rough with you or cruel? How can you believe I want to, need to, rape someone? That's what people always say. Please, ditch the speeches. What exactly did Maria say to you? It's not what she said. It's how she feels. Think, Toya. This is important. Did she use the word rape? Did she say I was aggressive? Violent what? Or was that you? Misreading what she'd said. Putting your own spin on it. I don't know. Perhaps. Perhaps. I just need your paw print, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, I see. Fizz is back at the machine. Let's hang the flaming flags out. Now, where the hell's Karen? She nipped over tea bags. To China? Tell you what, Ailey. I'm going to propose a new pilot scheme. How about we sack you and replace you with a sheepdog? OK, stitching might not be much cut, but at least it'd know how to round the girls up better. Uh, thank you, Hayley. I hope you're going to apologise for that. Oh, great. So, uh, <clears throat> now I'm not even allowed my own opinions. Opinions, yes. Insults, no. Fact. She's a weak leader, she can't control the team, and the team are taking a mick. Fact, you got your knickers in a twist and you're taking it out on her. It's a snide trick, and I'm not standing for it. And neither would your mate, Fletcher. I'm getting sick of this, Mike. Yeah, so am I. Now you go out there and say you're sorry. Go on. Roy's daft. <laughs> we all know that, though. Well, if he done that fast, the unit will have gone. That's just the frustrating thing is that I'm doing the guy a favour. I mean, I could double his profits overnight. And the rest. And we still need a place that does a decent latte. <laughs> and a more exciting sandwich than egg. Yeah, yeah. tell me about it. Oh, he needs me. Yeah, but do you need him? I've been here for five minutes and you can go and ask Ayla and you had to go and get these from the storeroom especially. It's not my money you're wasting. I'll have a bottle of malt too. Yeah. A little bit early for that, I know. Yeah. Well, it's either this or take up boxing with Baldwin as the punch bag. 
Well, just ignore him. That's what we do with you. Look, call me old-fashioned Karen, but uh, I care. About Baldwin? About Underworld. Baldwin is Underworld. When he's a dinosaur, mate, you should be running rings round him. Yeah, won't have had any sense. I'd be running rings round Stuart Fletcher. We don't know each other at all, do we? No. Why did you choose Maria? What? I didn't expect your loyalty. I didn't deserve it, but neither did she. How self-obsessed can you get? Is this some kind of a joke to you? I'm laughing. Look. You have got some massive issues, Toya. You need to get them sorted. False accusations, they're the reason real rape victims... Survivors! Are... Cold survivors. You're still a victim. And you're a disgrace. Still hasn't registered, has it? An accusation like that is every man's oh, knife. Stop! Student counselling service. You're offloading me. I kind of think the relationship's run its course. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think so too. So is that it then? Is that all you've got to say? You thought I was a rapist. What else is there to say? I made a mistake. Hallelujah. You're a cheat and a liar. Does that sound better? Let's have a look in your thesaurus. Do you know, you can sit here analysing works of art till you're blue in the face, John. But you want to look inside yourself. You're not some sensitive academic. You're cold and cruel and unbelievably selfish. And I pity the next poor student who ends up with you. Sorry, Tilly. <laughs> Roy! Try to avoid me? No, 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 no. It's, it's just the occasional tinnitus in, in, in this here. I've had another chance to think about the air cuff. I'm not a man for second thoughts. I well, wouldn't be wearing the anorak. Look, I'm not trying to do the hard sell, but I really think you're missing out on a golden opportunity here. Well, yeah, but balancing the pros with the cons, I, I would have to disagree with you. And is that your final word? I'm afraid it is. Well, that's a shame. Because I'd hate to see a good little business go down the drain just because you're in a bit of a rut. No, you, you're misunderstanding me. Well, no, you're misunderstanding me. It's been staring me in the face. If you're not going to open the space up, well, I think I should. As a cafe? Well, different ends of the market, obviously. But it's bound to make a dent in your profits. Look, the ball's in your court. Let the best cook win, eh? They'll be back any minute. I thought David was at football. Yeah, but my mum, though, fussing around putting candles on cakes, just be my luck for it to walk in on us. Are you trying to get rid of me? No. Well, yeah, I suppose I am, really. Was everything OK? How do you mean? I don't know. You're rushing me out. For all your mum and Richard know, we could have been sat here doing homework. What? Since when did homework put a smile on my face like that? It was all right, then? It was brilliant. Better than the first time? It doesn't count. You were my first time. Hope it's not the last. Now stop fishing for compliments and go! All right. <laughs> Come on! Oh, I'll see you later, right? Right! You all right, bro? So, uh, did Sarah like a birthday present? No. Did you? Nice one, bro. Myself. Oh. Oh. Mr. Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin, I just wondered if I could have a quick word. Can't it wait? I'm hey. in a bit of a rush. Well, not really. Hey, it's just I need a, to talk to you. In a second, Roy. It's just about what Mr. Clark was saying this afternoon. Roy, uh, he's just having a lot on my plate recently. Well, everyone's in time to an off day now and then. No, but listen, it's what... listen, your friend Kieran setting up in opposition. He wants to buy the hardware shop and run it as a cafe. 
Oh, Shirley Temple. Now, no time for tantrums. I've got business to run. This won't take long. You bet it won't. Mike, you're always banging on about the debt I owe you for dragging me out of the gutter. You've got a very short memory, that's all I can say. Don't make me laugh. What about Khan, Stoddarts and all the other satisfied customers? Do you know something? You wouldn't know loyalty if it jumped up and bit you in the face, would you? But that's fine. Because it's every man for himself, in it, And I'm off. Oh, grow up. I have. I just spoke to Fletcher's an hour ago. I start there on the 3rd of March. I thought I'd put it all behind me, but I haven't. Well, when Phil Simmons raped me, he didn't just take sex, or whatever you want to call it. He took a part of me. He changed me. And how? Well, you wear it, don't you? What don't kill us makes us stronger. Well, you hear it. Don't make it true. Not, not in my experience. Mine neither. Been stupid and gullible. Well, I get over it. Of course you will. It's more than that. I've been kidding myself. I can't go back. You no, know, the old Toya. The real Toya's gone. Dead. The Toya I am today. That's what I'm stuck with. And I hate it, ma'am. I hate what you've left me with. I'm going to have to cut away at love. Yeah, I know. I hate seeing you like this. What are you going to do? Can't you go back to the flat? Not really. I mean, not while she's still there. Right. Well, stay here. Make yourself a dorm and then you can get yourself sorted. You sure? Of course I am. <sighs> I'm meant to be working today and all, and I need a change of clothes. We'll drink that tea and we'll call in and see you early. Still can't get over it. Maria, <laughs> I'll kill her. No, you won't. Oh, try and stop me. I said no! Well, some mate, eh? No wonder her and Fizz were arguing. Probably talking about you, her and that John. Well, you, you just have to put it behind your love, won't you, and move on. I thought I had. I thought that John had done that for me. And all the time, Phil Simmons and what he did was just lurking inside me. All it needed was for someone to press that button. That's what she did. Maria. She didn't just sleep with me, bloke. She pressed the button that brought back the past. The rape. The fear. The loathing. That's why I hate her now, for reminding me. I haven't moved on, ma'am. I'm stuck in this time warp of disgust. And I hate her. I hate him. But most of all, I hate me. <laughs> Come here. Come here, darling. <laughs> I've checked her room. She's not there. Her bed's not even been slept in. Where the hell is she? Well, she'll be all right, I reckon. How do you know that? According to you, when she left here, she was ready to do murder. You know, it's bad enough you sleeping with a bloke without letting her go off thinking he raped you at all. Oh, come on, it wasn't like that. Oh, really? So he did force himself on you then? No. Well, then. I mean, what am I going to do now? How can I ever look her in the face again? Well, that's your problem. It's just a shame you didn't think of that before. She's over here, right? Yeah, yes, I, I know. Very nice. Yes, well, it's what we're known for. Old-fashioned, plain, wholesome. Never mind the cholesterol, eh? 
Yes, well, I believe the modern wheat-based concepts that you champion have their own particular dietary deficiencies. If you take the caffeine content in a double espresso, for instance... Uh, oh. I'll make it about... Ailey, um, I will tell you it's not right well, so I don't think she should come into work today. What do you? What's the matter? Well, it's, uh, it's private, love. She's upset and it's personal problems. So is that all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, if there's anything I can do, thanks. Do you hear you have uh, work problems today? Uh, yeah. Well, it's not very convenient. Right. Well, I've just got the... Right! Right, I tell you that's got a problem. Well, so have I now. What's the matter? I've got no staff! No, you can't let this spat with you can affect the way you treat your staff. Yes, you're right. I knew we should never have trusted him. Up near Cafe next door, I feel like I've harboured a viper in my bosom. So to speak. Well, I'm sure it's not as bad as all that. Maybe we've misunderstood him. Well, do you think so? Shall I have a word? Well, it can't do any harm, I suppose. Well, I'll see him at lunchtime. Bye. I tell you, I'm getting worried now. I reckon if you don't get back soon, we should call the cops. Oh, there you are. We've been dead worried about you. Hey, hang on a minute. Are you all right or what? What do you think? Yeah, no, but, I mean, did you see him? Are you all right from that? Cos, honey, you never came home. Well, I wasn't with him, if that's what you're thinking. So, where were you then? You let me go and see him, thinking it was his fault. <laughs> Not only did you sleep with him, you let me think he raped you! Really, really sorry, Toya. I never After everything I did for you. But you're OK? Hiya, Richard. How are you today? Richard? Branson, you know, the boss of Virgin. Oh, on uh, second thoughts, that couldn't be you, sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who knows? See you later. Did you see him? Who? Oh, Jason, you idiot. He was staring at me, but I didn't look back. I saw him from the corner of my eye. What do you reckon? He was looking at me, actually. <laughs> sorry to spoil the party, Candice. Oh, the snotty cow. You're late again. Oh, yeah, sorry, boss. I'm in trouble. It's all women travel here. No, from what I saw, looks like you've got men's troubles. You want to mind your own business? Did, um, did Toya stay at yours last night? Mind your own business. Well, Janice? Get lost. Look, are you going to uninvite her? Katie? Of course not. How could I? Oh, great. What's up with you, any road? You said you never wanted to see Jason again. Yeah, well, that was then. That stuck-up cow thinks she's going to get her hands on him over me, then she's not felt the powers of candy stove. Oh, eh? Uh... Hiya. I'm off. What? Oh, right, yeah. You all right? What's up? Hey, come on. I'm not leaving you like this. What's the schedule today, then? Um, well, we're finishing the Moonlight Sonata range, in number three. Then what? Well, um... Well, uh, what? Well, well, uh, I think she means Joe would know, so, uh, why don't you ask him? That is, if he's still around. Oh, the end of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> There's a lot of that around today, isn't there? Geoffrey! I thought you'd gone. Well, I had, but I bumped into two her. Oh, hello, Toya. Right. Well, um, I'll leave you to it. Don't look at it, drink it. It's called Zing. It's the best pick me up I know. I'll get John out of your system. I'm really sorry. Why? It's probably my own fault, otherwise it wouldn't keep happening to me. Hey, it's daft and you know it. Is it? My life's a mess. I thought I had friends. I don't. I thought I had someone who loved me. I don't. I'm nearly two years into a media degree that qualifies me to talk about the role of women in advertising between 1950 and 1970. Where's that going to get me? I really envy you. You did the right thing. You left. I stayed. And that's where I went wrong. I've become old. And what's worse, I don't even remember being young. 
You need to get out of here. Yeah, right, where? C go anywhere. Come with me to London. Look, we're mates, no strings attached. You can stay with me till you decide what to do. I asked you once before, you said no. After everything that's happened, do you want to make the same mistake twice? Now's your chance. Grab it. <laughs> Hey, look. Listen, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Sorry? Yeah, the other day, having a go at you, I was out of line. I just had a lot on my mind. Mm. Well, like getting a new job. What time are you meeting him? Three o'clock, mate. Oh, well, no apology necessary. All right, thanks. <laughs> time for another, then? Ooh, no chance. I'm going to keep a clear out. This is my big break. I didn't know you were unhappy, Underworld. Unhappy? Not unhappy, just stifled. I want summer where my talents are going to be stretched and recognised. See you later. Hello, Mike. Off to Fletcher's? Yeah. Go on in, don't let me stop you. So it's true then about Mr. Carter? Being poached away from me, yeah. Well, that's awful. I know. I drag him out of the gutter. This is how he repays me. No, I mean, we'll really miss him. We managed without him before. We'd do it again. Better. Toya, please, I'm sorry. Shall I pour this pint over her head? Trying to apologise. Little slut. No, listen. Look, I need to talk to you. I'm leaving. I don't blame you, love. She is turning the ale sour. Right, go on, then I'll see you later. No, listen, I don't mean that. Spider's got to go back down to London for his work. All right. He's asked me to go with him. What a good idea. You go down there and have a break, get away. No, I mean, go to stay. Stay? What, as in stay, stay? Look, I know it's short notice, but I've got to do it. I mean, my life is going nowhere. I need to make a clean break and start over again. Sorry. Move away? What I was saying this morning. There's too many ghosts on this street, ma'am. I need to get rid of them. Oh, I see. Yeah, you, you, you know when you must. Yeah, you know I love you, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Will you tell us? Well, I think that's better coming from you, love. go operating the switch, you know. I mean, in my frequent free moments, I do them word puzzles. Oh, I? Well, it means I can string together cryptic clues like Richard Branson and Virgin. Flaming Jason! So, am I right in assuming that you want to report some momentous moments in your life? No. No, let me rephrase that. Am I right in assuming... All right! And? Me and Sarah slept together yesterday. Did you use anything? Yes. Well, have fun, but don't get serious. Not at your age, with your potential. The last thing you need is getting tied down by something that's going to hold you back. Do you? No. Good. I remember my first time. Mum. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Mums don't do it, do they? They get visited by angels who make announcements. Hello, Mrs Grimshaw. Mm. What's that all about? She knows. Knows what? Knows about us? How? Jason. I don't know, nothing. Nothing? We can't do nothing. Supposing she tells my mum. So? What do you mean, so? We're not doing anything wrong. We love each other and we're being sensible. If people understand that, then how can they object? Easily if you're my mum. Going? Yeah. You can't. What about this John bloke? Les. Oh. You're going with the hippie. With Spider. But we're not together. What about your studies, your education? Oh, great. Throw that all away. That's a good idea. 
You're the only batter's bit to go to uni. Blimey. You're about the only one that never got chucked out of school. I talk about you all day at work. Do you? Yeah. There's not a passenger gets in my cab. What doesn't know all about you when they get out? I'm so proud of you. You've never told me that. No, well, you, you don't, do you? Don't throw it all away, please. Well, I mean, I might go to uni in London or, or somewhere. I can always get in another course. Don't go, darling. It'll break your mother's heart. No, she's OK, I've told her. OK? She's bound to say that, ain't she? What keeps her strong is you. If you go, her world will fall apart and so will mine. Look, don't decide now. Just don't go now. Think about it for a week so me and your mum can get used to the idea. Please, that's all I'm asking. OK. Good girl. Right. Uh, I'll make us a nice cup of tea. It's one o'clock, Roy. Yes, yes. You said you wanted to have a chat at one o'clock? I, I meant five past. What's it about? Uh, uh, Hayley will explain. I am. Oh, right, well, um, it's just that we, Roy and myself, uh, are very concerned about your idea, the cafe next door. Uh, we think it's a wonderful concept, very imaginative, only we wondered if you were really serious about it or perhaps we misunderstood you. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. Listen, I wouldn't do anything to hurt you or Roy, but it's business. It's too good an opportunity to pass up. Oh, oh, I see. Well, um, thank you for letting us know. Pleasure. And any more little chats, you know where I am. Just here. What are you playing at? Mm. Letting our kid give up her life and swan off down the smoke with that hippie. She's seen you then. She has. Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. She can't stop around here forever. Yeah, well, I don't think she's ready. Unfortunately, she has one responsible parent who's managed to talk her out of it. Oh. You've done what? I've done what you should have. Did she tell you what's happened to her? Happened? No. Well, all you need to know is that that John has cheated on her. And she's devastated. <clears throat> I think I was a little bit insensitive this morning. I want to apologise. It's OK. I just hope that whatever is troubling you isn't too serious. Or at any rate, is only temporary. How do you keep everyone happy even when you know it's going to make you miserable? Ah. Well, to thine own self be true. What? I spent most of my formative years trying to please people. Did you? Well, no. Because, well, different people want different things. What my teacher wanted was uh, the complete opposite to what Bill Parker wanted. It, he was the class thug, incidentally. What they had in common was that they both wanted to teach me a lesson. No, I've, uh, I've gradually grown to realise that uh, people who love you are happiest when you're happy. If you're not happy, they won't be either. Not if they really love you. I want you to go back to uni. Les. But in London, you've got too much talent to waste it. But you said... I didn't understand then. I was thinking of myself as usual. You see, I love you. And I'm really, really going to miss you. Let me tell you, you're one of the few people that understands me and still likes me. You do like me, don't you? Of course I do. Hey, I love you. I, uh, I found this in your old bedroom. Teresa! Teresa the turkey. Remember her? The, the real one. I brought her home for Christmas dinner and you wouldn't let me kill her. A turkey's for life, not just for Christmas, you said. You said some great things as a kid. <laughs> I did laugh at that. 
Did you? Yeah, but I couldn't let you see that, could I? I was supposed to be angry. But really, I was proud of you sticking up and things. Just the same as you never knew. I talked about you to my punters. But I do. You, you will be happy, won't you? Yeah, I'll try. And that's all I want. Businessman of the year. How'd it go, mate? Great. I now have sole responsibility for setting up Fletcher's new factory. Well, nice one. Well done. Let's hope you do better there than you did at Baldwin's, eh? Well, hopefully I won't have any trouble making time wasters on this payroll. So, is it a good deal? It's great. No one to answer to above and a workforce that reports directly to me. Uh-oh. You all sorted? Yeah. Look, uh, I'll work out my notice. Four weeks, right? No need. I don't want to keep your workforce waiting. Clear your desk by Friday, get out of my factory and out of my sight. All right? Can I have a scotch? Make it a large one. I've got a nasty taste in my mouth. Leaving? Yeah. Now. Janice just told me. So have you got the guts to say goodbye? Cos I'm gonna... That's it. Good luck, love. And we brought you a flask for Janie. Oh. And then um, there's some cake and rolls in there and a little present. Thank you. Sally. Thanks, Roy. Everything. Taya. Please don't go like this. Sorry. Don't know what I'm going to do without you. I'm really going to miss you. Hey. I'll miss you too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one's ever missed me before. Well, except when they've been chucking things at me. <laughs> Tell you. Right, let's go. I'll, uh, I'll give Spider a hand. <laughs> You take good care of yourself. <sighs> Ready? When you are. Put out the end. Take care of yourself. Oh, and you. Just because we have to live together, it doesn't mean I have to like you. You keep your distance and I'll keep mine. And just dog off. You and me, lady, have unfinished business. Now, I promised her with Toya that I wouldn't get you. But she's gone now, so all bets are off. You just better be careful, because I'm always going to be there, watching you and waiting. <laughs> Is it? Lunch time. Right. You know, if I was Janice, I'd have put you in hospital. It weren't all my fault, you know, Fizz. Oh, really? Who else was there? Well, there was John. And you kept it a secret from her and all. I kept quiet about it cos you begged me to. You said it'd be best for Toya. It's not gonna change anything if we just keep going over it. Listen. If I could afford the rent on this flat on my own, I'd kick you down them stairs as soon as look at you. Hello, Hello. 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 Are you all right? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. 
thought it might be a bit low. Now Spider's gone. No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Because no. Les is quite distraught at losing Toya, and I thought perhaps you were getting a bit lonely, you know, rattling about in the house on your own. No, not really. Come on. Oh, sir. You know, it's my last day today, don't you? Well, they didn't give me a golden watch to give you. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting one, was I? Still, I'm going to miss this place. Well, why go, then? It's complicated, isn't it? <sighs> More money. Yeah, but it's yeah, not it's just... It's not that complicated, then, is it? Don't worry about us. We'll struggle on without you. Is that Giggsy? It's, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? The only thing I've got to write is their own name. You think they could make it legible? Who cares about penmanship? It's what they do with a feet that counts. This must be worth a fortune. You want to keep it locked up in a glass case? Never mind a glass case. Our Craig won't even have it in the house. It's a Leeds phone for you. What can you do it? So, who do you? Wednesday. Sheffield. Well, how many others do you know? He must be a big disappointment to you. I know. I don't know where we went wrong. <laughs> so where is he, Craig? Don't he come home for this dinner? No, he's having school dinners this week. Ah. Shouldn't you uh, be getting back to school? Yeah. Thanks for letting me hold it. Just think. Bex. Kino. Rio. Rude, rude, rude. They've all touched us with their bare hands. Thanks again. See, See you, you later. It's right, love. Oh, Craig wants to burn that in the garden, scatter the ashes at Elland Road. <laughs> Martin. What? Just so as you know, David's staying at Simon's tonight, Sarah's party. Right. Uh, so I'm taking Gail out to dinner, because we promised to stay out of the way. So I was just wondering if... Um... Yeah, I keep an eye out, patrol the house on the hour every hour. Well, you know, kids are like, do you mind? All right, see what I can do. <laughs> keep <laughs> my eyes peeled. Cheers, mate. See ya. Well, I've not seen out yet, but I'm keeping my eye on him. What are you talking about? Tommy. I know you give him the benefit of the doubt with the wallet and that, but can't be too careful, can you? He's all right. Well, maybe, maybe not. In the meantime... No, look, we've cleared things up. It was my mistake. He's a decent... He's a decent bloke, so you just keep both eyes on the job. I'm going to do your favour. Oh, yeah, right, I reckon I'll tea break, everyone. Hey, hey it's only 5-2. Not by my watch, Hayley. Uh, yours must you, be a bit slower, yeah? How do you feel, like? Hayley? 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 What's going on? Hey, what do you mean? Well, the hell's Mike? I've been calling him at home and on his mobile. It's like he's disappeared off the face of the earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, he said he wasn't coming in today. So where is he? He didn't say. Well, he's not coming in all day. That's what he said. So, uh, is this right? Your husband's got his job back at the garage, then. Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Kevin realised he made a mistake. My husband is not a thief. Uh, right, yeah, whatever you say. John, honest. If I could afford the rent on that flat on my own, I'd kick her out after what she did. I don't know what's wrong with folk round here. You know, I tried to get away once after Dennis died. It would tell you that persuaded me to come back, and now she's gone. You know something, though. She's right. She's better off in London than stuck round here. Girls, I'm thinking of having a whip round for Joe, it's his last day. A whip round? He's the boss. I know, but he's a decent sort of bloke, really. Yeah, and I suppose he's easier on the eye than Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how much have you got? Nothing, yeah, I want to just start it. Happen you better start somewhere else. Where is he? He's in the back. He can't resist the smell of new stationery. I never thought I'd say it, but I do miss his funny little ways. You're not thinking of having him back. It is comforting to have someone else in the house, even if they do drive you up the wall. Mm. Do you think I'm mad? <laughs> oh, I'm beginning to wonder. I think he may have suffered enough. <laughs> oh, don't tell him yet. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> Mum's the word. Bye. Bye for now. I've forgotten that paper clips are getting I distinctly ordered large ones. I, I mean, the small ones are useless. They've got no lip to end. Paper clips are for clipping paper. If you can't clip more than two sheets, then what's the point? I'll give them a ring. Are you all right? 
and I hate sloppiness. Speaking of sloppiness, how are things at Shea Battersby? Fine. Really? Oh, just adapt and survive, Rita. Adapt and survive. <laughs> hey, wonder if the tidy fairy's been at work again. It's like magic. No matter what kind of mess we make, we wake up in the morning and everything's clean and tidy. You all right? They're all leaving me, Kirk. First it was Leanne. Now it's Toya. It'll be Janice next. Mark my words. I'm gonna be on my own. Hey, you've got me and Doris. We're an happy little threesome. It's not family, though, is it? No. I remember how it was when my first letter of pups went off to new homes. You what? Well, you feed them, you look after them, and then strangers come and take them away. You know they're going to good homes, but it still feels like a kick in the guts. Yeah. Except you get paid for them and all. At least 200 quid a pup. Helps the pain. What is her problem, eh? She's just winding you up. Yeah, well, I'm having Jason tonight. You've already had Jason. Exactly. I saw him first, so he's mine. She wants to poke her nose and I'll break it for her. I promised my mum there'll be no trouble. There won't be. She wouldn't dare. Yeah, sorry, won't be until tomorrow. Or Monday morning. OK? Bye. What? Well, seeing as it's your last day, uh, we thought we'd have a whip round. But nobody was interested, so uh, we thought we'd just take you for a drink instead. You're off now to take me for a drink? Yeah. I mean, Baldwin doesn't seem that interested, does he? No. Well, I'll tell you what. Never mind that. How about I buy the drinks? I mean, I'm the one with a new job, after all. And the big pay rise. That's right. Well, go on. Tell the girls. Right, girls. Down tools because the drinks are on Joe. Oh, really? Come on, girls. You come in. Um. Well. Yeah. Go on. Come on then. Michael, you're better off with that. Yeah, you're probably right. Right, now, if you listen to me sooner... Look, can we, we can... talk about something else? Fine. Just think that getting rid of Joe Carter was a uh, cause of celebration. You all right, love? Hello. Right, you know all the girls from the factory, don't you? Um, yeah, I reckon. OK, two free drinks on me. Give us a bill when it's done. And uh, have one yourself while you're at it. Yeah, thanks. OK, girls, the drinks are on me. Help yourselves. Oh, cheers. Cheers, Don't cool. have a drink with me, Mark? No, thanks. Why not? Tied our way after a busy day on a golf course. For your information, I've been sorting out your replacement. That's right, Joe. We're all replaceable. It's just not so easy finding someone with a bit of loyalty. See you later. Yeah. Be honest, you were attracted to me, weren't you, the first time we met? Oh, is that right, Fizz? Oh, don't try and deny it. But I am a spoken for woman, Josie. Hey, if we gave in to our loss, what would my poor Kurt do? No, our loss must be denied. <laughs> I'm not sure Norris is feeling his punishment in quite the way you'd hoped. He claims he's happy with the arrangement. Do you believe him? No, he's pretending. No, I can't resist it. If this is my last chance, I'm going to have to take it. Come here, give us a kiss. <laughs> He's a great kisser, Jan. You have a go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, hang on. Don't I get a say in this? Oh, Carly, you are leaving present. <laughs> Come on, then. Come here. <laughs> but you won it. Yeah, but I'm a Wednesday fan and I'm Craig's a Leeds fan. That's all I can do to stop him slicing up with a carving knife. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Thing is, David Platt's a mad keen Man United fan. He thinks this is more important than a crown jewels. I don't want to cause a fuss, but is there any chance there could have been a mistake with the tickets? Well, I suppose it's the kind of mix-up that could happen in a busy pub during a high-profile prize draw. Leave it with me, I'll see it goes to a good home. Cheers, Hitch. He's sorted. Yeah. yeah. Right, come on, then. Let's go home and get some tea. Some tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go on, then. Go on, go on. Go on, then, Ella, Go on. <laughs> right, what about you, then? Um, it'll cost you a lot more than a couple of pints to put your lips here. 
I'll tell you something, Steve, mate. You got it sussed, you have. Oh. Work for yourself, be your own boss. Nobody to tell you what to do. That's right. Unless you're daft enough to take on Dev Allahan as a partner. Oh, so I've had enough. I'm going home. I thought it was your leaving, dude. Yeah, well, I'm leaving. There you go. Get the girls another one out with you. Oh, you want to go away? Where's the gun, baby? <laughs> Where's his party? Well, he's left booze money. A top man, and that is a sad loss to our workforce. So, uh, get him in, baby. Get him in! <laughs> hey, you're right. How are you doing? Good time. Yeah. Do you want to go upstairs? What? What do you think? But it's my party. Yeah, it's your party. You can do what you want to. Oh, you are terrible. Mm. What are you drink? Uh, no, sir. What are you looking at her for? Looking at who? Who do you think? I'm not looking at anyone. Dance with me. You what? Checking to see I've not nicked out. I thought you'd gone. Nah, not yet. So what do you want? What did I do wrong, Mike? You took the money and ran. <laughs> I have never worked harder for anyone than I have for you. I mean, I have brought new clients, new orders. Let's face it, this business is in a better state now than when I first started. Fletchers can see that. That's why they've offered me this job. Why can't you understand that? Why won't you show me one bit of respect, Mike? Why can't you show me a bit of loyalty? You just never know when to stop, do you? How many more times do I have to get down on my knees and give thanks to the bountiful Baldwin? Oh. I don't even know why I'm here. I mean, why the hell should I care? I've got a great new job. I don't have to come to this scabby little factory anymore. Then why don't you go? I don't care. I gotta hand it to you, Mike. You really know how to wind me up. Staying away on me last day. Do you know, Summer? I could have thumped you when I saw you in that pub. Ah, uh, well, that's the thing with me, you see. I get under people's skin. So, uh, what's he like then? What's who like? The bloke who's gonna replace me. Oh, I lied. I haven't got anyone to replace you. I've been playing golf. Right, you had a drink with the workers. How about having one with me? Emergency supplies. Come on, get your coats. It's gone seven, you know. Some of you two be in the pub by now. Too right, we should. Come on, slow coach. Tidy fairy, tidy fairy, work your magic. I don't know. People think it's strange. Maybe it is. But I don't know any different, so... My mum, she, uh, she gave me up for adoption when I were a baby. So, never knew her or me dad. Didn't you ever try and find them? Well, why should I? They didn't want me and they never tried to find me, did they? And that never worried you? Well, why should I? I'm not looking for sympathy. Really? Well, why tell me now? Now you're about to go. Well, I don't know. You asked me what drives me, that's why. And you said no one? So it's true. I drive me. No one else matters. No one? Look, can't change me past, can I? I mean, I never asked to be born. I certainly didn't ask my mother to abandon me. Well, weren't you ever close to anyone? Yeah. There were a couple of foster homes that were OK. <laughs> Don't know, there was one thing, though. The way people used to look at you. What people? Oh, care workers, social workers, you know. 
they had this way of looking at you, right? Like, like they were trying not to feel sorry for you, trying not to look sad. Me, I just wanted to punch them. Did you? See, when I was 17, most of the lads I were knocking about with, they were doing time. Just always used to feel like everyone was watching me, waiting for me to join them. And you did. In the end, yeah. A couple of months ago, you were in a hair's breadth of going back inside. <laughs> hey, I'm a slow learner, aren't I? Uh, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Is that mine? Uh, hey, do you want something? Uh, yeah, I'll have a beer. Right, I'll uh, back them up. Go and sniff around someone else, will ya? What are you on? I mean it, fuck off! <laughs> it's a free country. I'm not joking. Clash one more man on my boyfriend and I'll slap ya. Really? Well, uh, your boyfriend just asked him to go upstairs with him. <laughs> What's going on? She pulled my hair. Yeah, will you push me? Oh, you push me. Yeah, first. yeah, yeah. All right. Is anyone hurt? I don't know. I thought you girls were meant to fight with handbags. Uh, don't give her a weapon. She's bad enough. We're close. Hey, hey, what's, going on? Hey, what's going on? What you need is a father figure. Oh, I. <laughs> you offering? Me? No. I've ruined enough sons already. You want a child? Ken Barlow across the road. He likes a charity case. <laughs> you wound me up enough today, Mike. I'm not even going to rise to it. So, when are you going to retire? Can't, can I? Can't find any staff I can rely on. Too scared to, you mean? More than you could imagine. You think you had it tough growing up? Well, maybe you did. But you've got everything in front of you. You want to see the view from my eyes. When I look ahead, all I can see is the end. When I look up, all I can see is Archie Shuttleworth chucking earth on me while I'm lying in the box in the ground. So you've earned your money. Should be in enjoying it. Yeah, but not much fun on your own, is it? You know what you need? A woman. <laughs> Do you know where I can get one? <laughs> going on? Do you mean nothing's going on? Well, you were coming downstairs. So? So? Are you having sex? I'm discussing this with you. Well, you're old enough to do it, so you're old enough to talk about oh, it. Oh, no way. I'd rather never do it again than discuss this with you. Are you using contraception? Martin, will you go away? This is so embarrassing. Does your mum know? Martin! You should tell her. I'm off. Thanks for the party. Oh, it's OK. Yeah, all right. No broken bones. I'll live. See ya. You can go now. Tell your mum. It's got nothing to do with her and it's got nothing to do with you. OK, I'll tell you what. I'll make it nice and simple for you, shall I? Either you tell her or I do. There you go. Now then, I think my work here is done. So thank you and good night. Do you know what I was thinking earlier today? What? Well, who the hell designed your factory floor? Dunno. Oh, I did. You did? Yeah. Mike, it's terrible. I mean, if you got rid of them bins at the back, right? Turn these tables round, you get, what, three more machines in here? Nah, it's all right, it works okay. Ah, oh, you see, you got that much work on, you're paying overtime, evenings, weekends, <laughs> a couple more machines, you'd save all that. Anyway, I don't know, it's just, uh, just an idea anyway. Listen, uh, I know I can't match the, uh, Salary that Fletcher's offered, so why don't I offer you a stake in the business, eh? You what? A stake! A share of the profit! Oh, come on, give over, mate, you're drunk. No, I'm serious, I'll give you 10%. 10% of the business, 10% of the profits, we will be partners! <laughs> partners? Oh, come on, Mike. What, your 90% versus my 10%? What kind of partnership's that? Nah, it's never gonna work, is it? I mean, we all know you're never gonna retire. And let's face it, I'm always going to be playing second fiddle. I'm always going to be second in command. So you think you're going to be top man at Fletcher's, do you? Hey, 
Fletcher's is a 21st century business. You're still stuck in the dark ages. So stay. Drag us into the 21st century. Oh, yeah, kicking and screaming. Call it the Underworld Challenge. You stay, you're in charge. You can make whatever changes you want now. What would you do? <sighs> All right, then, uh... I don't know, there's loads of things, aren't there? I'd take on a few more new machinists, for starters. Change the stock buying. I mean, there's got to be, what, 20 grand's worth of material in here? It's not even being used. Yeah, good, good, good. What else, what else? I'll tell you what. I'll replace at least half of these machines because they're always breaking down. Yeah, what else, what else? The girls, they're always getting away with murder. Yeah, so? Well, you got Ailey, haven't you? Right, she's the best machinist in here, but she's a lousy supervisor. I mean, every time the girls cry dentist or women's trouble, she sends them home, don't she? So? Well, I put her back on a machine. All right. Well, you do that. You are. You stay and work with me. You serious? I am deadly serious. What about my 10%? I see my lawyer first thing in the morning. What do you say, partner? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm stunned. I feel like I should give you a go somewhere. <laughs> I always knew you were an old softy, really. <laughs> I was going to offer you a hair of the dog, but, uh... Well, I was just for a little one. You offered me 10% of this factory last night. Yeah, that's fine. So was that just a whiskey token or what? Well, I seem to recall it was uh, both of us that emptied this, not just me. So? So, the question is, how well do you hold your liquor? Well enough. Glad to hear it, because you were making some pretty bold statements yourself last night. In fact, if anyone was making any promises, it was you. Mike, I didn't make any promises I can't deliver. Is that right? Well, as long as I can make some changes, I get a fair reward, what I deserve. That's what was offered. What's the verdict? Oh, come on, Mike. The old Scotch mess not clearing. Well, we shook on it, remember? <laughs> of course I remember. I was just testing. Well done, my son. Right, well, uh, <clears throat> I'll phone Stuart Fletcher, tell him the deal's off, shall I? We could both tell her. No way! Why do we have to tell my mum we're sleeping together? Well, she bumps into Martin. He's going to tell her anyway. It's better coming from us. Hi, Mrs. Hillman. Hi, John. I did tell you to make sure nobody went in David's room. Oh, he's not still whinging. Well, I think I'd be whinging if I had a can of lager spilt all over me carpet. Sorry. Well, there was no structural damage, so I suppose we should be thankful for that. So you had fun, then? Yeah, we did. Didn't we? Yeah. Come on. I'd rather stick pins in my Mrs. Hillman? No! What is it? Well, I will tidy upstairs, if you like. Oh, well, uh, gift horses and mouths spring to mind. Thank you, Todd. Right, you lot, listen up. Joe's reconsidered his position and he won't be leaving us after all. Seriously? Um, I'll come. Well, let's just say the sight of your faces every day had a lot to do with it. Unless the other job's fallen through and um, you've come crawling back. As from today, Underworld has two partners, which doubles the risk of you getting the boot for being disrespectful to your boss. Show's over. Back to your machines. Hey, Joe. I'm dead chuffed you're staying. Yeah, that goes for all of us. Oh, thanks, Uh, I'm well with you, please. Yeah, good. <sighs> Sit down. Thanks. Is there something wrong? I think there is, yeah. Hayley, you're one of the girls and a supervisor can't afford to be. But I thought I'd sorted the problems out. At least I've not been told otherwise. You shouldn't need telling love. Look, you're the first line of defence against slackness and shoddy work. All I'm seeing is people leaving early and saying, please, can I go to the doctor, well, I'd sooner let them go than have them sat worrying. That's not going to do the work any good, is it? They've got the dinner breaks, Pat. They should be able to organise the time better. Look, I know you've found this job, well, tough going. No, I enjoy it. Well, it is a tough job if it's done properly. I think you're being unfair. I've worked very hard. I'm not saying you're not a good worker. Oh, thank you, but I'd rather get some credit for my supervisor. Well, I'm sorry, because from now on, you're just a machinist. Morning. Oh, Cherry, eh? Norris. 
That's very adventurous. Oh, no, no, that, 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 that's for Kirk. No, I've been thinking, Norris. Really? I'm pleased to hear that. Well, it, it struck me how easily we get set in our ways. Take breakfast. Always Earl Grey in a bone china cup. Two pieces of crisp bread with strawberry jam. Or elderberry. <laughs> and now here you are with your bacon and sausages. As Rita says, living this more robust lifestyle seems to have brought you out of yourself. Well, yeah, but you see, the no, thing I, is... No, I quite understand. I once spent the night up a tree on the Red Wreck. And in a way, Norris, this is your tree. You go ahead and climb it. I can't believe I practically cleaned the entire house and you still haven't told her. Oh, there's Martin. See what I mean? I forgot to tell you, Mum, then. No. Good. you got to tell her, Sarah. Why? You know how upset your mum gets when you keep stuff from her? If you tell her, at least we can enjoy being together. Shh, there's my gran. Just call me, yeah? Look at you. Oh, it's wonderful to see you without that headscarf on. Thanks for the money. I'm sorry I didn't see you, sweetheart, on your birthday. Just a bit old. Oh, it's okay. Aren't those lovely? Are they presents? Yeah, um, this one is from Todd. Oh. And this is Amethyst. It's my birthstone. That's from Mum and Richard. Ah. Didn't think we'd be seeing much jewellery this year. Oh, one of Richard's home schemes paid out. Got a big cheque. Did it? Oh. That is good news. Yeah, Mum's a bit happier. Mm, I bet Richard is too. Uh, when did all this come through? The other day. Sorry, listen, I'm going to have to go and get some stuff for Bethany. Yeah, that's all right, my darling. Now, you come round for a trim any time you want, all right? Bye. Bye. Hey! You didn't have to well it yet. Yeah, well, why'd you bring it out then? Not like you're jealous or anything. I didn't want a man new ball in the house. They made a mistake with the raffle. You didn't have any choice. Oh, yeah, go on then. Tell us what you think. My dad made it up. If anybody's making it up, it's you. Not new about that. It's the truth. You only gave it you because you felt sorry for you. <laughs> Why? Well, you're a sad Man United fan for a kick-off. Get lost. You get lost. Hey! Hey! Back in the pair of you. <sighs> what you like, you? You got all weekend for scrapping. What's your rush? It was him that started it. Well, go on, then. I'm all ears. Can't believe you've done this. Yeah. This isn't too soft. Have you had a written warning? Don't be stupid. This is Ailey we're talking about. Hey, do you want to go home, Ailey? <laughs> yeah. I love this job. I thought we were doing it really well. Oh, love, you were. It's just Jar throwing his weight around. I'd like to throw his flaming weight around. <laughs> Come on, let's get you out of here. Uh, Mr Baldwin, do you know all about this? I'm aware Joe's got to make some tough decisions. Yes, yeah, so you know what he's done to Ailey, then? I mean, how loyal has she been to you? No, Karen. Look, if you've got a problem, sort it out with Joe, all right? Yeah, yeah, thanks. We will do. Don't go steaming in there. You'll just make things worse. Oh, thanks. Come on. I'm sure this is constructive dismissal. Is she in a union? What's it got to do with you? No, uh, hang on a minute, Janice. I think she's got a point. All we need is uh, someone who knows what they're talking about to go in there. Oh, no. No. Come on. You want to be one of us. This is your chance to prove it. To say Toya were a vegetarian, she could make a great bacon sandwich. Oh, Toya had many qualities. Chief amongst them, loyalty. Something you might like to think of. <sighs> I thought I'd done a main bacon sandwich myself. Oh, take the notice of him. Hey, yeah, love. Yeah, cheers, Vera. <sighs> All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, this ball that went to our David, there's something I don't know about. How do you mean? Well, David reckons Craig's saying it's really his. No, nah, no, nah, it's your lads who want it fair and square. All right. Well, why is he saying it? Any ideas? It's just being daft. You know what kids are like. Hmm. Uh, you go and sit down, love. All right. Yeah. What is it? Hey, Lee. Oh, don't ask. I'm not good enough to be supervisor, according to Joe Carter. He's put me back to machinist. I thought he'd left. Yeah, we all did. Then, when we went and welcomed him back, he goes and does this. Well, we wouldn't have stood for it. 
when we were there. I hope you all aren't going to sit on your hands. No, you should fight this all the way to tribunal if necessary. Yeah. Roy, stop being so practical. Just be sorry for me, will you? I'd like a nice cup of tea and a fresh dog. Oh, please. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, yes, if, if you could. Pa, I don't know where to hear this. Well, they overheard some of the girls talking. Well, you must have heard wrong. It doesn't sound like Baldwin to me, this. Well, ask Karen. No, I saw Janice in the cab and she said the same. Mm. Must be a bit of a sickly for you, this, eh? Bet you thought you'd seen the Lester Joe Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter to me, Steve. No. Nope. So he hasn't dropped Karen any hints that this was coming, though. No? Well, where would he tell Karen? Yeah, well, why not? Boss needs to confide in someone. I mean, look at you and Eileen. <laughs> hey, we have to speak about something between the sheets. Oh, <gasps> oh you my big mouth. <laughs> So why would he confide in Karen, then? I don't know why, Steve. I just know that he does. You know, I've kind of, um, seen it myself. When? I've just seen them talking, Steve. End of story. Are you going in? I can't. What? I'm new. I'm sorry, I can't risk it. Great. No, I'm at I mean, come on, do we care about Ellie or what? Hey, yeah, yeah, I'll get me P45 if I go in there, mate, you know. Hey, why can't you do it? Yeah. I'll have to, won't I? Hey, you've got no choice for you dead legs. Yeah. Hiya. Is there a problem? Uh, yeah. We don't think it's fair what you've done to Ailey. A lot of people out there would like and respect her. Yeah, and? And that's not the way you show respect, is it? We're all really unhappy about the way that you've treated her. <laughs> yeah, well, of course you are. Because now you're in severe danger of getting a supervisor who actually supervises instead of being everyone's best mate. Well, let me just warn you about something. You bring someone in shooting a mouth off, and this factory of yours is going to be in deep trouble. Because I'll tell you something, Joe. The girls won't stand for it. Not even if it's you. What? You would. If you think you're up to the job, Karen, it's yours. <laughs> Doing this lot for me, dear? Uh, not really, no. Oh, can't blame me for asking after what you did this morning. We need to talk to you. Yeah? What is it, Sarah? There's nothing to worry about. Are you sure? Sarah and I. Well, we've been seeing each other for a while now, and. Yeah, and we really care about each other. What are you trying to tell me? We're sleeping together. Could we talk about this in private, please? I want Todd to stay, Mum. We have been careful. I should hope that goes without saying. And we didn't rush into anything. We talked about it, didn't we? It's a pity you didn't talk about it with me. Mum, we're telling you now. After the event. Well, seeing as my opinion seems to matter very little, I don't know why you're bothered. So, have I got a new supervisor? Yes or no? I'm thinking. About what? about what the girl's going to say, saying you've nicked Ailey's job. Well, they will do, won't they? And they'll be spot on and all. Look, if that's what you're worried about, maybe I'm asking the wrong person. You rattle cages, that's your job, or else you're going to get yelled at and I'm the one who's going to be doing the yelling. So if you can't stomach it, just say. I could do it, stood on my head. You or someone else, and I need to know now. Right, I'll do it. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. Better tell the troops. Joe. Look, you're not going to go out there and, um... Make out like a beg for this, are you? You better toughen up, Karen. All right, all right. Now, let's not do that. <laughs> As of now, you've got a new supervisor. Any problems, any concerns, and you see Karen. You have got to be kidding. What happened to fighting for Ailey? Hey, I made me mind up about Ailey before. That's the last I want to hear about it, all right? How many pieces of silver did he give you, Karen? You would have turned it down, would you? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Not at all. You're the one taking the risk, not me. Here you go. Oh, no. That's for them girls. So? Look, don't be so soft. It's you the one. I'll just get dirty. Looks, go on. <laughs> if we must. 
I tell you what, if he does open up next door, you'll be all on to keep your customers. I'm aware of that, Vera. I mean, look at it. You can't get enough of him. Do you know, the battle for custom really has commenced. I fear the time for appeasement has passed. Excuse me. You are? Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's of no credit to me that, uh, that I've allowed this nettle to go on grasp for quite so long. But much as I've tried to ignore it, grasped it must be. Roy, is there something you want to say? Yes, there is. If you wish to woo your future clientele, you will not do it from my premises. Take off your apron, please. What's brought this on? Look, you can't do that. We can't manage without him. Oh, well, well, yeah, this is what he would have us believe. But we can and we shall. Roy, what do you think you're doing? You and Joe Carter, it's cut from the same cloth. You're all easy charm till you've ingratiated yourself and then you trample on the very people who put you where you are. Roy, I've been begging you to come in with me. I could really do without this today. I, I am sorry, Hale. Now, if you don't mind, oh, no, whether you mind or not, I want you out of my business and out of my home. 50 change, much obliged. <laughs> well, it's put me in a very unenviable spot as this. Look, I'm not complaining. Whatever went on, my lad's done well out of it. I just want to know if this makes up was genuine. But you see, a well-run raffle's like a, like a discreet mistress. Its secrets die with it. Harry, I've got two kids threatening to knock lumps out of each other. Help me out, will you? All I can say is, if you're looking for dark motives, well, you're misguided. I don't understand this, Norris. Now, why has Ken stopped visiting Aidan Krishnan? Well, I can only assume it's because he thinks the lad's guilty. Oh, so even Ken's convinced now. Sorry, Audrey, I thought somebody would have told you. No, who's talking to me? All I've heard is that Richard's had another of his home reversion schemes pay out. Though how that poor soul died, I hardly dare speculate. Yes, yes, well, it was speculation that lost me in my home. I think I'll be going. Do you know, Norris, sometimes I wish we were the kind of folks that just watched their backs and kept their mouths shut. Here you go. What's this for? Just to say thanks. I also come across as a right ungrateful soul, so... Well, Harry's told you, then. Well, no. That's to work it out for myself. I just wanted someone to have it who'd appreciate it. And your David's helped our Craig out at school, so I thought, why not? Yeah, right. And if you had to hand it back, it would have just been embarrassing, I know. Oh, well, yeah. If you're going to cause embarrassment, doing it style, eh? Hey, listen, mate. If you're going to give us anything, just come and knock on the door, will you? Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Norris? Are you all right? No. In all honesty, I can't say I am. Can I get you a cup of tea? You're, you're very kind, but no. Look, if the truth were known, I must say these last few days have been the longest of my entire life. Well, I nearly said you could move back here, but you'd find me terribly dull, liking everything just so. Oh, but, but I like dull. Ooh, but how can I be sure? I don't want to come down in the morning to the remains of last night's fish supper, beer cans scattered around. Oh, now, really, Emily, if you... Th oh, 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 I see. Oh, there's more mischief in you than most people realise. <laughs> Maybe. There's more steel as well. And I will not have anyone in my house making dangerous and absurd allegations against a personal friend. Oh, no, as far as Richard Hillman's concerned, my lips are sealed. Now, do we have an understanding? Yes. Yes, we do. Oh, <laughs> good. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go and get me things. So, what do you make of it all? Well, the only surprise is that they told us in the first place. Well, I don't suppose they were going to tell us beforehand, were they? <laughs> well, would you say anything at her age? I mean, I'd sooner have joined a convent. So you think I'm overreacting? I think you're being protective. Mm. Look, girl, our Todd is more responsible than I am. Of all the lads you could have picked, I think you got off lightly. Hello. Hey, uh, hey, uh. hey, what did you go and say that to David for? The thing is, it don't matter. Well, Martin, all right about it. You were more than all right about it. He was dead friendly. Look, can you wait till you cross the road? Come on. I was the factory. Oh, the Joe Carter's only come back. Demoted Daly, made Karen supervisor, and everyone's yelling blue murder. Well, it could be worse, though. Well, why do you say that? 
Well, if it's all you lot against that Karen MacDonald, you're going to be one of the gang from now on, aren't you? Karen, up with you. Shiek. She has got something to tell you, though. What? No, she'll just have to tell yourself. Well, where is she? She's in the office with you. They've been in there ages. How oh, come? Cool. Look, we've told you where she is. Why don't you go and find out? I can't believe Roy's been so mean to you. It's not just the job. It's just I felt like home. I might have to get a bed and breakfast. Or you could come and stay with me. I wasn't fishing for an invite. And I'm not trying to move you in. I know it's only temporary. Do you think you could put up with me? Now you are fishing. Of course I can. You OK? I guess she told you then. I'm glad you're honest. In fact, I'm very proud of you. Pity Mum isn't. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. I don't think I was very fair the way I spoke to you earlier. He still expected us to ask permission now. Anyone else for a cuppa? I, uh... I just thought that after Bethany, we'd have got over any secrecy or embarrassment about sex. Yeah, but Mum, that was about being pregnant then. This is about how I feel. Just doing what everyone does, cos we love each other. I know you do. Hiya. Hiya. How was Simon's? Yeah, we're all right. What's going on here? It's just me and Sarah having a chat. It's allowed, isn't it? Mm, one of those. Uh, just so you know, Sarah and Todd are sleeping together. They told me today. Oh. Well, that's very responsible. We can't ask for more than that now, can we? Oh, right. that scam you started. I want it stopping, OK? What scam? Hmm. What a scam? The one where you clock on and off for each other. I saw Janice doing it for you the other day. Now listen, you're one of us now, all right? Right. I'll uh, I'll have a word with her. No, 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 no. First task. You give her an official warning. You tell her two strikes and she's out. Okay? Yeah, right, Steve. Joe. Hi, baby. What are you doing here? Just uh, wondering what you're up to. That's all. Uh, right. Can you just uh, give us a second, Joe? No, no. You're right. You get off. Uh, save it for Janice. Yeah. I'll see you on Monday. Right, yeah. Yeah. All right. You home now. What's going on? I, I don't want to tell you here. Why not? Because I'm going to tell you in bed. Tell me now. Spoils, but your wife is only the new supervisor. Says who? Says Joe, got a promotion, and uh, guess who's got a pay rise? And how'd you manage that? Because I'm good. Hey, come on. Why are you happy for me? Karen, it was only a few months ago that he sacked you. Yeah, and now we're getting along just fine. Yeah, and now he just gives you your job back for no good reason. What? Karen, I saw you last night having a nice little cosy chat. And now he just gives you a promotion. They were his leaving drink, Steve. So why aren't you left, then? Persuaded him to stay, did you? And what was all that about just then? Discussing work. Oh, you've been doing that a lot recently, so are you? I get a promotion for the first time in my life. Therefore, I must have slept with the boss. I, I'm not saying that. But what exactly are you saying, Steve? I'm just saying how it looks, that's all. Well, I'm telling you how it is. I'm trying to celebrate something and you're just insulting me. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. Oh, forget it, you've ruined it now. I want to go for a drink on my own. Am I dreading today or what? You'll be right. What do you reckon on these earrings? I'll take it the pay rise will cover the new fancy blouse. <laughs> um, only Emily Bishop says blouse. Anyone would think you were going to sort the Dow Jones out? <sighs> it's worse than that, kidder. Jenny Spatsby. Well, not for her benefit, then, is it? Uh, no, mine, actually. I want to look and feel the part. I'm sure Carter would agree with you. Good luck, babe. I'm really proud of you and your promotion. I am. The top's a winner, and so are you. You're even going to be early, eh? Well, how can I roll up someone for being late if I'm ten minutes behind them? Oh, well, at least Joe Carter's got faith in me. Oh, I wonder why. Because I happen to be very good at my job. And can you stop now on all the praise and encouragement? Because I'm not going to get my big, massive head through this door. Oh, you could knock my back away in a suitcase, yeah? This is not really one for travelling like my missus, Les. Well, this should ease the pain. Oh, thanks, love. Thank you. I'll see ya. Right, see ya. Love. Hey. Oh, welcome back to Blighty. Good to see you. Hi, <laughs> oh, Ken. Did you plan to get a postcard? Oh, excellent move. Your pedestal gets higher and higher. Mm, wait till she sees this. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what do you know? Oh, not much. Uh, the old duffer at number one has resigned from teaching. Oh, does you know? Oh, Ken. Well, I decided to jump before I was push. Locals are going to let them make the decision for hey, me. Hey, their loss. Definitely. Oh, oh, excuse me. Sunita! Yeah, we'll feel the pinch financially, but I know it was the right decision. Well, look, I mean, I'm not exactly willing at home in a barrow, you know, but if you need, you know, if you need any help, just give me a shout. Thanks. But look, I'm going to have to get a move on. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, I'll give you a knock later, yeah? Yeah, whenever. No hurry. OK. See you later. It's gorgeous. It's a um, Mexican silver set. Peter reckons it was made in Taiwan. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything. Ding-dongs we've had over Kieran. Yeah, but we're still friends, though, aren't we? Of course. Girls. Uh, right, can we uh, watch your grease on the satin? Sorry. Hey, you were the one who spilled brown sauce on moonlights and out of range. No, come on, girls. Karen's right. We should be more careful. Um, I just wanted to say there's no hard feelings on my part. I'm sure you'll be great. Thanks, Ailey, but it's not exactly rocket science, is it? <laughs> I thought I'd left Diane on. Had to pop back home. Oh, really? Do you remember when that exact same thing happened to you? Funny that. What's up? They're all watching. Just smile, keep your back to me, all right? I thought I was paranoid. Yeah, well, Lala, don't miss a trick, do they? And nor should you. I don't. Good. So I'll take you across the Janice situation then. Yeah, I clocked her. Actually, Fizz clocked her 15. No. 18 minutes ago. Well, give me a chance. A minute. Two strikes and she's out, remember? Yeah, I know. So, what are you waiting for? Here. Here. Come on, Squiddles. Hey. You love that, don't you? At least let me come to a clinic, will you? No. Happen little ones picked up on summer to miss? What? The arch? The test. You don't think he's read the letter from clinic, do you? Oh, your dad's in one of them funny moods, isn't he? I say he's in one of them funny moods. Yeah, I've got two left on the roll. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> yeah, Josh. Go on, then, our Joshua. <laughs> say, Red Lester. Oh, oh <laughs> too beautiful. <laughs> oh, Thanks for the sombrero. Oh, it's all right, and... Um, we thought a lot about you when we were on holiday. Oh, I'll just get that. Why don't you give up the idea of this, this thingy test, this paternity what's it, and just get on with being a real dad? I should never have bottled it the first time. I need to know. And he needs to know. Do you know if there's any justice in the world, a great big piece of scaffolding had fallen on his head? No, do you know that is too easy? I'll come back later. Gail! Gail! Be strong now. Oh, Archie, do you know, of all the wicked, wicked things he's done, robbing me of my own daughter is the one that hurts the most. Well, never mind. Mr Hillman will get his comeuppance. Oh, really? He always lands on his feet, him. Will you tell her to text me back the clown? The phone needs topping up. She's using spiders then. He's given up his bed for you, know. Oh, he's all right, isn't he? For a health freak. Mm. The bit's a load of exhibitions and that. Oh, I've heard oh. culture vulture, isn't she? Well, I don't know where she gets it from. Oh, flipping hey. Might as well hold me purse over a drain. Can you do that in your own time? Oh, I'm sorry, love. It's just your audio the company, yeah, 18 minutes. How come, boss? Which you can make up at dinner or at the end of play. It's in time up to you. Not 15. Not 20, but 18. Let's make it 20. What have I done exactly? You know, there's one thing I remember about biology, and that's it's only the earthworm that can split itself in half and be in two places at one time. Oh, what fascinating is that? Yeah. Say, um, one half could um, get itself to work on time and the other half could slob around watching Lorraine Keller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your clock card says you're here at uh, 8.30 on the dot. See, they're like cameras, these cards. They never lie. Janice, you swanned in at ten to nine and your machine didn't start up for another ten minutes. She's serious. Yeah. She is. History. 
one more man could have taken. Now, the Romans, right, they invented the wheel, and some Scottish bloke invented Tarmac. But Karen MacDonald, now, her brainchild was the clocking on scam. <laughs> 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 Things are different now. Yeah, you're not kidding. Can we get back to work? Sound like Baldwin. Okay, 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 okay. Fair enough. Tell you when I'll make the time up. When? How about the 12th of never? Would that suit the company? <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Morning. They live like pigs, don't they? Who's that? Pinky and Perky. Ah. I see your plans have reached the Jotter stage. Don't look so worried, mate. Like I said, totally different clientele. My lot's four cheese, risotto and guacamole. Yours are more egg and chips and uh, jam roly-poly. Oh, oh, yes, very neat. Overpriced coffees hold no fears for me. I know my market. We'll get on like a house on fire, so... Yeah. Your venue seems rather aspirational. My lot will play through the nose just for the right ambience. And yet, the backdrop will always be Weatherfield. You can't just bury your head in the sun, you know. I've had all this off me dad. What are you going to do if he's not yours? I'll just cross that bridge when I come to it. Oh, that's what I call the game plan. I just can't explain it. It's just something I have to do. Well, that sounds rational enough. But you've just lost Maxine. Any more bad news might knock you for six. And where's that going to leave him? Have you thought about that? Look, Ashley, what I'm looking at, right, is father, son, unconditional love. Do you only love half this Maxine's? Close not. Exactly. And which half would that be any road? I'm doing this for him. No. No, you're on some crusade to inflict as much hurt as humanly possible. I'm no psychologist. I can't tell you why. Good. Because your bus is here. Yeah. Well, careful, Ashley. Because the truth is very overrated. No more airport runs until next week. You can't do that. I just have five Willowdale Road going into town. Steve, you're a bomb manager. Being nasty comes natural to you. Well, sometimes it's got to be done. Can't just roll over and die. Mm. Now, why did I come to you for sympathy? Oh, yeah, because you're my husband, you know, thick and thin and all that. Uh, you crossed the line, your management. You make it sound like a sin. Karen, you can't go giving Janice Battersby a hard time all day and then expect her to be pally out of school. Why not? If she pulled away, it wouldn't be a problem. You're not one of them anymore. Yeah, I know. And doesn't Ailey just love it? At least I challenge him. Just used to take the mick when she was in charge. Well, then there you go. You're one step ahead of the game. You know every scam in the book. Right, which is why they're not taking me seriously. I'm a poacher come thing of me. What do you want to be? Hmm? Successful or popular? Both. Popular. Well, wrong answer. I know, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. Go on, show them what you're made of. I tell you what, why don't you pretend I'm Janice, stood here? Not listening to one of your stories. You know, the ones with uh, no punchline. Uh, uh, I went out the other day and uh, broke one of my nails. Uh, in fact, no, I didn't break it, it just split. You? Yeah. I'm dead tonight, Mr. Thanks. Preening yourself for old fellas. I wouldn't bother. Unless you want somebody who's married or spoken for, and then I'd save all that slap till later, eh? The tarty look is always better at night. <clears throat> OK. A little tart. We should have asked Angela to come over with us. Ah, she wants to sit with likes of us, eh? They cut from the same cloth as that McDonald. Tell you what, wish you were back in charge, Ayla. Don't be daft. No, she's right. Well, some people would have liked Bill Clinton to serve another term, but you have to stand aside, otherwise you'd go power mad. Well, it was a right good laugh working under you. Thank you. And a right good sky and all. Oh, aye. <laughs> we could ring and cancel, you know. No, oh, Dad. Must happen all the time. Folk thinking they want to know till the 11th hour. Look at you. I think I might get him a new coat after. This one's getting a bit tight on him. Why lay yourself open to more hurt? You're not thinking straight. Maxine's dead. And that hurts a nub. 
So stop at home soon, please. I've got a face of music. Oh, afternoon, Mr. Baldwin. I'm just nipping to laugh. Couldn't you have done that in your tea break? Well, the thing is, it's more of... Ah, I don't want to know about that. Use your well-oiled machine. Oh, hope I haven't got you in trouble. He's right. You're taking the mick. What are you? Bladder patrol. <laughs> Excuse me. Go and do some work first, Janice. You are? You heard me. Oh. Once a week. Karen, I don't think you can stop people from spending. Oh, she can do out she likes, early. She's climbed that greasy pole, our Karen. Bind her pinny and bind all her mates. What mates? Nothing round here but green eyed monsters. Oh, I'm going to laugh. No, you're not. You're going back to your machine. Angela! What would the union say about all this? Never mind the union. Human rights issue this. Ooh. You heard the woman. Get back to your machine! Why don't you go and play a little Italy somewhere else? Can I go to the toilet? Please. No. And you can give me half an hour after work. And that isn't a request, Janice. That's an order. Or what? Oh, you need to change your attitude, lady. You need to stop coasting. So now shape up or ship out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in charge of hiring or firing yet, lady. But when I am... You'll be the first one out. <gasps> oh. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. Now, I need to go to the toilet. If it'll improve the quality of your work, I think you'd better add. Oh, no, I don't I don't make a day. No, I fancy an eight dance. Oh, do you? Now, don't forget, 8.30 at the very latest, else I'll fall asleep after I've had my pick and mix. Life in the fast lane, eh? No, Dev. Uh, we're not joined at the hip, you know. Remind him he's got a shop to run. What, let him know it was chocker, shall I? First lull of the day, this. Oh, whatever. Look, if I were you and I close my eyes and I think of the overtime. 70 pence, please. Maybe I should trade you in for a sugar daddy. Then I can not work on the head like our Tracy here. What? <laughs> Look, that is out of order. I happen to value my independence, thanks. Sorry. Centre pens, please. Is there a problem? Look, just, um, stick it on Slate or something. Karen! Yeah. How much leave do you get in the Navy? Why, do you want me to join up again? Well, it's just that Kieran's shacked up with Sunita. So? Oh, well, look, sling us a bag of them dry roast in much Completely Don't you think it's weird? So, no, not really. We're going out together. No, he's had so much time off. I mean, he turned up here weeks ago. Well, do you know what? I think you'd be flattered you're so interested in him. Well, Shell, why don't you ring the Navy up and ask for a copy of his holiday form? You're dead funny, you piece. Look, he's just probably wangled some extra time. Come on, you know what he's like. Mm. I thought I'd had a bad day. We called a pig twice, spat up by a drunk, and got a load of abuse off an old age pensioner. Still, that does not hold a candle to mine. Thanks to me ex busy mate over there. Where's the rest of the coven? Getting chips, I suppose. See, I was on detention. What, are you not hungry then? Michael, how am I supposed to get hammered if I line my stomach with food? <laughs> I wish I could join you, but I need my beauty sleep when I'm on early. Lightweight. Plus, have a boil in the bag cod waiting for me when I get back. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> hey, I bet you're missing your toy, aren't you? I feel like my arm's been chopped off. How about Les? Do you ever miss him? You're joking, aren't you? I'm gonna get the ball rolling on this device. I just hope he doesn't throw a wobbler. Best thing I ever did. Well, apart from falling in love in the first place, of course. Yeah, I'm happy now. I'm in grotty bed sit long with my sad old ready meals and everyone's in our show. There is nothing lonelier than being with the wrong person. Oh, look, we've done tonight. So it's just as well I nearly ran you over that time, didn't it? Mm. But he's dead. 
Yeah. Cheers, love. Hey. You're not having one for the road? <laughs> nah. What? Well, don't tell me you're not going to slope off without lecturing me about what mistake I made without Karen. And have you? Nope. Just teething troubles. That's all right, then. The old Mike might have said, uh, go over there and give her a pep talk. But that's before you joined as a pup. See ya. She said, yeah, see ya. She said, she'd never do it again. Shouts? What's your poison, Ange? Um, oh, I'll have a pint of lager. <laughs> you were gone ages, lad. Shh. Still out for the count. It's after six. He'll not sleep tonight. I say he'll not sleep tonight. I'll wake him up in a bit. Did you get a new coat? Don't face the crowds. Went for the one that fed the ducks. Well, through Bredderton. They didn't want feeding them, we didn't want to be there. And how did you go at clinic? Joshua was as good as gold. You didn't get upset? He didn't know. Well, what's done's done? I felt like I were tricking him. Entertain him like a good dad. Dad a good dad! Yeah, well, they got what they needed from him. You see, you're upset already. Get results and that we. They can chuck it in bin, we could. That's just storing up trouble for the future. He's a babby. Be years before he wants to do out, if at all. And say so he needs bone marrow, a kidney. Something he needs that I can't give him because I'm not his dad. Come here. Spoken like a true dad. We'll see you soon enough, won't we? Too sure. So basically, I got it wrong. Oh, no, no, it's not that. <coughs> I just can't believe you, you didn't let her go with the bog. Yeah, but you said tell her last chance to lose. Mm. Pull her up on a timekeeper, is what I said. You know, making personal phone calls, I don't know, robbing tea bags, <laughs> nipping out on company time, but <laughs> taking a leak. <laughs> Does Mike know, though? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Your reflection on me, Karen, remember that? Hey, management quarters, is that lot? Oh, hi, very cosy. Steve, give him a pint, just get him one in. Uh, yeah, uh, nice. I'll have it for him then. Please. All's in hand. To spoken like a true ostrich, that. I'm going to see this calf thing through and see how things pan out with Tanita. Look, even Shelley's clocked down which leave you've had. She would. Why don't you just turn yourself in? Hey? Do yourself a bit of damage limitation. Should we sit down? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thanks. Blimey. Felt all right when I came in. Look at him. Yeah, like three wise monkeys. With apologies to monkeys everywhere. Caught him red-handed this morning. I thought my ears were burning. It's not funny. It's slander. Exactly. So let's not rise to it, then. Did you see that? He's a cool customer, all right. Hey, you stay away from my fella. Him? As if. And stay away from me. You right, Steve, mate? So I didn't see you there. Well, I didn't want to intrude. You haven't won. I've just got one. Right, uh, I think I better just get off. No, stay, it's my round. No, no, you're right. Uh, see you tomorrow, OK? <laughs> well, thank you for being so nice to my boss. Well, I think you're friendly enough for the both of us, don't you? Oh, grow up, Steve. I've had a bad enough day as it is without you kicking off. Well, you looked happy as Larry before. We love a boy. I'm going to have a word with Janice. Uh, just blurring your boundaries. All right, so I can't have a pipe with Joe. I can't sort things out with my mates. Should I just top myself right now? <laughs> right, Angela, come on, shake them moths out of that purse of yours. Get them round in. Uh, can I have a word? Oh, as your new best friend gone home. Thought you'd slum it with us, then, eh? Oh, forget it. Don't feed that table for me, Maria, will you? Hey! It's not to go. That's my girl. McDonald's! I thought I told you to keep out of my yeah, side. Work here, Janice. I get off with Janice. Oh, my pleasure. 
Hey, don't be fooled, you know, by all them waterworks. Six and a half right in your back, eh? Yeah, little trollop. Do you know she got pregnant by Howard Sawyer's boyfriend? You what? Oh, they're all in tonight, aren't they? Yes, Underworld's finest. Judas MacDonald. Go home, You're Janice. doing yourself no favours, Janice. Oh, it's all right, love. I'll be OK, because I've got my mates to look out for me. Do you remember what mates look like? Angela. What did you say? Revenge is best served cold. Well, there you go! It is that cold enough for you. I am so sorry I ruined your talk. You're a goner! Come on, get out, Janice! Come on, get out, Janice! Oh, it's all right, look, I'm going. I'll just get me out and be cold. That is a battery move, Janice! Battery move! Time of our life tonight, excuse me! I'm an outcast at work. I'm dreading going in. I know what you've done is sit and smirk at me. I'm not smirking. Stop accusing me. For what I'm going to do, I'm just a disaster. Look, you knew it wasn't going to go like clockwork on your first day. you just got to know how to handle people, that's all. Right, so I am a disaster. No. But everyone's got to learn. You said yourself you went over the top with her. She didn't have to chuck a pint of beer in me face. She's a Battersby, what do you expect? She's meant to be me! Karen, 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 look. You're the boss now. If you want all that cash and you want the extra power, it comes at a price. So I'll just chuck it in. Cos you would like that, wouldn't you? I'll tell you something, Steve. I'm not going to... Oh, never again. Hey, here she is! My hero! You were brilliant last night. Well, I don't feel like it. Why didn't you tell me about Maria and Toya? Oh, let's not now, please. I've got Rem too with Karen to think about, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, good luck, Jan. I'll catch up with you later. She deserved it. I'm staying out of it. Yo, boss. Good night's kip last night, eh? <laughs> Those uh, biscuits, Eileen likes. Mm. On a little errand, are we? Well, she keeps the customers sweet, so I don't mind indulging her a bit. Oh, you should keep your women in their place, Stephen. Always brawling in pubs, sending you to the shops. They're usually on the middle shelf. Yeah, lay down some boundaries, son. That's what I do. I take it you've run out, then? Should be a mid-morning. I'll put a packet aside for you, just in case we have a run. Don't want you in the doghouse, eh? <laughs> oh, girls, look. Early, two mornings on the trot. Somebody phoned the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I want a word with you. Oh, do you now? Yeah, in private. Well, I'm only going to tell all my mates, so you might as well say it here. In the office now, Janice. It's not your office to set me into. I said now. Otherwise, you'd be in serious trouble. Mm, what's that supposed to mean? If you can't work it out, Janice. Oh, right. <laughs> so you're going to sack me, are you? If I have to. You haven't got the power. Oh, have I not? No, lady, you haven't. Well, we'll soon see about that. Well, put it this way, I'm not going to go into your piddle -it little office, so you better do your worst. Right. End of the day, and you're out. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> Should be interesting. You want to be careful, Janice. Oh, shut up, will you, Ellie? She can't deny it. Yeah. There's only Baldwin and Carter that can sack for. Yeah, she can recommend it, though. I don't care what she says. I am not letting her order me around. You're right, love. <laughs> <laughs> it only turns out that Maria's had an abortion. Huh, yeah? Yeah, three weeks ago, and I never knew. So who's her father, then? The bloke that was going out with Toya. No way. Can you imagine that? Wanting to move in with one and carrying on with the other. Oh, um... Love, have we, uh, have, we, have we sorted that guest list yet? Do you know what? I'd have killed him, me. I'd have killed him. Have we? Have we sorted the guest list? <laughs> What's going to you? You'd be offering to do the flowers, no? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Who did you get those lilies off that time? Do you remember? Uh, no. Oh, she didn't have to. I'm nice. Or was it a she? I don't know. You bought them. I bought them, but it was that long back, you know. <laughs> right, at the time. <laughs> Is that it? Have you had enough already? Oh, well, I've got to get to work. Oh, they say women have butterfly minds. I'll tell you what, why don't you go and ask Deirdre? She'll help you. She's at a loose end. Yeah, but I want to know what you want, though. Look, whatever makes you happy makes me happy, right? Morning, ladies. Morning. 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 Mor
morning, Mr. Carter. Did you hear that? What? Janice. She's been like that all morning. All 15 minutes of it. I want you to sack her. You know what she did to me in the Rovers last night? Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. What, you don't think that's a second offence? Out of working hours, away from the factory. It's because of what I said to her in working hours. Which was way over the top, Karen. Even you admit that. Well, you told me to have a go at her. Yeah, and there are ways of doing this that get results. Second's a last resort. Well, then how do I cope with it? Well, you don't make it personal, for starters. Oh, hello, problem. Nope, just, uh, one of the girls got the wrong end of the stick. Oh, spare and sordid details. Shop floor tantrums are your problem. Now, listen, I've got the breakdowns from the last quarter. I want to have a look at those if you can. Hey, you know what you should do, Jan? Complain to Joe that she's been harassing you. What do you reckon? Oh, I. We could go on strike over this. I think you could be smarter than that. Joe could have put her up to this, for all you know. They're right thick together. What would you do? I'd go over his head. Complain to Baldwin. If he thinks that Joe's new supervisor can't hack it, that'll drop her right in it. And instead of striking, if we work really hard, it'll show that she's got nothing to complain about. Not such a bad idea, that. I'm going to have to get a job, aren't I? Well, we can manage on this. Just. I mean, if I can get more work out of Sunday on the paper. Oh, I'm just going to have to go out to work. The question is, where? What's wrong with the corner shop? Oh, you know very well what's wrong with it. Yes, but beggars can't be choosers. It's easy, it's dependable, and it'll save you trudging round trying to find something else. <coughs> Look, I just don't think I can face going back to work there again. Not to mention what Ken might think of it. Well, I should think he'd welcome the money. At least Dever would employ you. Oh, you mean no one else would? Well, you're not in the first flush of youth, are you? Thank you for that vote of confidence, Mother. Unless you fancy two months of rejection because you're not 20 years younger. What do you think, Ken? You haven't said anything. I think it's a decision you have to make yourself. You could go back to Deb's while you find something better. How about that? Oh. Anything to get me from under your feet, eh? Well, you said yourself, you've got to do something. Come on, Ken, you must have some opinion. Like I say, I'm leaving this entirely to you. Can I have a word, Mr. Brown? <sighs> yes, Janice, what is it? I was wondering if there's anything wrong with my work, that's all. No, why? Only I've worked here for six years, and I've never had any complaints before. What are you getting at? Well, it's Karen. She's trying to cite me. She's what? Reading me the riot act, telling me that I'm gonna end it day. Well, what are you telling me for? Well, you're my boss. Uh, I just thought you might like to know. Look, Joe's your manager. You got a problem, you see him. Will you leave me alone at the moment, will you? I'm busy. Morning, precious. Do you think I should get a job? A job? A J-O-B? <laughs> Why? What's brought this on? Well, do you? Well, I don't know, darling. You just sprung it on me. What do you want a job for? Hmm? Because if the money, there's no need. No? No, nope, not one. You've got me to spoil you. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Why spend the day working when you can be at home making yourself look even more beautiful? For you? Right, that is it. I am definitely getting one. Tracy, what? Look, I am not having you patronise me like that. And I am not having people say that I'm being kept either. What? Who's been saying that? Look, I might even find my own place to live. No, look, listen, hang on. Tracy... I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll look. <laughs> She's winding me up. Yeah, sure. sure. Um... Biscuits? She's a wind up. They're on the shelf. Uh, you've, uh, you've only got plain, uh, need the milk. Right. Be with you in a minute, Deirdre. Um, actually, I don't need anything. It's, um, it's about the job. Oh, the job? Right. Well, it's here if you need it. Mm -hmm. Money tight now, is it, that uh, Ken's resigned? Money is tight, yeah. But I shan't be coming back here. What are you going to do? I don't know. But uh, sometimes there are things that are more important than money. I'm sure I don't have to spell it out. No, I'm sure. 
So can we take it that I finish as from today? Oh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll uh, sort out what's owed to you. I'm sure you won't have any trouble getting someone else. Well, uh, thanks for letting me know. I'll see you around, Def. Yeah. So is this how you keep him in check, or uh, was she winding you up as well? You could have told me, you know. I want to bit your head off. I'm just so ashamed, shall I? So, are you all right now? Mm, sort of. <laughs> could have done without last night, though. Just tell me in future, all right? Yeah. Yes, Les. I'll have a non-alcoholic lager. I've got to drive this afternoon. And some of us know how to curb our appetites. You as well. I don't know you dare. Dare show your face around here. I don't need this. It should have been you that left Weatherfield. Now I tell you. I said I don't want to wear it. No, because the truth hurts, doesn't it? And it's because of filth like you, lives get ruined. I'm not filth. No. Sleeping with your best mate's bloke. Then I don't know what else to call it. And then killing a life without so much as a bye leave. It wasn't like that, Les. No? Well, I hope you're happy with the mess you've caused. I suppose that amuses you, does it? You can't blame him for having a go at you. Like it was all my fault. I don't know, maybe he's right. Maybe I should have left. I mean, it's not exactly going to be much fun round here, is it? Now everyone knows. And then again, like you say, it wasn't all down to you, was it? Why should you go? Maybe you've suffered enough. <laughs> hey, uh, Jan, let me get you a drink. No, I'm all right, thanks. Come on. I'll pay for the one you chucked over Karen. I said I'm all right. Please yourselves. What was this? Oh, after you left last night. Me and Karen just had a little bit of a barney. What, and you chucked tail all over with everyone watching? Well, I, I told you I had a temper on me. <laughs> Better believe me now, eh? <laughs> What's up? Well, if you can't see... What? I'm a copper, Janice, remember? I have to watch what I'm doing. I have to watch what company I keep at home. People think I'm seeing a punch-up artist. Well, it doesn't exactly look good, does it? Oh, I'm not a punch-up artist. No, it doesn't sound like you. Look, it just flared up. It were over in two minutes. Then your job's safe, is it? No repercussions there? I thought you liked a woman with a bit of life in her. Yeah, I don't like this hope we get down the station every Saturday night. I know that. Oh, come on. That is not fair, is it? No, isn't it? What if she'd have hit you back? You were tanked up. It could have gone anywhere. Yeah, but come on, Mick. I mean, I wouldn't do that, would I? You know me. Yeah, do I, though? Do you know I'm starting to wonder? Well, I've uh, made a decision. And? I shan't be going back there. I've just been to see it. I'm glad. It was what you wanted. Can't deny it. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, it had to be your decision, otherwise it wouldn't mean anything. What did he say? It wasn't a lot he could say. He was surprised. <laughs> Amazing how many people don't get it, isn't it? Pride. I felt the same when I resigned. Anyway, it's done now. And how do you feel? I feel very relieved. Only thing I've got to do now is find another job. Join the club. <laughs> Are you going to give Karen some more welly this afternoon, Jan? I'm not sure we're getting into Bobby's going to solve out this. Why are you not bottling out, are you? I think I've said enough for one day. Hey, I want to have a word with you. What's up? I had Janice in here this morning saying that Karen wanted a sacker. Oh, no. It's all been sorted out. What's been going on? Just Karen, she got a bit overkeen. You know what happens when that gets the hump, don't you? Everything goes down the pan. Her quality, productivity. Yeah, well, like I said, you know. This hour's gonna be. That lot start moaning at me every time I come in. I thought I'd pass all that over to you. Yeah, and you have. Get Karen in here. 
Oh, no, no, come on, mate. There's no need. I want to nip this in the bud right now. Karen. Mike just wanted to... What's all this about sacking Janice? I, I just give her a warning. There's only two people with the power to sack anyone. Me and Joe, got it? Yeah, but... Your job is to get the best out of the workforce, not go around upsetting them. Any problems, you come to Joe. Well, I just thought Well, that... don't! Your machine is first, and you're a supervisor second. You remember that. Now get back to your work, and don't overstep your mark again. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. That's when that's the end, eh? Looks like it worked, Ange. <laughs> oh, you've had your hair done. Yeah. You never said. Where'd she go? Grand's. Sarah, after everything we've said about her. Well, Mum, where else could I go? I've got no money and she offered to do it for nothing. OK. Todd, you can open this for me, could you? Yeah. Must be getting weak in me old age. <laughs> There you go. Great. Studying hard for Oxford, then? Afraid so. Oh, I know I was going to ask you. Um, what are you doing on Valentine's night? Nothing? Well, how about you take Sarah out for a pizza, eh? I'll give you 20 quid. <laughs> OK. Yeah, no need to say who's paying. Uh, just be back by 11. Hey, Sarah. What? You don't fancy going for a pizza on Friday, do you? Can you afford it? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I'd love to. Why didn't you ask me earlier? Only just thought. Mum, is it all right if I go out with Todd on Friday night? Yeah, of course it is. Well, that should work out quite well. Because David and Bethany are going to Martin, so we can have a nice quiet night in. <laughs> so, uh, is Janice sat then or what? Um, uh, just get off home, Avis. Only because you said she'd be out by the end of the day, didn't you? I mean, what's happening? She needs to know. Just leave it, will you? Oh, so you don't have the power to zap people after all? Come on, then. So, are you serious about this job or what? Yeah, well, I did manage to shop in London. Oh, I know you managed to shop in London, Tracy. Oh, so I'm not a China about. doll, Dev. I'm not going to break. Right, I'm sorry, I just thought you liked being the lady of leisure. Yeah, well, it was all right for a bit, but it's just that I'm fed up with it now. All right. So what are you going to do? Hmm? Come here. I, mean, I could always get you a job managing one of my stores. Oh, I mean, is that how you lured me, ma'am? Tracy, Oh, let... come on, Dev. I want something better than yeah, that. Yeah, like? I don't know. I'm with... Something with a bit of glamour, maybe. Oh, glamour. What, around here? Let's hope that's not where you came back, hon. Yeah, well, if I can't find it around here, I'm going to go somewhere else. Oh. What about us? Well, you know, you could always come with me. If you really care about me, if you really want to spoil me. Now, stop winding me up. What are you going to do? Well, I don't know. You're going to have to wait and see, aren't you? But I am going to decide it, Dev, not you. Okay, fine. So you'll be looking for the best man for this wedding? Yeah, I certainly will, yeah. Look, mate, you know I'd love to. You know that, I, I really would. I'd love to. Well, I look forward to it, then. Come on, you must be able to talk around. Well, yeah, I mean, I could try. But if you do that, I'll even let you invest in my gastronomical venture. <laughs> that is one crackpot idea, if ever I heard it. Let me tell you something. You've got more chance of being my best man than you have of getting any money off me, all right? Well, one out of two isn't bad. Well, let's for that one, then. Sorry, it didn't go too well today. Might have gone a lot better if you'd have stuck up for me. Well, you know what my like when he gets going. Why didn't you just tell him that I was doing it for you, instead of staying quiet? Well, I tried, but... Well, you were in no mood for listening. You know I only had a go at her because you told me to. Yeah, I know. And now I might lose my job. <laughs> no, you won't. Why didn't you just sack her this morning, like I said? And then none of this would have happened. We've well, been through all this, Karen. Because you made Mike sack me when you started. It's a bit different. Yeah, I thought it might have been. Karen, I spent weeks first trying to win you over. You've only been at this job, what, a couple of days? I thought you wanted rid of her! I told you to clip her wings, not, not blow her out of the water. You still could have stuck up for me! All right. OK, so maybe there was a breakdown in communication. But it won't happen again, OK? No, it won't. Cos I'm jacking it in. All right, then. I'll see you then, then. Yeah. Thank you. 
Not interrupt, you know, Tom. Oh, the phone, you mean? No, just a bit of business. Can I get you a drink? Uh, yeah, go on, I'll have a uh, half. I'm on my best behaviour tonight. <laughs> Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I went off and wanted to do it tonight. No, to... it's me that should apologise. I was bang out of order last night and it was right what you said. So, uh, still yet? I hope so. Just think about this, will you? You know, Steve says when you're the boss, you lose your mates. And he's right. It's a bit more complex than that, Karen. No, it sounds dead simple to me. Well, it depends what you want, doesn't it? Well, I don't want to be an outcast, that's for sure. Well, if being one of the gang's that important to you, I mean, if you want to be a nobody for the rest of your life... ..then, yeah... ..maybe you should forget it. But even if I do want it... I can't, I can't, can I? You could learn. No, Joe, they were laughing at me tonight. How am I meant to cope with that tomorrow? Look, Karen, there is no quick fix, is there? I mean, you try different things. You, you find your own management style. Do you think I'd be wasting my breath if I thought you couldn't do this, eh? How do you know? Because you've never seen me do it. No. But you've got something about you. You've got a presence. Yeah, I rush in. Feet first and I upset everybody. OK, so you're a bit rough around the edges, so what? It's like me when I started, but nothing that can't be smoothed over. Listen, you learned something new today already, haven't you? I suppose. Well, there you go. And you really think that I can do this? I know you can. No one's ever encouraged me like this before. Well, there's something else we got in common. Yeah, but not even Steve. Yeah, but you got hunger for it, right? To succeed. I always fancied myself as. Yeah, well, now is your chance. Why is this so important to you? Why me? Why not somebody else? Because you've got what I'm looking for. No one else comes close. And you really believe in me? I think you could be dynamite. Then I'll give it another go. Wise decision. Yeah, I don't expect miracles, though, eh? I won't be rushing anything. We've got a long way to go on this one, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah, OK. Night, Karen. Yeah, night, Joe. Dad's mm, coming, you best go. Gonna see you later? Yeah, 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 just go. Morning. Can you see what he's just put in Leslie's letterbox? Letters? Yeah, but what sort it all? My eyesight's not good enough for... They were definitely a brown envelope. Brown? That'll be it, then. Be what? I've done some I should have done a long time ago. Hey! I hate going to parties on my own. Everyone's going to think I'm desperate. I've got no mates. Well, well it's mine and Todd's first Valentine's and we want to do something special together. Lucky you. <gasps> well, if you think it's going to be that awful, maybe you shouldn't go. Not go to a party. Of course I'm going. Oh, baby, that is so nice. Have you felt the weight of it? And? Oh, you don't have to go to all this bother. You don't know me. I like to keep the romance alive. Oh, which is lovely, but I have got to go to work. Oh, I thought you might take the morning off. We could go back to bed. Oh, uh, excuse me. I'm a supervisor now. How's that going to look? Who cares? Well, uh, as soon as it's Valentine's Day, mwah, why don't I uh, try and finish early and then we could go for a romantic meal? Come on, then. OK. Mwah. I'll see you later. Uh, uh, uh. Don't forget your balloon. I am not taking a heart-shaped balloon into work with me. Why not? You show all the girls your soft side. Second time this week you've opened the shop late. I know. Yeah, and on both occasions I find you slobbering all over Marine Boy. I well, don't call him that. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Submarine Boy. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, I'd like to order some uh, flowers, please. No, I'll hold. 
wish Deirdre would come back. We used to take turns. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen, sweetheart. OK, so till we find someone else, I'd like you to put your work before your love life. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Um, can I order, like, a bouquet? Mm -hmm. Something unusual? Yeah, uh, orchids, perhaps? Well, let's say 100. 100 quid. Mm -hmm. Morning. I do. Did you get anything interesting in the post today? Apart from a gas bill, no. Oh, well, maybe it'll come in second post. What will? Look, I don't want to discuss our private life in here. I see. But you are going to get some And when you do, I don't want you to overreact. I want you to think about it. And then maybe me and you can sit down and have uh, a chat. I haven't got the foggiest idea what you're on about. Right. It's about time we faced the inevitable and made a fresh start. Yeah? Right, love, can I have uh, a packet of my normal fags? Sure. This is your last chance, Roy. On a morning, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> oh, I'm teasing you. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Yeah, you're looking very smart, Karen. I'm on my way to the bank to talk through my business plan. Business plan, get him! <laughs> well, it's a lot of money they're stumping up there. They've got to make sure that it's all kosher. What's the tell you haven't signed the lease as yet? Well, nothing's been finalised as yet, but it's all going to go through in the next couple of days. So you can have a cup of them while you're here? I better not fear. I haven't got time, but thanks all the same. See you. See you, love. Hey, it's bound to be a winner, you know, with a sex bomb like him buttering your spud. You drive me crazy. Guess who? Right, I'm off to get a cream bun. Does anybody want out? No, oh, Hey, I got a Valentine's card. I got two. Woman from the missus, though. I could tell her I'm writing. Don't know who I was from. All it said was, you drive me crazy. Guess who? You joking? No. Have you got it on you? Yeah, why? I got one exactly the same, same wording and everything. Who do you think it's from? You drive. Hang on a minute, I get it. Uncanny, innit? Oh, I forgot the purse. Oh, you busted. Yeah, well, um, I found a paper bag full of them in the office, and, uh, well, I knew neither of you would get any proper ones. Very funny. How about that for a Valentine's card, eh? Look! Hey, hey, hey look at this I prefer mine. Oh, it's not very big. Size isn't everything, Kirk. My mine's more colourful. Who's off? Any ideas? Oh, I know who it's off, all right. Hey, that consortiumist you were chatting up the other night. Mandy, was it? Bandy Mandy? No way! Well, who then? The woman of my dreams. The light of my life. Susie Quattro. Janice, you mutt! Les. Sit down a minute, I think we should have a chat. Why? I don't think that card's off Janice. No, listen, it all makes sense. No, Les, you listen. She doesn't feel like that about you anymore. You've got to face it. She came up to me in the shop this morning, all sheepish-like, asked me if I had anything interesting in the post. I said no. She said, well, maybe it'll come in the second post. She means a catalogue. I don't know why she doesn't tell me she's moved. Listen, will you? Then she says, when it comes, don't overreact. Think about it. Then maybe, maybe, me and you can talk. What does she mean by that? Well, she wants me to think about it, then we can talk. She wants us to get back together. Do you reckon? It's time we faced the inevitable. Made a fresh start. <laughs> Those were her very words. Blimey. Mm. You see, all the effort I put into wooing her, <laughs> it's finally paid off. But is she still going out with that Mick? Oh, he's on his way out. Anyone can see that. Well, it hasn't looked that way when I've seen them together. Yeah, well, maybe she's hang on to him just in case. In case I don't want her back. So what are you going to do now? Well, you heard what she said. So I'm not going to go charging him. I've sent her a dozen red roses with a note. What does it say? Come on, baby, light my fire. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Can I 
Yeah, sure. So is that okay? Yeah, we've got quite a lot of stuff done. No cat fights or slanging matches? No. Uh, Fizz cut a finger, but other than that. Good. And you're feeling better about everything today? Well, I'm not just going to chuck it in because I've got a bit of aggro. Yeah, well, even so, you were pretty upset the other night, you know. Joe, I'm not a quitter. Well, actually, I am a quitter, but I'm trying to change. And if I walk out, then they've won, and that ain't going to happen. Karen, they're not the enemy. You want them to work out because of respect, you know, because they hate you. I know. And thanks for the pep talk the other night, because, um, it's made me feel a lot better. Any time. Hi, I had to leave you for Janice about to speak. Uh, yeah, she's over there. Janice! Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> um, Roy always puts a single flower in a vase by my bed every Valentine's Day and then afterwards he presses them all with a book. Aww. Be lucky if I get a single bite of Kirk's kebab. <laughs> so have you said I to Shelley yet? No, and I'm not going to either. Why not? Because I know what she'll say, that's why not. I thought it was the bridegroom that picked the best man. Not the bride. Yeah, but it's not that simple, is it? And very well you know it. Now, look, can we can we just drop it? Come on, man. Why don't you just grab the bull by the horns? Look, I'm going to get some fags, so get them in. For me then. Oh no, don't do that, you'll ruin your arrangement. No, a rose for a rose. Hey, <laughs> Oops, I think I'm too tired, isn't it? Oh. Hey, yeah, sweetheart. Happy Valentine. Oh, what you like, you? I've already sent me some to the trip. I haven't. You must have a secret admirer. Or a pain in the backside ex husband, more like. You've got to give it him, you know. He's persistent. <laughs> He's deluded. Well, hopefully, he'll realise he's wasting his time by now. Anyway, he's a much nicer. Let's tug at the old art strings, though, when he does something like that. Nah, just makes me more determined to get it all sorted out, which I am doing. It's all the same. I'm still not being outdone on the old roadman states, so I booked to the table at a dead snazzy restaurant for tonight. Is that all right? Yeah. <coughs> that was Lucy, I take it? Yeah, it was Lucy, but listen, keep your voice down, cos Shell's behind you, all right? Very nice. I can see the attraction. Can you? Well, why don't you go after her then? Won't be the first time you would it. Okay. Keep your knickers on. Did you see her face? She couldn't get away from me quick enough. What did she expect? A Valentine's bouquet? No. You know, a simple hello would have done. And who's to say where that would have led? Look, it's finished. It has been for a long time. Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It's just a shock, that's all. Oh, so beautiful. Well, if you buy flowers for a florist, you better make it something special. Oh, yeah, I mean, they're really unusual, especially for around here. Where'd you get them from? This is florist. Oh, thanks. Nice. Gorgeous. <laughs> She's not chucking them away, is she? It's as if I'm an unwanted admirer. Yeah, even so, Ayla, you don't chuck 12 red roses away, it's waste. Well, you may as well chuck these in the bit and all, because they are rubbish, can well, who did them? Fizz. Yeah, all right, I'll have a word with her. Uh, Fizz, can I have a word? What? Well, these aren't up to standard. Yeah, well, I cut my finger. I went a bit wonky. And I asked you if you'd be all right to work, and you said it wouldn't be a problem. Hey, I'm doing my best here, you flaming cheeky cow. If the quality of your work isn't the same as everybody else's, I'm going to have to send you home. Otherwise, it's not fair on them. Do you understand? Well, it's not hurting anymore. I'll be fine, honest. 
And if the next batch are like these, Joe's going to chuck them straight back at me. They won't be. Good. Oh. You know, I'm going to take these home because um, no one wants them. Look nice in the flat. Well done. You modelled that very well. Thanks. In fact, I may even have to reward you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Come to the office when the others have gone out. Scrubs up well, doesn't she? You say that again. Yeah, you don't look too bad yourself, actually. What time's your table booked for, then? Uh, seven. Better get your skates on. Hey, you're trying to get rid of us. Oh, whatever gave you that idea. And don't hurry back, either. I feel Evan's fine. Richard? Hey, well, not often we get the place to ourselves, is it? Might as well make the most of it. So, you two will be OK by yourselves, won't you? Oh, very funny. I've decided, reluctantly, to play him at his own game. How do you mean? By taking the lease of the calf myself. It's not signed anything. Are you serious? No, why not? I've done the sums. It's within our reach, just. It didn't mean practically doubling the size of the calf, eh? That is better than having a rival calf next door. I'm not packing in my job, Roy. Well, you won't have to. I've been thinking. Perhaps it is time that we expanded. An ice cream parlour, perhaps. A peach Melba's, Knickerbocker Glories. Do you think there's call for that sort of thing? It would be more popular around here than double decaf cappuccinos. You're serious, aren't you? You're really going to do this? I am not a ruthless man, Haley. But back me into a corner, I'll come out fighting. So, were uh, you two doing anything special for Valentine's Day? Oh, I was going to go to Paris for a weekend, weren't we? And then we thought, oh, no, we've got the robbers for the pipe. Always oh, romantic, <laughs> isn't it? How was your steak? Mm. It was lovely. It's all lovely. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Mmm. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, you're back early. We couldn't get in, they'd overbooked. Oh, Sarah, I'm sorry. Not closing down. Will you stop talking like that? They've offered us a free pizza if we go back another evening. But it won't be Valentine's then. It won't be the same. Well, what can you do? They were full. A grovel, squeeze us in. Well, I don't think yelling at the waitress helped. Oh, no, come on. You, you can sit down, so we'll find you something to uh, eat. No, no, um, we don't want to ruin your evening. Well, we're finished now. No, we'll go out. Come on. Where? Everywhere's going to be full. Uh, we'll think of something. Yeah. It melts in your mouth. Listen on. Yeah, I'll try some this. Morning. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. Oh, we'll it. I tell ya. Top. I wish they did this damn rovers. What? I'll keep coming round and topping your wine glass up. <laughs> classy joint is this. And you are a very classy chick. Me? Don't walk coy on me. You've got all the quality they look for in a woman. Mm. Fell mouth and uh, wicked right up. <laughs> I'm being serious. You know your problem, Jal? You've got a very low opinion of yourself and you shouldn't have. I can't believe I've met a fella like you. You know what you were telling me earlier? About sorting things out, will I? Yeah. Well, it, it just it got me thinking about me and you. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, you know. I'm, I'm quite happy with the way things are. Well, I'm not. I think we should think about maybe moving in together. <laughs> it was very nice of you to offer to cook dinner for them. Well, I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, well, let's put it this way. I was pretty relieved when I said no. Can you imagine? Just the four of us. Very romantic. Can't believe you've gone to so much trouble. Well, anything that gives you and me a bit of quality time together is fine by me. Now, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? I'm sorry I flipped. I just really wanted tonight to be special. It is! I don't usually eat chips. I go straight on my thighs. It's not an ounce of fat on you. Besides... I'm with you. I'm happy. Me too. Oh. Oh, 
Is this a romantic evening then? No flash. Who's under the helmet? Oh, you mean Rick? It's Dwayne's brother. That Dwayne Lather's brother. Dwayne Lather's older, much better looking brother. He's in the army, so he's only back for a week. So I better not stand around doing gassing. See you later. Capra, good. Oh no, not tonight. Any night but tonight. Now then, where are we up to? Can't we have a different driver? Very touchy tonight, constable. Have you not had a pleasant evening? Yeah, it was fine until about ten seconds ago. Right then. Good luck in finding another cab. It is Valentine's night, you remember? It's right. It will be busy though. Let's just go. Okie dokie. Uh, what you were on about in the shop? It came in the second post. Did it? Don't worry. I'm not going to overreact. Like you said, it's time we faced the inevitable. I've seen Karen about. Oh, she was in with Joe when I left, and that was a couple of hours ago now. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, I nearly forgot. What's this? Let me see. This one. Well, Valentine's not just for kids, is it? This one's cheaper. But a bit from the other place, really. Can I get either of you a drink? No, uh, we're fine as we are, thank you. Checking a place for the wedding, are you? That's right, yes. Shelley, I know me and you haven't seen eye to eye in the past. That is the understatement of the century, Karen. But you know Peter wants me to uh, to be there. Look, mate, not now, please. In fact, he wants me to be his best man. Is this true? Well, no, we talked about this. Uh, over my dead body. I don't want you anywhere near my wedding, thank you. Why don't you talk to me about it? Well, it's nothing, lovely. We, we only... We just chit-chatted, that's all. You said you wanted me to do it. I don't want you at my wedding. In fact, I don't even know what you're doing hanging around here at all. I was just coming to meet you. Who are these flowers from? These are from Joe, aren't they? <laughs> no. Well, where are they from, then? I fished them out of the bin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Les bought them for Janice, and she chucked them away, and I didn't want to see them were to waste. What is with you? I don't like being kept waiting. We had that table booked for nine o'clock. Oh, no, sorry. Joe wanted me to do this order on the material. Yeah, made out it was some kind of reward. It's been a flipping nightmare. I must have been here for hours. Well, why didn't you find them? Because I lost track of time and I was concentrating. Where's Joe now? He went home at half past five. What is with the question, Steve? Hey. I am doing this for you. You do know that, don't you? That is nobody else. I want to make you proud of me. Well, how can I be proud of you if I never see you? I know I'm sorry I should have found. Tomorrow night. Hmm. Promise you. Keep the change. Thanks. Oh, thanks. John! Hang on a minute. John, you can't have it both ways. Hey. Well, it's one thing to go out for a meal, let him down gently. But he's, he's never going to get the message if you carry on punking him. Liz, what are you talking about? Wouldn't it just be kinder to put him out of his misery? Make a clean break. In fact, I'll wait in the cab. Ditch Baldy, then we can have that talk. What did you just say? What talk? Liz, what the hell are you going on about? You do know she wants to get back with me. I very much doubt it. She sent me a Valentine card. What? I didn't. It came in the second post. Just like you said it would. Les, I was trying to warn you, you'd be getting a letter from the solicitor. Not a Valentine's card. Solicitor? I've started divorce proceedings. What? And good night. Morning, Les. Some tea in the pot. 
Right, I'm off. You don't have to go yet, do you? I can't stand another morning listening to him sighing into his cornflakes. Yeah, but where is mates, aren't we? It's up to us to cheer him up. Besides, you can't leave me on my own with him. Do you want me to make you some toast? No. I've got no appetite. Oh, look, Les, it's not the end of the world. You'll meet someone else. I don't want anyone else. You know, I, I thought she was just bluffing. So Liz came yesterday. How can she do it, eh? How can she throw everything away we had in two lousy sentences, eh? I've got to talk to her. I've got to make her see. No, you've already tried. It's not going to do any good. Yes, yeah, she just kiss you in the teeth every time. Hey, that's my mate you're talking about. That's it. That's it. You could try talking to her. What, me? Oh, hey, no. hey, yeah, she might listen to you. You could tell her how gutted he is. Yeah, and how crazy she is for giving me up for him. Yeah. Oh, no, it'd never work. She'd be able to tell her we're lying. Well, what do you think of what to say, then? Only please, have a go away. I'm desperate here. I mean, the nerve of him. He could even contemplate being best man. Please, Shelley, look. Don't let him get to you. Well, it just annoys me that he's trying to muscle in on our wedding. Yeah, but he's not going to muscle in on it, is he? Because I've told him. I can't even believe he discussed it with him. Yeah, but I wouldn't actually call it a discussion, you know. He brought the subject up. What could I do? I couldn't ignore the fella, could I? <laughs> You'd be telling me next that he's right. That you wish he was best man. Look, no, I'm not. This is your day, and I promise you I'm not going to let him spoil it for you. It's just a big loan to take on, Mark. Yes, but it's perfectly manageable. As long as we tighten our belts. I don't see why you and Karen can't rent one together. <laughs> because we have rather different views on how to run a cafe. Kieran McCarthy had his way, we'd all be handing out meals and saying, Have a nice day. Top of the morning to you. Well, I still think he's a lovely lad. It would like a breath of fresh air around here. Yes, well, I would appreciate it if you would not go mentioning any of this to him. Don't worry, I won't read the word. Well, all that remains is for me to convince our landlords that we'd make suitable tenants. Wish me luck. Yeah. Good luck. Let's go back to bed. <sighs> Why didn't you tell me that before I got dressed? Because then I wouldn't have the pleasure of seeing you get undressed again, would I? Here, I'll give you... No, Steve! Whoa, I can't help it. It's this sexy new supervisor I'm sleeping with. All this power's turning me on. Mm -mm. Shame you're not wearing a uniform. Ah! <laughs> Well, this sexy supervisor is also starving. It's 12 o'clock and we've just got up. Well, there you go. We've already missed breakfast then, haven't we? And I don't intend to miss my dinner. So, uh, why don't you make us something nice to eat? And then we can go to bed after that. OK. Don't go back on your word, though. <sighs> Very nice. It's gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Kiri. But you really shouldn't have. Of course I should. Beautiful women deserve to be appreciated. Hey, I hope you're listening only. I could do with a bit more appreciation round here. Hey, I appreciate you. I always have. Well, in that case, you won't mind giving her the night off <laughs> so that uh, I can take her for dinner. You do owe me. I did work Valentine's so you could see Tracy. Oh, go on then, you crazy kids. Knock off at four. <sighs> Excellent. That means we can go for a drink first. See you see later. Ya. Yeah. Well, if you're that worried, why don't you ask him? I have. But you don't know what Roy's like once he sets his mind to something. He did this once before when he was trying to stop Dev Allaham turning it into an arcade. I had to practically threaten him with divorce before he'd see sense. I just wish he'd discuss things with me first. I mean, he pretends to, but he don't really listen. <laughs> well, that's Bella's for you. If you're not saying something they want to hear, then they'd know you. <laughs> oh, sulk. I mean, take my coat the other day, right? He asked me whether I like his new aftershave. Then, when I tell him it smells like rancid socks, he won't speak to me. Because we're two quid off the market. Though. Right, there you go. Thanks, John. Oh. Here's Janice. You know, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep my gob shut any longer. What? Me and Mick. We're thinking of moving in together. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah, you make a lovely couple. Thanks, love. Well, you're not going to tell Les, are you? Well, he's bad enough as it is over the divorce. Oh, he's not still playing the martyr act, is He's he? not playing at anything. Have a word with him. Uh, uh, he's gutted. Deeply hurt. Crushed. Tough. Well, the thing is, Jan, are you really, really sure you want to go ahead with this? Yeah. Fair enough. Get him in. Oh, how's it going? Well, better than expected. In fact, I got the distinct impression that he was anxious to get it off his hands. 
We signed the lease this afternoon. Shop's ours. <laughs> Dinner the baby, baby. Yeah, about 15 minutes away. Oh, I see. Couldn't wait, could we? Uh, -uh. Could always turn the oven down. Uh, no, I think that'll be plenty of time to have a scented bath. But suppose there's uh, room for two. Dead right, there's not. Besides, the longer you have to wait for something, the more you appreciate it. The more frustrated you get, you mean? Well, take your mind off it. Pop yourself down to the shop, get us a bottle of wine to go with a meal. We are splashing out, aren't we? Yeah, well, I'm worth it. By the way, has your uh, Ashley moved back in yet? No. To be honest, I don't even think it's on cards. He's tried a couple of times to get back in there, you know, but bless him. Poor lad only got as far as his front door. Must be hard for him. But he's, he's got to face it sooner or later. Uh, Maybe if you got the house sorted out first. How do you mean? Well, everything in the place will be upside down from when they carried out their investigations. Why don't they tidy up after? I'm afraid not. And uh, they won't have... Well, well, you know. What he's trying to say is he might do well to have the house cleaned before he goes back. And it's bound to be, well, you know, a bit of a mess, given what happened there. Keep changing. Oh, thanks, Richard. Oh, well, I never thought. I mean, I didn't think. I mean, look, you know, tell me if I'm speaking out of turn, but if it makes it any easier, I don't mind doing it for you. I mean, that's with Ashley's say-so, of course. No, 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 I couldn't think of you doing that. No, it's very kind of you to offer, but no. Now, listen, don't you go worrying yourself about me. I mean, I've had to cope with all sorts of things in my time, and I wouldn't offer it if I didn't think I could handle it. Now, she may take it better coming from someone he knows rather than a stranger. Well, if you're sure, I am. Well, I'll have a word with you later, see what he says. Well, I don't know. I don't know how you've got the nerve to come in here. Well, it's my local, Archie. But if you don't like it, well, you can always drink somewhere else, can't you? Did you see her? Uh, uh, yeah. And? And? Oh, I'm sorry, Les, but she's already made her mind up. I mean, I tried, I really did try, didn't I? But no, couldn't get anywhere. Oh, so did you catch him at it then? You what? You're Karen and Joe. Oh, very funny. Joe wasn't even there, as you well know. Well, he must have done a runner when he saw you coming. Look, give it a rest, Fizz, will you? I'm getting bored of this. All right, but just don't say anything. Try and warn you. Karen and John were at it. Oh, yeah. Just those, thanks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Kieran gave it to me. Oh, right. What's up? Isn't he allowed to do something nice? I suppose your theory does it. It's not a theory. It's based on experience, remember? I mean, he's still at it now. Trying to drive a wedge between me and Peter. Yeah, how? Suggesting he should be Peter's best man. <laughs> well, why shouldn't he be? He's Peter's best mate, after all. You just don't get it, do you? He's really got you under his spell. Well, maybe you'll wake up when he's gone. Babe! <laughs> Sorry it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on in here? <laughs> to do. His electric's gone off. He can't cook or anything. We well, didn't have to invite him round for dinner. Shh. It's supposed to be a romantic meal for two, not for three. Hey, I was trying to do you a favour. I was trying to sweeten him up a bit. He was all for going round there now and sorting it out and then you wouldn't have had your flipping dinner. Hey, is, uh, is everything all right? Yeah, of course it is. I'll phone you a spark. Not that it's going to be easy on a Sunday. <sighs> Look, I can always go and get something to eat at the cafe, you know. I don't want to put you out. No, come on, don't be done. You're going to stay here and have something to eat with us. Isn't he, Steve? Oh, are you? <clears throat> More than many. Look, Jan, about this divorce. Don't start with this. All I want to say is, well, there's no rush or anything, is there? It's not like you're planning to marry this bloke, is it? Of course not. Well, then. Well, I am thinking of moving in with him, though. You what? You've only just met him. Hey. Les, don't get all het up. 
it's no big deal. We just felt that we wanted it to move on a bit, that's all. You can't stand still forever, Les. I, I, I don't know how you can do this to me. First Dennis, and now him. Don't you dare bring Dennis into this. If you want to stay stuck in the past, that is entirely up to you. But you are not keeping me there with you. I'm getting a divorce. Yeah? Well, but if I won't give it you? You're the one that left me, remember? I did that wrong. So you've got no grounds. You can play silly beggars all you like. And even if I have to wait five years, I will get my divorce, whether you like it or not. See you around. Oh, hello, Audrey. Off to hatch some more conspiracy theories with Archie, are we? I'm glad I saw you. I wanted to offer you my condolences. Sorry. Well, just think here. Uh, poor Maxine might still be alive right now if your little windfall had come through earlier. Mind you, I suppose that means that Emily's safe for now, eh? Oh, don't look so surprised, Richard. Sarah told me all about it. I thought I made it clear that you were to stay away from my family. Except they're not your family, are they? They're mine. You may think that you've managed to break us up, but you haven't. Because I'm closer to them than you can ever hope to be. That's right, Audrey. Delude yourself. Be good at that. Well, I know you've got a lot on your plate to write at this moment, what we're waiting for tests and all that. But I just thought I'd tell you that Harry had offered. No. I'm not having folk going in our house messing with our stuff. Bobbies have already done that. No, Harry, well, he did just be... But it's in straight again. Uh, taking away, you know, all, all the reminders of what happened. There'll always be reminders, though, won't there? Maxine won't be there, but just me, me and Joshua rattling round that house. I don't think I can stand that. <laughs> there's bad memories in that house, I know. But there's good ones and all. And they'll drown out the rest, I promise you. Good for you. You know, I, I was talking earlier with Fred and Harry about cleaning up at number four. You should have seen Neil Mill's face. Oh, talk about guilty. Oh, Archie, he doesn't know the meaning of the word. Oh, he's got some front on him, I'll give you that. Can I have a point, please, Shelley? Oh. And by the way, it was a nice try the other day, but it didn't work, because Peter didn't want you at the wedding either. Oh, that's what he's told you, is it? Oh, don't try all that I know any better than you, rubbish, because it just won't wash. And another thing, if you hurt Sanita, you have me to deal with. She's happier now that she's been for ages. Or haven't you noticed? Especially since she heard that I'm going to be sticking around. Not if I've got anything to do with it, pal. So, uh, our streetcar's going then, Steve? OK. Yeah, but it's a bit rum working for that dev, though, isn't it? Are you right? You said you ate the fella. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, OK. By the way, I, um, I finished that order that you wanted me to sort out. Mm. Mm. Great. Aye. Up all night doing that, when she was supposed to be out with me. Well, you didn't need to do that. I wanted it to be right. Well, that's the first. Karen sucking up to a boss. Must have done something pretty special for her to do that. Right, well, listen, that was brilliant. No, don't rush off. Stay and have a drink with us. No, no, you're right. I've got stuff to do. Uh, thanks for sorting out that electrician, Steve. I have never been so embarrassed in all my life. You've already read that three times. Yes, well, you, you can never be too careful with these things, especially with a fine print. But yes, yes, sir. Uh, it all appears to be in order. So, you aren't going to sign it, then? Vera, I believe there is customer waiting to be served. Oh. What's the matter? Well, I know that you have some misgivings about this. A few, yeah. Well, you know, it's just a bit frightening, what we're taking on. Yes, and well, and I have to admit to having some trepidations myself. 
Really? Only you seem so purposeful. Well, yeah, but that's because I'm, I'm more nervous about what we might lose if we don't do this. Look, I do realise that I do have a tendency to panic. Whereas you, on the other hand, seem to keep a level head. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, 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 no. You... You are my, my ballast, as it were. So if you think that signing this is folly, please, please say so, and, and I won't. No. No, I think you're right. There's no way we're going to lose this cafe. You go ahead and sign. Yeah, the poor bloke couldn't even wait to get out of here. Oh, well, my heart bleeds for him. Never mind, he messed up our afternoon. No, Steve, he didn't mess it up, you did. Acting like a big sulky kid. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have come back at all. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Well, you looked very cosy when I came in. I hate to think I disturbed you. Are you trying to say something? Because if you are, then just spit oh, it out. I'm going for a pint. Yes, I think you better add. <laughs> hey! Please! I bet it was all your idea, this divorce, wasn't it? Say, if it's not one of you creating the scene, it's t'other. Just you keep your family fractions out of my pub. It's all right, Fred. I'll handle it. Oh, yeah? Come on, then, outside. No, I don't want to fight. No, because you'll know I'll win, that's why. Yeah, help me, you might. Look, Wes, I'm telling you, I've nowt to do with the divorce, all right? It's none of my business, is it? Too right, it's not. And as for me and John thinking of moving in together, well, you can appreciate it can't be easy for you. I'd feel the same if I was in your shoes. All I can say is no one's out to hurt you here, Les. And if we are, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, well... Hey! If it's an apology you're after, that's as near as damn it. Now then, are you buying a drink or are you going? Thanks. No problem. Flipping, eh? I thought there was going to be a fight then. He counted it really well, didn't he? I suppose he must have to deal with that kind of thing a lot in his job. Uh, Steve! Uh, pardon, please. Listen, I've been thinking. I'd like to take you up on your offer, you know, if he's still there, you know, sorting out the house. Of course it is. I'll be only too glad to. Thanks. There's just one thing. I want to come with you. Do you think that's wise? I mean, it's, it's not so bad for me. I'm not so involved, but you might find it a bit uh, harrowing. He's right, you know. I say he's right. I don't think it's a good idea. Maxine likes be... everything just so. You won't know where to put things, and I will. Anyway, I want to do it for her. Wow, look at you. Am I all right? You're fantastic. Yeah, I think I've changed my mind. How about we get Kieran to go and I'll take you out myself? Hmm? Oi. Hey, Dad. I reckon I'm a pretty lucky man. Yeah, well, you just make sure you treat her right. I will. Go right. down. Bye now. Peter Barlow? Uh, yeah, yeah. PC Pullen. I believe you're a friend of Kieran McCarthy's. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Why? We're just trying to get in touch with him. Have you seen him recently? No, sorry. Do you know where we can find him then? Uh, no, I don't. Well, thanks for your help. If you do see him, let us know, eh? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can always go to that nice restaurant, the Italian one. What do you call it? The Venice. You are really spoiling me. Well, why not? I'm gonna have a good night tonight. Yeah, if it carries on like this, we're gonna have to start going to Turk's Head. I don't know. I reckon he got the message. Where's the message? You could send it recorded delivery. It'd still come back return to sender. <laughs> Smarmy beggar. There's nothing worse than having to stand by and watch while your woman's being nicked from under your nose by another fella. <laughs> yep. To our new venture. Mm. Our joint venture. Mm. I have to admit that, well, despite all my doubts, there is a small part of me that feels, well, somewhat gratified that, in this case, the underdog has triumphed. Yeah, I know what you mean. I tell you, once I get this cafe open, there'll be no Look, stopping me. You're all going to get bored stuck round here. Yeah, you're what, with the natives as beautiful so as you? So Not that. a chance. Kieran McCarthy, you're under arrest for being absent without leave from the Navy. It's not true, is it? I'm sorry, Sunita. 
fairy deals, I suppose. You a few things that would take that look off your face. I could really screw your life. Hey, look, come on, don't take it on. It's, it's not her fault, is it? Yeah. Give me a break, lads, eh? Let me say goodbye to the lady. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I was going to give myself up, but everything was just going so well. I didn't want to lose you. You were the best thing that I ever had. You still are. Okay, that's enough. No, I, no, I only found out the other day. So why didn't you tell me? But, but I wanted to give him a fair chance, you know, so he could turn himself in. That's why, Shell. I thought we weren't supposed to have any secrets from each other. What else are you keeping from me, eh? And what did he mean by saying he, he could tell me things? Well, it's nothing. He's just trying to get to you. Come on, Shell, you know what he's like. He's trying to mess us up like he did last time. You know how he works. Yeah, I know how he works, yeah. Just I'm not so sure I know how you do. Shell. So, will they lock him up then, or what? I don't know, Shell. Either that or they'll fine him. Well, I hope they do lock him up, and the longer the better. Well, you don't mean that. I know you don't. Oh, I do. The only way to keep him away from here, going on about how he knows things and how he could really screw my life up. I still want to know what all that was about. Well, it's about nothing. He thought you'd grasped him up to the coppers. He was just trying to get his own back. Forget it, please, forget it. How could I have grasped him up? I didn't know anything. Exactly. And why didn't I know anything? Because you didn't tell me, that's why. Yes, and you should be glad. Glad? Yes, because if I had told you, then I'd have wondered if it was you that had told the coppers about him. Oh. I would have done if I'd have known. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oi. Don't she look fabulous? Yeah, very nice. Thanks. Not this for my benefit, no. For a job interview is this, but I said... At least you should walk around me for a while, you know, let people see us together and think, ooh, what a good-looking couple those two are. <laughs> They've arrested Kieran. <laughs> you what? The police have arrested Kieran. Why? What's he done? Absent without leave from the Navy. <laughs> no. What, you were harbouring a fugitive from the Crown in your little flat? I think that's funny, do you? <laughs> no, no, of course not. What, so he's done this for you? <laughs> he's refused to go back so he could be with you? I don't know. I'd like to think so. <laughs> well, they won't make him walk the plank, will they? Hey, hey, come on. Uh, where did she go? I don't know. So, are you going to be sulking all day or just till dinner time? I'm not sulking. I just don't like sharing my Sunday dinner with your flipping boss. Yeah, I think we gathered that, Steve. So, come on, just give me one smile before I go into work. Come on, Steve Schnuffles, give Karen a smile. <laughs> See you later. Hiya. Morning. Oh, I see. Gonna be more of that, then, is it? More of whatever you want. You're the one that thinks she's running the gap. I've been given a job to do, Janice. I can't help that. No, but there are ways of doing things. Oh, suit yourself. Oh. Morning. Morning. Oh, and, uh, thanks again for dinner. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Though, uh, I did get the impression Steve might not have been too chuffed. Yeah, well, just forget him. He was, uh, in one of his moods. Thanks again for dinner. Honest. That's what he just said, then. No wonder she thinks she can throw her weight around if they're so pally. Yeah, well, what I want to know is, if she's giving him his dinner, what's he giving her? Eh? Come on. <laughs> you knew he were on the run from the Navy. 
Yes. And you told her, and she told the police where to find him. No. No? Which I think is an awful thing to have done. Look, Shelley couldn't have told anybody, Sunita, because she didn't know. I didn't. For which I've been getting it in the neck all morning. Now, if you don't believe anything, love, please believe that. This is no to do with Shell. I didn't know, honestly, I swear. Well, all right, then. But you knew. And you should have told me, so I would have known what to expect. Now, look, be fair, love. If Kieran would have wanted you to know, he would have told you himself. And if he didn't, well, I think that's something you've got to take up with him. If I ever see him again. Now, come on, love. Sit down. Come on. Let's sit down, eh? Weren't you on your way to work, Peter? I'm trying to. You see, the great thing about all this is that me and you can be friends again, eh? I just feel like I've been used that he was looking for somewhere to hide and I was the nearest. Oh, no, I don't think it's anything like that. I mean, you mustn't think bad of Kieran after what's happened. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, he probably didn't want to worry you. That's why he didn't say anything. Honestly? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, I know, it's bad. No. Hang on a minute, Beth. Hello? Hi, Sarah. What do you want? And anyway, where are you ringing me from? Where do you think? You think they've let me out for the day? So what are you ringing me for? I just wanted to talk to you. Well, I'm sorry, but Whoa. no, you can't. Why? And don't ring me again. Can you believe this? Can you believe it? Look at this. Weatherfield Gazette. Yep. Remember him? Chris Melton. Who we treated to an all-expenses-paid holiday to Spain, him and his wife, but who then later couldn't help us. Well, no way he could help us as far as the bail officer was concerned. And now we know why! Councillor named him bribe scandal. He was in charge of the bidding process. Builders put in their estimates, Chris Milton sees them, and then for a fee advises certain favoured builders whether to put their bids up or down. And when I think of the way that snivelling little money grabber looked down his nose at me, well, all the time he's pocketing thousands. Yes, but... Now it's all come out. Well, it looks like it, yeah. I hope he gets everything he deserves and more. Yeah, but what if he talks about you? How you tried to influence him? Oh, oh, I doubt if we'll do that. Well, if he does, I'll just deny it. You see, I wouldn't have minded if he'd have been honest about it and said, you know, sorry, but the people building the hostel have offered me a damn sight more than a measly holiday in Spain. But no, butter wouldn't melt. They're all at it, councillors, planners. They've all got their snouts in the trough, the lot of them. Now, I'll only say this once. I'll not go on about it. Only I know that Harry will be more than happy to see to that house on his own, will you? I will. I want to be there. We'll do it together. I'll not argue. So when are you thinking of making a start? It's up to Ashley. Well, I don't want to take Joshua with us. Of course you don't. Leave him here. I'll look after him. I'll look after him as long as they want. <laughs> well, that might take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> How about if we go as soon as the dinner time rush is over? Fine, yeah. Well, I'll settle then. Only, you know, you can always change your mind. I've said. Of course you have, yes. Hi. Come from the interview? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Tracy Preston. Uh, Lucy Richards, hi. So, uh, you found us all right, then? Oh, well, Taxi did. You've got a lot of stock? Yeah, yeah, we had a big delivery this morning. So, is this the sort of place you worked in before, or are you used to something bigger? No, I mean, the shop was about the same size, except for we had this big display outside. I mean, that was a right pain, bringing that in and taking it out all the time. Yeah, well, that's why I don't bother. Anyway, there's not much passenger trade here. It's mostly deliveries and one-off specials. Mm. Well, we were next to a tube station, so it's like all guilty men coming in trying to buy something to keep little wifey happy. Or keep some stupid mistress happy they got stuck in a flat somewhere. What, you think all mistresses are stupid? What, and wives? I mean, any woman that lets a man tell her what to do. Mm. Listen, you know, I promised to be on my best behaviour. I've only just got through door and I'm saying all sorts. Now, maybe you've heard enough. Would you rather I just left? I would not, no. I think this might be a meeting of minds by the sounds of it. Um, look, um, I've, uh, I've got to finish this, so why don't you have a poke around? That's our catalogue there. And then we'll go up to the flat and we'll chat in a bit more comfort, yeah? Karen, you know we need that crab trio to finish by tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep telling them. OK, we'll tell the girls. We'll come on to a bit of overtime and all. And I keep telling them that as well. Ayla, hey, you're up for a bit of uh, overtime, aren't you? Um, yeah, I think so. I've just got to nip home and have a wavy ride. Okay, well, uh, I'll leave them in your capable hands then. 
So do we think they're at it then? Is it what? Something going on, I don't know about. Oh, nobody knows. Uh, Carter this morning was telling Karen thanks for giving him his dinner last night. Oh. Well, that means she does meals on wheels in her spare time. Ha, <laughs> Good one. Yeah, and happens she does something else on wheels in her spare time. <laughs> I did mention, did I, that there might be a bit of overtime tonight if anyone's interested. <laughs> Sorry. I'm washing the air. Yeah, and I've got to dry it for her. Well, uh, I'd jump at overtime only, but I've got to get everyone's teeth. Right, then. The pub, is it? Yeah, go on, then. This is our time, is this? If the bosses want to talk to us, then they should do it when we're getting paid for listening. So, basically, what I want is someone who can work with me and then take over and run the place when I'm not there. Well, I've been running Floris since I left school. You probably know more than I do. <laughs> well, don't worry, I'll pretend not to. <laughs> no, really, if I knew that much, I'd be like you one time, I'd have my own shop. Well, why haven't you? Well, I thought that getting married was more important. What, you don't anymore? No, I walked out on him at Christmas. Only if you're wondering why, it's because I couldn't stand the sight of him any longer. So you're not married? Uh, no, no. Boyfriend? Till recently, only I was sharing him with his fiance. It wasn't what you might call ideal. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds ideal to me. Anyway, about this job, if you still want it then. Yeah, it's yours. Oh, great, yeah, thanks. Hope you don't find it too boring after working in London, though. Uh, well, it doesn't sound it, not from what you've just been telling me. Now, you mustn't think that I'm glad that Kieran's been arrested. Of course not. Only there's no denying it, it does change things. It means we don't have to pay a fortune to keep him out of next door. Problem being... That we do have to pay a fortune because we signed a lease. I, I was wondering if I should go and see the landlord, make him some sort of offer. One that he can't refuse. <laughs> no, he might refuse it. In fact, he probably will. There's something that um, I have to tell you. I wasn't going to, but, well, I think I should. What? Well, don't worry, it's not about us. I got a phone call this morning from Aid. They've let him out? No, they have phones in there. Oh. So what did he want? Just to talk. Don't worry, I said no, I didn't want to talk to him. Well, I hope you didn't, and I hope you won't. I said it isn't. OK, fine. Shall I switch the lights on? Ashley? I think we're better on, yeah. Let there be light, eh? Ooh, I could do with a bit of heat as well. Look, are you all right? I can do this by myself, you know. Yes, you are. It's what I found there. Was it? Right. Sorry. I thought I'd be all right. Hey, look, you can't expect to be straight away. Hey, it wouldn't be natural. Maybe you should be for a walk, get a bit of fresh air. You do that. Hey, and take as long as you like. I'll, I'll make a start. Thanks. Um, I know I said that I could do some overtime, but I'm sorry I can't. You mean they've told you that you can't? Um, no, it's just that Roy's seen about a lease and I want to be there for when he comes back. Yeah, of course you do. So, uh, no one can do any overtime, is this right? Cos you're all too busy. I think we are. Well, I'm not bothered. I mean, if that's what you're doing it for, to show me up, then you're just wasting your time. Cos I'm going to do it myself. Cos I can still get on a machine and be as good as any of you lot. Problem? No, just I'll finish the crab tree order off on my own. 
because no one fancies any overtime. Oh, is that right? Mm. Oh, well, I must bear that in mind, because we're obviously paying you all far too much. Get lost. Uh, not paying us enough. It's so not fair. I said I'd do overtime if I could. She doesn't have to be fair, eh? She's got two bosses behind her. Well, one of them. Hey, unless she thinks she's making Baldwin his dinner and all. Well, her mate Linda did. Maybe she's taking a leaf out of her book. She's married, isn't she, Karen? <laughs> yeah. I think Steve knows what she's up to. If she is. You're only guessing, you. Uh, she made him his dinner, Mark. Don't you want? Hey, keep your voice down. She's spoiling for a fight. Don't give her the excuse. <laughs> Councillor. Hello. Just been reading about a colleague of yours. Have you seen this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen this, yeah. It's me thinking we lived in a democracy and that my voice counted the same as anybody else's when your pal's been taking backhanders from builders. Marvellous. I should have thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? Do you know how much that damn bail hostel costs me? Yeah. Well... The only thing I've got to be pleased about is if your friend Chris Melton gets what's coming to him. No, pleased that we're not going ahead with the hostel. It was decided this afternoon. I was going to pop over and tell you if you give me half a chance. Not going ahead? Well, we can't use the builder we had, could we? Not after we found out how he got the job in the first place. And it's generated so much bad feeling that we've decided to scrap the whole thing altogether. Oh, Curly. That's wonderful. I, I, I'm sorry if I, I was... If no, I no, no, to... that's all right. I'm just glad we made somebody happy. Oh, you have. Very. Yeah, just hang on. Um, Candice wants to come round tonight. Don't bother me. I'm not against you seeing all your friends. Aid isn't a friend. Yeah, sure, we're only hanging around. Gail! Gail! Where's your mum? She's in the kitchen. Hey. What's the matter? You won't believe this. You will not believe it. They've cancelled the bail hostel. Because of all this business in the paper. I've just been talking to Curly. But that means... It means that we're high and dry. We're in the clear. We can sell the flats for full price. We can pay off the bank, everything. Oh, that's wonderful. This is the beginning of the rest of our lives. Nobody loves me, everybody hates me. Think I'll go and eat worms. Long worms, short worms, fat worms, skinny worms, worms that we... Well, I've done my best. I think we can declare it fit for habitation again. Bless you for that, Harry. I'm very grateful. It'll not be forgotten. Ah, it's a grand house. Oh, you'd say so if you didn't know what had happened. How are Ashley still there, is he? No, no, tell you the truth, uh, he didn't stay for long. I think he found it a bit of a trial. So where's he gone? Oh, well, I think this might be him now. Hello, lad, all right? Yeah. Hello, Joshua. Come here. No, I'll just uh, nip home for an hour. Ah, you go put your feet up. <laughs> <laughs> So you've been to the house, then? Straight in and straight out again. I did it cleaning by himself. I went to the cemetery. Did you? I just couldn't stand it in the house. I don't know what it were. I just felt like I couldn't breathe. So I went to the cemetery and sat by Maxine's grave. I told her about the test. That was something I had to do. She didn't understand. I hope so. <laughs> Right, it's about what you want me to do. You can get them packed, and I'm going to need some more bread. Bread? Right, I'll get that first. So I said, well, circumstances have altered, because I didn't want to go into detail. No. And I said, well, so we no longer wish to lease number 18. Right, he said. But you do realise you have to give a month's notice. Well, I said, I've paid you three months in advance, so do I take it or I'll be getting two months back? Well, he said... Yes, he said, uh, looks like you will. Oh, I well done. I <laughs> couldn't believe how easy it was. <laughs> no, I'm not taking any pleasure over what's happened to, to Kieran, still. No, we know you're not. Are you all right? Yeah, okay, I'm OK. I've tried ringing him to find out about him, but they just say they'll inquire and they never phone me back. Well, it's 
early days yet, isn't it? I mean, they might not know themselves what's going to happen. You know, I've been thinking about what you said, about him not telling me so I won't worry. Do you think that's the real reason? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, look who's just come in. Mm. Probably looking for his wife. Hey, do you think we should tell him where she is? No, Fizz, I don't. If there's something he needs to find out, he won't thank us for helping him. Don't know if Karen's been in, do you? Um, no. Sorry, love, she hasn't. Do you want a pint? Um, what would you like, my dear? Mm, glass of dry white, please. Guess what? I've got a job. Oh, well done, doing what? Same as before in a flower shop. Well, at least you'll smell better when you get home than I do. <laughs> so it's one dry white and I'll have a, a red please, shall So is the shop round here, then? No, it's closer to city centre. I mean, it's a bit of a come down from what I'm used to, but the woman who runs it, she seems all right. Tell you what, Karen, there were a world record for sewing knickers in walk here. Yeah, well, I'm going to show them, aren't I? They're not going to make a fool out of me. I shouldn't imagine as many can do that. Hey, when you finish, we'll have a drink. Mike's buying this malt. I'm sure he'd want us to. I'm sure he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. But we'll have one anyway, eh? Yeah. Hey, love, have a pipe, please. Yeah. Right, Steve, how are you? Not so bad, yeah. Good. I've just been talking to your Tracy, and apparently she's got herself a job. Well, sir, they've started charging her rent, has he? Oh, now, be nice. No, she seemed dead chuff, actually. He's in a flower shop, you know, like she's done before. Oh, flower shop, eh? Yeah, why? What are you smiling at? No, nothing. It's just, uh, it's good for her, you know, I think of worse places to be. Yeah, a lot worse. There you go. Can have that on me. I'm feeling in a good mood. Oh, thanks, love. <laughs> Just do us a favour, eh? What? Go and tell your sister that you're pleased for her. Go on. Okay. Well, at least Anita looks a bit more cheerful. Oh, another couple of days. She won't even remember his name. Oh, come on, Tracy. She was really upset. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> Pete? All right, Dev, uh, I'm told I have to congratulate you. First job I apply for, and I walk straight in. Yeah, many other applicants. Oh, I knew that you'd ask that. Oh, so I take it that means none, but never mind, eh, because you got the job anyway. Now, uh, listen, won't you uh, sit down? I've got to talk to my business partner anyway. I thought we were going for a meal. Yeah, and we shall, Princess. We shall. So, whereabouts is this shop then? Oh, you won't know it. It's called Lucy's Florist. I mean, what a boring name. Lucy's Florist? Yeah, well, I said you won't know it. No, I think I might know it, actually. Uh. And he's so punctual, you know. I don't know whether that's to do with him being a copper or what, but if he says he's going to be there at 7, he's there at 7 o'clock on the dark. Excuse me, ladies, sorry. Um, you haven't seen Karen about, have you? Uh, yeah, she's still at work. Her and Joe are doing a bit of overtime together. <laughs> what? He asked, didn't he? I'm only telling the truth. Come on, you. Did I hear right, Steve? Your missus is in that factory alone. She did. With Mr. Joe Carter. Oh, dear. Yeah, but she does work there, you know what I mean? No, I know. I know. I also know what kind of man Joe Carter is. Not one to be trusted. Certainly not to be trusted with anybody's um, wife. Is that right? Yeah. We got on like a house on fire, which is a good thing, really, because it's only going to be the two of us running it. Oh, it's, it's, it's a good thing, yeah. Well, running it to start off with, and then she's going on paternity leave, so it's just going to be me. Sorry? Just me running it. No, uh, what you said before, that she's... Going on maternity leave, like, having a baby. I mean, you must have heard of it. Right, and this is the woman that's running the flower shop? Lucy, yeah. Lucy. Yeah. She's having... Having a baby? <laughs> Look, why are you interested all of a sudden anyway? I mean, why all the questions? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm pleased for you. It's, it's great. Do you want another? Oh, no, thanks, love. I've, uh, I've got some work to catch up on. I thought you were going to work at night anymore. Oh, well, yeah, you know. Well, I know never to believe a word you say. Well, what do you keep going on about Joe Carter for? I don't keep going on about... You're always slagging him off. What, do you frighten no, him? I fancy him or something? Just calm down. Look, uh... Look, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Sit down. No, uh, it's, it's all right, thanks, Dev. I've got some stuff to do. You know this new job that you're doing? Yeah. You're taking over while she has a baby? Yeah. Yes, and that's for real, is it? Well, yeah. Look, what 
are you on about? No, nothing. It's, it's good. I'm pleased for you. Hold on. Them girls, they don't have anything against you, personally. <laughs> Do you want a bet? No. Nah. They'd be the same with whoever I promoted. What they're against is anybody getting on, making some of themselves. No, I think they're jealous. They think I've got some kind of uh, special influence over you. Oh, yeah? And what sort of influence is that, then? I don't know. Anyway, who cares what they think? See, the problem in this country is people don't judge you by where you end up, but by where you started. Well, I started at rock bottom, so I'll just be at rock bottom all my life, then. Yeah, and me. So it's people like us we have got to ignore all that. <laughs> have faith in yourself. Yeah, but sometimes you need someone else to have faith in you. Which is why I'm really grateful. Hey, baby. What's going on in here? Hey, come in, Steve. We're just having some of Mike's whiskey. Yeah, I had to work late because them lazy cows wouldn't do it. Hey, you'll have one with us, won't you? No, I won't, thanks. When you're ready, eh? Yeah, I'm just going to finish this off. So what have you two been up to then? Sarah's going to be a millionaire. I'm not. How come? I'm not. Because <laughs> Richard can now sell his flats for a load of dosh where he couldn't before. Well, they've cancelled the bail hostel they were going to build. Anyway, guess what? Guess who I got a phone call from? Who? <sighs> Aid. Nah. Yeah. You rang me up this morning. I said, what are you ringing me for? I don't want to talk to you. So why do you want to keep talking about it? I can tell Candy's can't, huh? How did he sound? Like usual. Yeah, arrogant, stupid. Only a bit sad, like he actually did need someone to talk to. He's not rang me. I had to do it, Steve. I had no flipping choice. One minute he's round here for his dinner. What? What has that got to do with anything? Uh, the next minute you're having nice little cosy drinks. I work with a man, Steve. Have you never had a drink with anybody you work with? How do you think it looks, Karen? To who? Are we going to sell it to the papers now? To your mates. I haven't got any mates, Steve. Yeah, and I wonder why. Because every time they see you, you're with him. And anyway, never mind them. What do you think it's like for me? What do you mean, what What do you think it's like for me? Waiting for you in the Rovers, only to be told, oh, no, Karen's not here, she's still in the factory with Joe. And then I go in and the pair because all you plan to make a night of it. Who told you? Fizz and Janice. Yes, because that is the point, isn't it? They think that Joe gave me the job because he fancies me. They won't do it over time, so I've got to do it, and then they can come and tell you where I am. Can you not see? I saw the pair of you... It's a setup. Me and you, Rowan, this is exactly what they want. Then you'll tell me to jack my job in, and thank you very much, they've won! <sighs> the house is ship-shape and Bristol fashion. There's naught to see there, not now. Not for us, no. We don't know what he'll be seeing when he goes in there. Any room. I'll, uh, I'll get on. Right. So, has he gone down all right, then? Well, the story never got to end. You're fast asleep. No. Oh. So, what are you planning on doing now? I'll wait a bit, make sure he gets off. Yeah. And then I know. Might go for a walk. Oh, what, where? You're not thinking of going back to the cemetery? Well, it dark. Of course not. I'm going to take and leave my senses. Now, don't be ridiculous. Fine. I wish I could be great, that. Not being able to think of it all the time. This is me. So I see. Is it all right if I come in? It's not, no. I'm sorry, Peter, but I told you I didn't want to see you yeah, again. Yeah, I know that, Lucy. And I meant it. I don't. We're finished, so... No, you're not coming in. Right. Will you please... Please don't do this again, OK? Bye. Did you not hear me? Yes, I did. I heard you. What, but you don't believe me? What do I have to do to prove it? You want me to call the police? I want you to listen to me I for a minute. I won't, because I heard it all last time. I know what you're going to say. So will you please just go away and leave me alone? Lucy, you're pregnant, aren't you? And I'm guessing it has to be mine. <laughs> is that supposed to be some kind of joke? No. Well, whatever it is, no, I'm not pregnant, no. So if that's what it is that brought you here, then you needn't have bothered, cos it's not true. Now leave me alone. Luce. This is the last time. Either you get out of here now or I'm calling the police. And I mean it. Listen, you want me to call them? Listen. That woman who came for an interview for a job this morning, well, that's my stepsister. Tracy, yeah. Tracy Preston. Only that's a married name. A maiden name's Barlow. Barlow, see, can you spot the connection? She's your stepsister. Yes, she is, I'm afraid so, yeah. And you told her. And she told me, so.
So you sent her? No. Well, you must have. Well, no, I didn't know you were pregnant, did I? Look, she was looking for a job. She's a florist. You advertised. She doesn't look like you. I know. Well, she's looking, isn't she? No, look, I said stepsister, you know, we're not blood-related. My dad married her mum and, and he took Tracy on at the same time. Does she know about us? No. What, you haven't told her? No. But you are pregnant, aren't you? I am, yeah. Right, OK, well, now we're getting somewhere. And it is mine, yeah? Well, whether it is or it isn't, Oh, it come doesn't... on, look, Lucy, at least tell me that. Because if it's not mine, then whose is it? What are you saying? You were seeing somebody else at the same time as you were seeing me? Is that it? Or is it, is it that Dan's that was round here that day? Is it, is it? No. OK, good, so that's one person eliminated. Now, what are we going to do? Go through every able-bodied male between the ages of what shall It's we... yours. Thank yes. you. Good. Well, it's a bit of a surprise, that. It was for me. When did you find out? You mean, was it while we were still seeing one another? No, it wasn't. It was after you decided you wanted to marry Shelley and we'd finished. Right. But you might not want to believe that. No, I do. I, I believe it. But you know when I came round the other week? Yeah, I knew then, yeah. Right. So I see. And it's no good asking me if I know how it happened because... I really don't know. It certainly wasn't deliberate, if that's what you're thinking. No, no, it's, that's not what I'm thinking. Good. All the same, you weren't going to tell me. I wasn't, no. No? What? Ever? You're just going to let me grow old and, you know, never knew I had a kid. I suppose that was the idea, yeah? Does that not strike you as a... Well, it's a bit unfair. No. Well, it strikes me that way. Yeah, I can see it might. What have I done to you, you know, that would be so terrible? I would deserve that. Or maybe I have done something. If, if I have, tell me. I'm not saying that you've done anything. OK. You were very nice to me. I think you're a lovely person. Uh, but you're still saying... I'm still saying that this is my child. And I'm the one that's going to have it. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't deny that, can And I? I'm the one that's going to bring it up and provide for it. And I won't ask you for anything. I won't ever ask you for a penny. So what would be the point in telling you? Well, I might want to provide for it. What? Well, when you're planning on marrying someone else and you're probably going to have children with that someone else... Come on, Peter, you made the choice, not me. You just stay with Shelley? And marry her, yeah. Yeah, OK, fair enough, hang on, but, you know, I didn't know about this then, did I? Yeah, no, I'm glad that you didn't. Do you think I'd want you to stay with me just because I'm having your child when you'd rather be with someone else? No, thank you. No, fair enough, I can see you wouldn't want that. I don't think you would either. No, I suppose not. So that's the reason that you didn't tell me? Yes. But now I know, don't I? So? Well, so it means that everything you've been saying is not really relevant anymore, because me knowing, that makes everything different. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think so. No, but of course it does, Lucy. Look, I can't go back to not knowing, can I? I mean, you can't expect me to walk out that door and just, you know, forget that anything ever happened. Actually, that's what I do expect you to do, yeah? Well, no. Lucy, I'm sorry, no, I can't. That's, that's my kid you're having. You're his father. Yeah. But that doesn't make it yours. This is my child, Peter. Mine. This, I am really sorry that you found out. But that doesn't change what I plan on doing, which is to bring up this child on my own and without you. Sarah, it's me, but listen. Don't hang up. Please. I only want to talk to you. Talk to me? What about...? Him again, is it? It's Aid. Just talk a bit. Doesn't matter what about. How are you? I'm OK. Sarah, just ring off. She won't. How are you? Better than this place. But you know what would help? What would be the best thing that could happen? What? If you'd come and see me. Sarah. What? Do you think you might? Look, I can't talk now. I've got to go. But you might, yeah. If I just think you might, that'd be great. I might, yeah. Bye. Was it him? It was, wasn't it? Yes. Just let me guess what he said, shall I? He wants you. No, he's begging you to go and see him. No. No, he just asked me how are you and that he's fed up with the place he's in. That's all. 
He wouldn't go and see him, would you? He didn't ask me to. Yeah, she would. Look, I didn't ask him to ring me. I know. I'm not going to see him. Of course I'm not. Can we talk about something else now, please? So you think I'd be such a rotten dad? No, because you must do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this. Such a rotten dad that you'd sooner this baby had having grown up with no father at all instead of me. I didn't say that. Didn't you? Well, I'm sorry. But I think that is exactly what you've said. But what have I done? What have I done for you to, to think I'm such a monster, eh? Tell me. Because I want to know. This is why. This is why what? This is why I didn't want you to find out, because I knew there'd be all this arguing and upset. And I didn't want it. I didn't want it, because I'm going to say things that are true. All right, OK. I'm sorry. Just... I'm sorry. You're not a monster. I'm not saying you'd be a rotten dad. You'd probably be a great dad. But it's Shelley that you want to marry. I don't want you not marrying her just because I happen to have got pregnant, because if you do that, you and me won't work anyway, because you'll always think it was my fault and that I trapped you. <laughs> Peter, oh, this is going to be hard enough for me as it is. I can't stand all that on top of it. <laughs> Love. Mm. All right, OK. OK, look, I'm not going to touch you, all right? Just, uh, just take it easy, OK? Try and calm down, OK? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to give you such a hard time. No. It's not your fault, is it? You can let me get you a drink, eh? Oh, you're making it even worse. Oh, what? what how, how am I doing that? By being nice to me, making me remember what it used to be like. Oh. So I'll go back to being nasty then, shall I? No. Yes. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, let's have a drink, shall we? Try and be civilised. You know, look, Luce, all that I'm trying to do here is get it straight, you know? I'm just trying to get straight what you want and why. You've got to remember, you know, you've had time to think about this. I haven't. No. And uh, at the end of the day, it's your choice. Well, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. You can have whatever you like. Oh, no. Coffee's fine. Yo, oh, hello. You've not got far in your walk, have you? Don't think I'll bother. It's a bit late now, ain't it? Well, Martin's just come in asking after you. Why don't you go in and have a drink with him? Hardly appreciate what you're doing, but I'd rather stay here on my own. Well, it's up to you, of course it is. He's at the bar, if you should change your mind. I cannot believe it, Gail. After everything we've gone through. Well, you deserve it. Oh, you mean you do? Yeah, for standing by me. Do you know what this means, Gail? Well, you keep telling me. No more juggling figures. No more being nice to the bank manager. Oh, yes, I shall enjoy talking to him. That's first thing tomorrow morning. Telling him where he can stick his precious overdraft. But you haven't sold the flats yet. Oh, I will. They were queuing up before. Now with the bail hostel gone, they'll be queuing up again. This means something else as well. You having a great big grin on your face? Oh, as well as that. We can move. Move house? Yeah, like we planned. Get away from here. Start our lives again somewhere else. Where's that bird of yours tonight, then? Oh, we're having a night apart. All right. And whose idea was that? Hers. But I don't mind. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, in my experience... In my experience, absence means one of you is taking advantage. Oh, no, look who's coming. What have I got to do to get away from them two? We could go somewhere else. Why should we? This is our local, this. No, they can go somewhere else. We're staying. Well, we could always go to Turk's Head. They're anywhere. Just I told them I would see you and Curly in here. Right. Well, we'll stay here, then. I'm not bothered unless you are. I'm not bothered. As long as you don't say it out. What, do you want a pint? Yeah, please. Evening. I'll do. Hey, now. Here he is. Uh, yeah, two well, pints of you had enough of being shot in there. Come on, Martin. All right, mate. Well, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Silly question. Now, then, I'm going to go and pull two pints on the house. 
and I'm going to get out of your way and let you two young fellas have a good chin, Michael. Suppose, I'm, I'm just saying suppose, go okay? On. But I go home, I split with Shelley, I end the engagement, I say the whole thing off, then, then would you listen to me? But I don't want you to do that. No, I don't care, um, would you? No. Why not? Because you'd be doing it for the wrong reason. Well, I can't see what would be so wrong about that. I mean, I can't think of a better reason than wanting to hope to bring up your own child. Well, if your stepsister hadn't been a florist and needed a job, then none Yes, of... I know, I know that, Luce. I know then I would never have found out. I know, I know all about that. But you see, probably what you weren't expecting is that I'm glad I know. I'm glad you're pregnant. I'm chuffed a bit. Right. Here's the deal, OK? I'm going to go on, I'm going to finish with Shelley, then I'm going to come back and we're going to carry on talking, OK? No. Why? Why not, for heaven's sake, Luce? Why? Because you'd never forgive me if I made you do that. But you wouldn't be. See, I want to. No, you don't. And when you leave here and get back to Shelley and come down to Earth, you'll realise what a lucky escape you've had. I won't. Who knows? You might even thank me. You know, I heard anything more from Matt? <laughs> no. Good. Maybe I was overreacting. Maybe I was just sending his condolences. So, if that's what you think, then... Ashley, you've had your DNA test. Why don't you just leave the results where they are at the solicitors? They're always there when you need them, but there's something that you just don't have to deal with now. No. I know what you're saying. It makes sense. And I've come this far, but I have to know. I just have to. I'm not sure how Sarah and David will take it. Oh, no, no, no. I don't mean go to Timbuktu or even Blackpool. I mean, we stay within the same catchment area for school. I just mean get away from here, you know, away from... Well, I'll be honest with you, Gail. Away from all the gossip and accusations and the Get Richard Hillman gang. I'm sorry. No, no. I wasn't thinking. No. Of course you want to get away from here. And yes. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. We'll talk about it. And yes, we'll do it. We will. You know, Leslie's at the bar giving me the evil eye. Yeah, people like that we us when we came in. It must be dead hard for you. It must feel like telling him to get a life of his own. I have to. It'll make a blind bit of difference. Proves one thing, though. What, that he's bonkers? <laughs> no. Well, we knew that anyway. <laughs> it proves just how serious I am about this lady here. Because what I'm putting up with from my ladder over there, I can tell you I wouldn't put up with from anybody else. Oh, you're nice. I think they're talking about you. What do I care? Yeah, but you do, though. And what are you? Mr Know-it-all all of a sudden. When I want advice, I'll ask for it, OK? All right, then. Go on. What would you do, eh, if you were me? Try being friendly towards them. And what's that supposed to achieve? Well, it might mean Janice will talk to you, which is what you want, innit? You haven't got a clue, have you? Not the faintest. Just don't try talking about something you know not about. All right, then I won't. Uh, Luce, can I give you a hug? <laughs> of course you can. This, this is for both of you. And I'm very fond of you. And I don't want you thinking that I've done any of this to spite you or get me home back yet. I, I know, and I, I mean, that's why all this is just so stupid. Oh, let's not start it again. No, OK, all right. Wanna go? Yeah. Oh, uh, what about Tracy? I mean, are you still gonna give her that job? I don't see why not, especially since you and me won't be seeing each other anymore. Don't say that. Forget about me, yeah. Be happy with Shelley. Well, go on. OK, well, you look after yourself. Do you know what? I used to really enjoy making fellas jealous? Because I must say, I was pretty damn good at it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. Yeah, but I hate it when it's you, Steve. I can't stand it. Look, baby, there is nothing going on. I mean, I work with a fella, so I've got to talk to him, and yet sometimes it's just going to be the two of us because that's the job that I'm doing now. Yeah, right. well, can we have no more falling out? So I've got nobody talking to me at work. I mean, I've got to have somebody on my side. Well, I'm on your side, of course I am. Just make it easier on me, you know? Oh, I will. 
But we're not going to tell the kids yet, are we? Well, not if you don't want to. Not until we know for sure. Till we know where we're moving to. Tell you what, we'll keep it our secret. Hey, nice to have a secret we can smile about for a change. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> Thanks, love. It's all right, Les. I fancy some chips. Aye, me and all. Only I'm just going to have a word with this lot first. Oh, Les. It's all right. <laughs> Second your advice, aren't I? So, how are you diddly? Having a good time, are you? Can we help you, Les? I just wanted to say, I was out of order on one or two comments I made. You're right there. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. OK, I apologise in front of witnesses. So, all right now then, are we? No hard feelings? None where I'm concerned, no. And you're all right, Jan? Yeah, thanks. Right, uh, I'll say toodaloo and leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening. See ya. See ya. Wow. Les apologising. Miracles do happen. That one is sickening for summer. Let's just uh, see what he's like tomorrow, shall we? Are you? Yeah. You finish your work? Yeah. Can I have a punch? Oh, listen, listen. Harry? Hey, up. Um, tell Pete what you're telling me about the Craven Arms. Oh, yeah, only your good lady here was saying how you were stuck for somewhere to have your reception. Which we are. Oh, uh, yeah. And I said, had you thought about the Craven Arms over past the golf club? You know, they do a lovely... Yeah, yes, yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Harry, yes. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll put that on the list, thanks. Well, no, I thought we could give him a ring, you know, get things moving. Well, why? We're not in such a hurry, are we? Or have I missed something? Has it been a law passed that, you know, everybody has to get married here by a certain date? No. Ah, oh, well, like you say, it's uh, one more for your list. Peter, what's the matter? Nothing. You would tell me if there's something wrong, wouldn't you? Shell, as soon as there's something to tell, love, believe me, you'll be the first person to know. You don't want to hear another word, do you? Hmm? Uh, about what? About the wedding. You see, women love all the fuss about weddings and men just aren't interested. It's like Venus and Mars all over again. No, it's not that, Shelley. It's just I've got a lot on my mind, that's all. Yeah, and I know what. Kieran. No. Yeah, well, of course, Kieran. You know, he's a mate, isn't he? I don't like to see him in trouble. Yeah, but he did bring it on himself. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, people get themselves into complicated situations, Shell. Yeah, I'm not criticising him. I'm not, I'm not mad about the bloke, but... Staring into each other's eyes, that's yeah. sweet. Well, we are in love. Well, you should buy some flowers. I could get you a discount. Well, you've not even started yet, Tracy. You're just giving away your profits. No, take no notice. I love flowers. Yeah, I know you do, love. So, uh, well, hope it all goes well today. It will. Got any first day nerves? I can handle a shot like that. Well, even so, good luck. Mm, thanks. See ya. Bye. Love. Hello. Oh, hi, Dad. Everything all right? Um, listen, um, have you got a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm only going to get a paper. Come to the house. No, I'm, I'm going to open up. I'll, I'll be across later. Is that OK? Yeah, sure. Great. Has Aid phoned again? No. He will. When he wants something from me, he's persistent. I told him to leave me alone. Oh, yeah? And he always does what he's told. That's why he's in jail. He's not been found guilty of anything yet. He will be. Come on, Bethany. He's quiet now. I'm going to wake all night. I heard. Should I have come in? No, no sense in both us walking floor. He misses his mummy, you know. There's, there's, there's none of that familiar in this place to him except you. I've decided to go over at Rogue get some of his toys. I'll fetch him if you want. I was in there yesterday and it'll be clean now. But like it used to. Harry did his best. Can't have the house forever. No, there's no rush. Maybe will a couple of teddy bears make any difference? They might. I'll leave it till later. Come on, to Ian Squirrels. You're right. We do need a larger house. And a change of scene. You two on about moving again? We're considering it. Well, oh, massive garden. Yes, and a bedroom twice as big as the one you got now. Big enough for a pool table. Could be. What's to consider? Do it now. And you wouldn't mind moving further away from your mates? No. I don't mind where I live as long as I still see me dad. I know, love. Shouldn't you be at Simon's? Yeah, I'm going now. 
Hey, I can give you a lift on the way to the bank. You'll be too early. It's never too early to wipe the smirk off that man's face. He wanted to foreclose on me, and I don't intend to let him forget it. Come on. Right, don't make any major decisions without consulting me. Wouldn't dream of it. David's in favour. So am I. So the only worry is me, ma'am. If we go, she'll be on her own. She's less than half an hour away. Won't be a problem. It's a big step, getting married. It makes you think. About anything in particular? Well, uh, kids. Well, they were never on the agenda first time round. Oh, say. But uh, Shelley wants a family. I get that impression, yeah. Well, you're bound to make a better father than I did. Dad, I understand why you sent us up to Scotland. Do you? Well, yeah. I mean, you explained it. Yeah, but when you were young, you must have wondered where I was. Wondered where you was. And I used to wonder who you were. Look, Dad, I, I don't... I don't want you to apologise. I, I just... I want to know what got in the way. Circumstances. I had a job, two tiny children, and my wife had just died. It was all too much. So you thought Grandma and Grandad would have been able to cope better? Yes, they had time. I had commitments. You just couldn't fit us in? I should have tried harder. You could have just walked away? No, never. Why do you say that? Well, it would have saved a lot of hurt, wouldn't it? We could have forgot you. I'd never have forgotten you. You had us for the first two years. Was that not enough? No. I only knew Daniel for a few months and I still think about him. Do you? Yes, every day. But I know that he never thinks about me. Look, Peter, if you're going to be a father, be a proper father, not a, not a visitor, not someone who turns up with gifts and doesn't know his children's friends' names or his favourite colour or what class he's in. Yeah. No, I mean it. The world's full of strangers, and that's what I was to you. And what I may well be to Daniel. Well, then everything worked out once we grew up, didn't it? Oh, I don't think Susan ever forgave me. And honestly speaking, have you? You got a problem, love? No. Hey, face the supervisor. She'll sort it for you. Karen is the supervisor. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Do you remember when it were you, really, love? Oh, then were the days. Yeah, when you got away with murder. Not murder. Everything we'd done in fun, then. Oh, it still is. I mean, we love a laugh. Hey, do you want me to fix it for you, Karen? Is it you who messed it up? Me? There's something wrong underneath. I'll fix it. Hey, Le, it's none of your business. Just stay where you are. Do you know what? I'm so sick of this. I have a living to earn as well, you know. Is it true that you're in an higher tax bracket than the rest of us now that you're some kind of boss? All right, what's the problem? We're trying to help, Karen. What's wrong? Shuttle trouble. A lot of women have it, you know. This paper machine. OK, you better take a break. The rest of you can get when you work, OK? That is favouritism, that. Now, I'm going to sort out this machine. And if you lot don't get your heads down, I'll sort you out and all, OK? Oh, sounds like he's talking P45s. Yeah, I am. The joke's over. Any objections? No. no. Good. Because you can get one you work then, can't you? Good to see Keith Greenacre called into the estate agents. The Riding's flats are back on the market. Does he think they'll sell? Oh, he thinks they'll be snapped up. We're in the money, Gail. Big time. Good. Hey, it's better than good. And if you think I'm going to unload state-of-the-art luxury apartments to all comers, while my family's still living in this titchy little place, you've got another thing coming. Doesn't make sense, does it? Not for a moment. We deserve a fresh start. Are you going across? No, I won't bother. How come, will you? I'm staying here, I've said. All right, Ashley, all right. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll go, I might as well as you sleep. Look in on him, won't you? Certainly. Did he get his test result? This Friday coming, not a day I'm looking forward to. No. Well, he's devoted to that little lad. No result's going to change that. He might. If he does, what'll I be able to do about it? I say what? I don't know what else there is for me to say. Give me a chance. Be realistic. Uh, look, Lucy, meet, meet me later. No. I can't. Sorry. 
You can guess who that was. Well, I'm not very good at putting on an act. Is he messing you about? He doesn't want to, but things are difficult for him right now. What, I take it he's still with his fiancée? Of course, he's not going to give her up. Has he said so? Well, no, um, he says he wants to look after the baby. Well, you know, maybe he does. Yeah, maybe he's just kidding himself. He hasn't got any children of his own. He doesn't know what babies are like. And do you? I think I've got more of an idea than he has. Is he in love with you? Yeah, he says he is. But he's sceptical. It's just, this whole thing, it started out as a bit of fun. Now his imagination's in gear, though. There's no stopping him. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have told him you were pregnant. I didn't. Someone else did. Well, look, he hasn't run a mile. I mean, surely that proves something. I've been standing there for the last five minutes. I want to come for some of Joshua's things. I see. Just can't do it. Is this the first time you've been back since uh, that night? No. Right. Opening the door don't get much easier. It's a house, Ashley. Bricks and mortar. Nothing to be scared about. I'm scared of memories. Well, there's no need to be. You're just walking into a, a set of rooms, that's all. Would you come in with me? I, I, I wouldn't want to intrude. Please. I'll, uh, I'll fetch Fred. You need your family. No. I need someone with me that weren't there on the night. Someone that won't see what I see. You were brilliant at the funeral. I'd rather it were you, Richard. I don't know. Please. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you to come. I didn't think I'd get so upset. That's where she died. Earlier to where she fell down. Maxine must have seen him. Only didn't see him, but Maxine must have from the way he hit her. Yes, yeah, so she, she ran out have. through the back. Took what he wanted. Cam called her bits. The junkie killed her for. I, I don't upset yourself. I need to say it. She died for a few quid's worth of stuff you don't even know. We should blood on that carpet. The blood's gone now. Harry came down with some cleaning stuff. That's all it took to get up the stains. You must have worked hard. I didn't think it had ever come off. Maybe we should. She loved this room. The colours, that sofa. She chose him Maxine's room. It's... it's... it's beautiful. Where should she have died? What? What should have happened to her? What else should she have done in her life? I, I don't know, Ashley. It, it, it's uh, very upsetting. And I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm the one to blame. Ashley... You got I... us for you the funeral. I'll always be grateful for that, Richard. If there's anything, anything I can ever do for you. Thank you very much. He should be back by now. Oh, don't fret. There's a lot to think about in the house. That's what I... I can hear our Joshua. I'm really looking forward to the wedding, especially after what Peter said. I know, it's funny. He's never mentioned children to me. Obviously, it's on his mind. Why don't we get together this weekend? Come round for your Sunday dinner. Could make it a real family meal. You're including Tracy in that? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Well, only that she and Deirdre are still knocking heads. 
Well, they can practice being nice to each other. I don't want them bowling in each other's faces at my wedding. No, no. Lucky we got Blanche, isn't it? She's never any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a date then? Yeah. No. Shelley, love. He's restless. Could you take him for a walk? No trouble. I'll enjoy it. Five minutes, that's all. I'll get the buggy. <laughs> Lucy's pulling the pie, do you? <laughs> She's a good woman, is that? I said, a good woman. I know. No, I bought some last time. Mr. Hillman, everything all right? Uh, yes, yes. Hi, Ashley. How are you? OK. He's just been picking up some of the baby's things. It must be very difficult. Is there anything we can do to help? No. If you'll excuse me. Thanks again, Richard. Okay. Oh, Ashley's over there. Better have a word with him. We look after Josh for me for a minute. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, no sweetheart. Problem. Hello. There's toys yeah. of Ben's he could have. Thanks, but I've got enough now. Yeah, well, don't be on your own, Ash. Neville's been very kind. Richard just came in house with us. You look pretty shaken. Yeah, he'll be all right. I'll see ya. See ya. Oh, Ashley, Fred's asked me to take Josh for a walk. Is that all right? Yeah, I'll see you later. All right. Hey, Shelley, I'd take Peter with you and all. Uh, looks like he wants to be a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, look here. I'm on my own here. So if anybody else has for liver and onions, you can dish it out. I'm not qualified. Well, you can wash pots. Well, I can't. I've got no certificates, have I? Well, buy water, then. Look, if, if, I, if I as much as put my hand on a kettle, the FSA are going to drag me in. FSA? Foods Standards Agency. It's very important in catering these days, that's why he'll tell you. Well, he has, but how come you know what it is? Because I read my newspaper when I'm not being mithered to death. Well, all that's fit for is the outside lamp. Well, we haven't got one, and I pay good money to read this. Now, not okay, it... that's enough. There's food on that counter. And for your information, the FSA has not to do with us. It's environmental health. <laughs> there. I'll give him a ring. I'm not that thrilled. You've always wanted Bethany to have her own room. We'll still see each other, so you're not going to move that far away. She's not bothered about you. I'm bothered about the crash. Oh, thanks. No, oh, you're not. I am. It's a really good one. Oh, yeah, the only one in the country. It'd upset Bethany to move her at her age. Oh, it'd scare her for life. Oh, you don't understand. You don't want to move away from Todd, do you? No, yeah, you were right about Les. He's a pain. But he'll have to let go sometime. Yeah, well, if he hangs on to Janice as long as he hung on to his rats, you're in for a long wait. His rats? Yeah, his yard with that mucky. They came through it all into hours. Honestly, no one had to restrain me. Well, I'll be used to that. Hey, uh, what does he think of uh, this course you're going on? Nothing. <laughs> I haven't told him yet. You want to be straight with him, Emma? You've got an inspector's job back in your sights. He should know what's going on. Right, I'm off to the library. You'll go blind. Oh. Well, you see, you know, you know, he never plays football. Flu powder, David. You are. It's in Harry Potter for whoosh. Just go up the chimney or anywhere. <laughs> right, now they're gone, you can tell me. Tell you what, about aid, the next instalment. There isn't one. Well, there will be, you can't keep clear of him. I didn't ring him, he rang me. Yeah, well, he would, wouldn't he? I mean, you're irresistible. You're jealous. I'm not. He's in jail, Candy, so it's not glamorous. Yeah, I know that. Look, I just think you're daft if you go anywhere near him. Plus, your mum would kill you. She won't know. If I do go. I've left him to cry it out, he won't stop. A picture of it drives you mental no matter how much you love him. You've had a difficult day. It would have been a lot worse one for Richard coming in the house with us. He's always there when he's needed, is that, Mum? He got a bit upset. Oh, eh? Yeah. You know, seeing exactly where it happened. He tried to hide it, but... Ah, well. He was doing his best to keep control for your sake. I stayed as long as I could. I still couldn't live there, though, Dad. You will in time. But not yet. Sufficient unto the day. Yeah. Well, we thought you'd be delighted. I am. I mean, Betty will have her own room and a big garden to play in. She'd have to say goodbye to all her little friends. 
Imagine the psychological damage. Oh, shut it. Sarah's right to consider a daughter. She's not bothered about Bethany or her chubby chums. She's just nice that she won't see Todd every five minutes. Well, of course she will. Is your boyfriend. He can come and stay over at weekends. Well, if she can have a lad over, can I have a girl? You can have a slap. Go get ready for your tea. I am ready. Go wash your face and tidy up. Go on. You too. I think we should hold back from making too many promises. Why? It's important that Sarah's happy. Yes, I know. Sorry. Hello. Yes, it is. Well, that's very good news. <laughs> Didn't expect to hear anything so quickly. Are they? Well, there should be no problems. Yeah, fine. OK. Bye. Who was that? That was the estate agent. They've had an offer for one of the flats already. <laughs> At the full asking price. They've only just gone on the market. Oh, the others will sell in no time. Hey, no stopping us now, Gail. We're on the move, away from here. I thought we agreed to leave things as they were. I tried, Lusa. I can't. There's no other way. We've got to talk. Peter, there are no hard feelings. Sometimes you've just got to accept what's happened. And please. Please let me in. For old time's sake. Yeah. Look, Lucy, I don't want to abandon you, OK? And also, I don't want the baby to grow up without a dad. You're not abandoning me. I made a decision. The baby will be well taken care of. But it means that you will be on your own. I was before I met you. No, but everything's changed. No, it hasn't. You're still with Shelley, and that's where you want to be. We'll come to some sort of arrangement. I mean, I'll pay for everything. I don't want your money. I don't need it. But I'm responsible for this. If I was hard up, I'd be glad you were offering to support us. But that is not the situation. But there must be something I can do. I appreciate what you're saying. But you can't give me anything I want. Lucy, I can. I can. I'm sure that I can. Oh, too good to sit with yours. <laughs> How's Sunita? Um, a bit more cheerful, thanks. Hey, we don't want you anyway. Well, leave her alone. Yeah, we're not at work now. You bet we're not. We can say how we like. Yeah, and we're going to. Well, I'm not joining you. Suit yourself. Hey, yo. There's a fancy man. Husband will be along in a minute. Do you know what a puzzle is this? I mean, who fancies who? Just take no notice of them. Oh, I don't. Get your drink. Two pints, please, shall you? Cheers, sir. You know what factory girls are like? <laughs> yeah, I should do after this time, yeah. Well, they've just got sad lives. Talking about us is the nearest they get to having a good time. Hey, they used to be your best mates. Yeah, well, I think I've moved on since then. You tell him, love! Cut and thrust the factory life, eh? All right, ladies, having a nice time, are we? Yeah, lovely. All right. <laughs> Look, it's... I mean, this is as if you're not even I've listening to me. I've thought it through, I know me. what I'm I doing. I want to be in your life. How are you marrying Shelley? Look. Peter, please go home. I don't want to be upset anymore. I'm sorry, Luz, but I don't, I don't mean to upset you. I know you don't. But, you know, that's the situation we're in. I got pregnant by accident and this is the result. Yeah, but why? Why does it have to be like that, eh? Because I am the other woman. You're always going to leave me eventually. I don't want to leave you. Men always go back to their wives. She's not my wife, I'm not married. She may as well be. No. It's you that I love. Peter, don't say that. You're lying to me and it hurts. I'm not. I'm speaking the truth. I love you more than anyone. Marry me. What? You marry me. You're the one I want. You know, if I'd have met you first, Shelley would not have stood a chance. She's nothing in comparison to you, Lucy, nothing. Peter, <laughs> don't. I mean it. I love you with all my heart, and I want you to marry me more than anything else in this world. Just think about it, please. Oh, you're not phoning some poor beggar this time in the morning, are you? Mm. Oh, no, love, no. I just, I just took it off charge. <laughs> are you sure you came to bed last night? So you were sat there when I turned in. Ah, oh, yeah, I did, but I woke up about five, couldn't get back to sleep, so I thought, well, I'll get up. 
Yeah, Have you made some tea? Mm. Some in the pot there, love. Oh, it's cold. Oh, Ooh, you look awful. Oh, well, thanks very much. Oh, no, no, I can tell you that, you see, because I love you. See, I know what's worrying you. Do you? Mm-hmm. You're worried that this family Sunday dinner's going to be a complete disaster. Well, yeah, I mean, look, shall I mean, it is our family and it's my family. You know, Tracy and Deirdre, they're not talking as it is. So, you know, I mean, we don't want to make things worse, do we? Trust me, see, I know what I'm doing now. Mothers and daughters, they might fight like cat and dog, but that's a bond that can't be broken, you see. I bet you all the money in the world that they're looking for an excuse to make up. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, we see, I'm a woman and I'm a daughter and who knows? One day I might be a mum and all. If you tried sleeping at night, you won't be tired now. Look here. Look, when we do this, the thing is... Well, the thing is, I need a bit of help. I know it's a lot to ask, and I've never asked for anything before. You have just taken away the most precious thing in my life. So I reckon if I do deserve something good happening to me, then now will be a good time. Make him a baby. Please. Make him mine. Ashley! Shh! Yep. Just put him down. Sorry, sorry. How are you? I'm just tired. Come on. I don't like them, baby. Well, they didn't have the loopy things. It, it tastes like cardboard. Well, you do the shopping then next time. It's no fun anymore. What are you going on about, eh? Really? Work. Well, it's not meant to be fun, is it? It doesn't have to be fun all the time. I just mean a coffee or a fag break. Or a bit of a gossip. I just feel like part of the gang again. I might you talk to your man, Ailey. She was supervisor, wasn't she? Still part of the gang. You have no idea, have you? You don't give me any support. The only person who really knows what I'm going through is Joe. Oh, really? Yeah. Look, I employ people, don't I? I like to think of myself as one of the drivers, but no. They look at me as the boss. I come in in the morning, lads are having a nice little chat. They see me, change the subject. I don't know whether they're talking about me, having a whinge, or they want me to know that I'm not part of the gang. I mean... I think I'll just tell myself that I'm a supervisor, cos I'm better than everyone, and when they accept it, then everything will be fine. I reckon it's best if we keep us family business to ourselves. Well, the appointment list is at half past two. I'd not forgotten. I say I'd not forgotten. I would open you had. You don't have to come with us if you don't want to. Don't be daft. Of course I'm coming. I have a feeling it's going to be all right. Morning, boys. Is the tea on? Joshua's asleep in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it another bad night? He's just out of routine. Shelley, love, I've got a favourite task. Could you keep your eye on him for a couple of hours this after? Only... Me and our Ashley, we've got a very important butcher's convention to attend. Um, yeah, yeah, I reckon. Good lad. Thanks. Right, well, I better get on. Tell you what, it's a good job I got to the post first. If A's got new evidence, why don't he say what it is? I don't know, do I? Maybe the prison guards read his mail or something. So? Sure, if he's got some new information that proves he's innocent, he wants everyone to know about it. Says he wants to talk to me. He's playing games. No, he's not. You don't know that. Look, what if there is no new evidence? What if he's guilty? Do you really want to go into prison for a cosy chat with a murderer? All right. What are you two up to? Nothing. What about you? Ah, uh, Kev's got me car. Are you all right? Yeah. All right. What do you think he'd say if he knew? What do you think anyone would say? What do you think? Do you like it? What have you done? Well, we need a family car. Have you bought it? Uh, no, I just nicked it from round the corner. But if we like it, I can go buy one. You better be joking. You won't get Sarah in a stolen car. Oh, sorry. Bad joke. Yeah, of course I bought it. Got a good deal, too. Do you want to look inside? It's perfect for us. 
Very nice. Yeah, you won't be doing the service in them. That'll be going straight to the dealer. All right, if you can afford it. Good luck to him. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, you owe me 70p. All bugger when you break like. See you later. Okay. What do you think? It's very nice. And I've had a special seat put in for Bethany. We got uh, air conditioning, CD changers, sat nav, cruise control. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I've got another surprise too. Another surprise? So what have we done to deserve all this? You don't have to do anything. What is it? I'll show you later. And I want everyone here ready to go off in our new car at 4.30, because we're going for a ride. Hi. How'd it go? Oh, it was all right. Did you get a picture? Yeah. Well, my mate Tina, right, she had this amazing one. I mean, you can see everything. Little hands, little toes, eyes, ears. There you go. Oh, is that a leg? I don't really know. But they said everything was all right. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Before I forget, these came for you. I mean, first of all, I thought he'd be daft enough to send flowers to a florist shop, and then I thought Bingo, the father. Well, that's not the only daft thing he's done. Tell me more. He proposed. My life is so boring compared to yours. Really, you proposed? Yeah. What did you tell him? Well, I tried to say no. Yeah, well, I don't think he heard you. Oh, he will. Maybe you don't want him to. Maybe you should get on with those buttonholes. <laughs> yeah, well, you're the boss. Hey, love. Yeah. Uh, Harry said you were through here. What are you doing? What's it look like I'm feeding the baby? Well, where's Ashley and Fred gone? Oh, uh, they've gone to some butcher's conference or something. Oh, right. I don't mind. We're taking advantage, shall No, they're not. I'm glad to do it. Oh, oh, big. Oh, wait, look. Oh, yeah, one more. Looks like Master Peacock's full. Do you want to fancy some? Yeah. What is it? Mm. <laughs> Pear and banana. Well, it'd be certainly be better with a bit of custard, that. <laughs> look, shall I'm, I'm going to get back, love. I can see that you, you're tired no, 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 of... No, stay. Come on, you come for your dinner. I'll make some butties. We'll have a tea party. Betty and Harry can look after the bar. I'll go on. I'll even cut the crusts off. Well, go on, then. Go on. You look after the baby for me. Go to you, Uncle Betty. There you go, sweetie. Oh. This is Tom. OK. What? What's that? Let's go. Oh. We could go for a late lunch. You can go if you want. I'm not leaving you. I'm all right. Whatever happens, you know, that Ramsden has no legal claim on Bobby. I know. I don't know who you think you're doing this for. I say I don't. I mean, you're not telling me you're doing for a Bobby. He couldn't care less. Mr Peacock, I'm sorry, we're running a little late. If you'd like to come in, please. Dad. How do? How do you do? Right, well, I imagine that you want to get straight on with this. Yes, please. Okay. Well, I have here the letter from the DNA Diagnostic Center. Well, according to the report, the results of the DNA testing are conclusive. I'm sorry, Mr. Peacock, but you're not the biological father. Happily, it were a mistake. They could have tested wrong sample. What if your sample got mixed up with somebody else's? They'd be bound to say that you're not the father. Everyone makes a mistake. Ashley. Well, we have to talk about this. We need to decide what's to be done. You haven't put yourself through all this for an out. I need time to think. So, tell me what you're thinking. I can't think, can I not? Were you asking me questions all the time? We need to discuss this. We will. Now. If you don't want to drive me home, then I'll just walk it. There it comes. What 
they doing there? Yeah. Blue put them there? Uh, a couple of blokes in brown coats. Well, they can't go there. You just can't get the staff, can you? Did you see what happened? I were in the loop. Me too. Okay, this is funny. I think wasting my time's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. So what exactly is the plan, Janice? What are you trying to achieve? I'm just trying to keep the workforce happy. Make me look bad, incompetent, maybe even get me in the sack? Ooh, that'd be a bonus. Read my lips. It ain't gonna happen. You might not like it, but I'm the supervisor, and nothing you do is gonna change that. You better realise next time you do something for a laugh, it's gonna create extra work for the rest of us. Hayley, Angela, get those boxes moved now into the storeroom. Hey, hey, that's not fair. They didn't do it. Really? Well, then maybe you'd like to go and help them, then no-one will have to stay behind this evening. Go on, I'll give you a hand and help. What's going on here? Nothing, it's all sorted. It's not giving you grief again. No, I've just said I've sorted. All right, listen. I've had enough of this. I'm sick of you lot messing about, all right? This stops now, OK? Karen here is your supervisor, and you better get used to it. Final warning. One more hint of trouble out of you lot, and you're out that door. Do you understand? Get the boxes moved now. <gasps> Look, Daddy's home. <laughs> How's he been? Oh, good as gold. I think he just needs a hug from his dad. <laughs> Ashley? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I think he's put a bit of weight on. He's getting heavier. Thanks for looking after him. Oh, it's no <laughs> trouble. Peter came round. We had a teddy bear's picnic. I think we might go for a walk. Go for a walk? Where? Could there be some fresh air? Um, how was the, the butcher's convention? It were fine. Hang on a sec, I'll come with you. It'll be all right on the zone. Um, Actually, Fred, I was wondering if we could go through some books. I'll see you later. Is he all right? I don't know. He won't talk to me. Oh, uh, right. I I'll just go and get them books. Yeah, go in. You can't just phone me like this. Did you get my letter? Yes. Can you come and see me? No. I need to explain. I can't. Visits on Sunday as well. Sarah, I need to talk to you. Sarah? We're going in a minute. You can talk to Candice any time. Yeah, all right. Please, Sarah. I need to see you. Look, OK, don't phone me again. You all right, Audrey? Look at that. Brand new car. Wonder where he got the money for that. I'm sure you'll make it up with Gail soon. You've no idea, Sally. No idea. Uh, where are we going? Oh, you'll see. Will it take long? Oh, uh, no more than an hour or so. I can't adjust these straps. Oh, let me have a go. Look, you pull those. Right, are we all strapped in? Yes. Yes. Hiya. You're going away for the weekend? Richard's taking us on a mystery tour. Oh, really? Somewhere nice. Hey, don't catch me out like that. <laughs> oh, see you. See you. Have a nice time. <laughs> can I have a word? Yeah, of course you can. There was no need for that earlier. You what? The boxes. Had the situation under control. Yeah? Well, it didn't hurt them to know you got the bosses back in, does it? It does, actually, cos you undermined my authority. I what? I was handling the situation fine. Janice had backed down, then you come along, and I'm back to square one. I mean, straight away, that says I can't cope without the boss flinging his weight around. Karen, I was supporting you. No, I don't need your support. I need you to be able to trust that I can do the job right on my own. Well, OK, I'm sorry. If you think you can handle it. Well, I can. OK. I stand corrected. Uh, don't patronise me, Joe, cos I remember you complaining loud enough when Baldwin wouldn't trust you, kept trying to muscle in on the things you we tried to oh, do. I see, I get it. Point taken. I'm gonna make this work. I know. I promoted you, remember? Well, then, are we clear that the next time I need support, I'll ask for it? OK? OK.
What's this? This is our new home. Have you bought it? Well, I've paid a holding fee. Are you serious? Do you like it? <laughs> Excuse me. It's a bit quick. I'm going to have a look around. Hey, don't break anything. We don't own it yet. It's got five bedrooms, so Bethany can have her own room. Right. Hey, there's a big garden around the back if you want to go and have a look. I know we haven't discussed it, but after everything that's happened recently, I think we deserve a fresh start. And uh, how long did it take to get here? 20, 25 minutes, so we don't have to lose touch with any of our old friends. It's still a big wrench. Listen, girl, I, I've never mentioned this to you before, but there's, there's a part of me that's always felt a bit uncomfortable living in a home set up with you and Martin. I'd love it if we could call this place our home, a home we've made for our family. I know we could be so very happy here. This means a lot to you. Not if you don't want it as well. If you say no, then it's gone. The holding fee's fully refundable for the first 28 days, so we won't lose a penny. Well, seeing as we're here, we might as well have a look around. You'll love it, I know you will. I think you may be right. What did I do wrong, eh? What did I do that was so bad that you had to take everything away from me? I mean, was it too much to ask? Would it made a difference if it could have been mine? I mean, what is this? Some kind of challenge? Well, don't you think I've suffered enough? I mean, why don't you burn the house down, drive a lorry into it, strike me down with a flaming bolt of lightning? What am I supposed to do now, Joshua? You have no idea, do you? I can't stop loving you, though. Just can't do it. I'll bet that'll be your granddad. Come and track us down where you stay and don't go away. Hey, all right. Oh, yeah. I thought he was my dad. Yeah, well, I saw you come in earlier. I had to get away. Can't get any peace in pub. Look, if uh, you want to be on your own. No, it's OK. I appreciate you coming round. He's not mine. Right. It don't matter. I mean, I wanted him to be mine. I even prayed he'd be mine, but... I always knew deep down he wasn't. I just wanted to be sure... You know how I felt once I found out the truth. And how do you feel? Angry. Disappointed. But when I look at him, nothing's changed in me. Heart. He's still mine. He's still my son. Sunday dinner? Yeah, we're having a big roast, all the trimmings. And my mum's going to be there? Yeah. And she knows that you're inviting me? Yeah, she's, she's looking forward to seeing you. Sunita, why don't you come and all on Sunday for your dinner? We're having a roast. Uh, there's no need, thanks. Well, more the merrier. I don't need cheering up, I'm all right. No, no I didn't mean that. Oh, I know, but Kieran's gone. and I'm on my own again. Same old story. I'm not happy about it, but I'm, I'm OK. Dust myself down and start all over again. Well, you'll still be very welcome on Sunday. I can't, I'm, I'm working. Oh, right. You'll come there, won't you? I'll give you a chance to talk to your mum. Yeah, well, if she can take it, I can. Thanks. It's just that everything was under control and then he waded in shouting his mouth off. And then he threatened everyone with a sack if they didn't do what I said. But you'd already sorted it? Yeah. Well, then that's bad management. It's undermining your authority. Yeah, and that's what I said. You told him that? Yeah, when the girls had gone, I said, look, if I need your help, I'll ask for it, OK? Good on you. Honestly, right, it was the worst scam picture that I've ever seen. It was like a blob, you couldn't see anything. Really? Mm. She's been dead touchy these days. I mean, it must be her hormones. Well, that and the fact that the father's still pestering her. I mean, he sent her flowers today. I mean, she says she doesn't want anything to do with him, but I think she still loves him. 
Yeah, really? Well, you can tell. I mean, I'm not sure what's going on there, but it wouldn't surprise me if he was back on the scene before long. Oh, hello. Uh, Fred? I've told Martin the result. Oh, right. I'm worried sick. I didn't know where you'd got to. I'm sorry. But I wanted to thank you for sticking by me today. I really appreciate it, Dad. Thanks. That's what families are for, aren't they? Hey, this little lad couldn't have a better dad. He'll tell you himself when he's old enough. Well, there's still lots to be talked about, isn't there? You don't need it sorted. You know how much I care about you. Well, there's still things that need to be said. Oh, maybe I should get off, eh? I'll uh, see you later. See ya. What needs to be talked about? What needs to be said? You didn't have to do it. I told you, you didn't have to. I needed to know the truth. The truth is, you are no blood relation of that little babby. I know. Well, that's not going to stop me being the best possible dad I can be. You're talking about giving up your life to look after another man's child. Well, that's my choice, isn't it? Well, we're banking on you for your support. That's a thing! I'm not sure I can give it. Oh, you can... You can put whatever, whatever noble gloss on it, but I can't get it out of my head. That baby's not your son. And he's not my grandson, neither. Morning. Hello, young man. Are you having your breakfast? If you're left alone, he might just eat it and all. Oh, I'm sorry, Ashley. I didn't mean to upset his routine. Um... I'm sorry. Me should be apologising. I shouldn't be snapping at you. It's just we had a bit of a disturbed night last night, that's all. Oh, did he not sleep? Not too well, no. Oh, it must be difficult still. I suppose it's something you get used to when you've got kids. No doubt you'll see it yourself one day. Oh, <laughs> I do hope so. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry. It's not all graft. It's worth all the asshole when they look at you and smile at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate to break up this intimate little scene, but talking isn't going to get this pub open. We're just having a little chat, Fred. Well, give all that chatting and get stuck in. I want my money's worth out of you if you're leaving early. It's not every Sunday I have people round for dinner. Just as well. You couldn't have picked a worse day. I say you couldn't have picked a worse day. Well, where are you going? I'm going to take my morning constitutional before the action starts. Well, hang on a minute. It'll get me caught. We'll both come, will you? I prefer to do it on my own, if you don't mind. I need her. By the looks of it, it's all I'm going to get today. I'm really upset him with this early finish, haven't I? No. I don't think uh, he's out to do with you, Shelley. I'm not so sure. I am. Just get on with what you were doing and don't worry. He's just got a lot on his mind at the minute. And David tells me Richard's got someone coming round to value the house? Yes. Are you really against moving? Well, I do see the sense in moving somewhere bigger, what with Bethany getting older and that, but I'm just a bit worried about losing contact with my mates. No reason why you should. I mean, we'll have a lot more space if we go, so you can have them round whenever you're ready. Can we get that for me? Hello? It's Aid. Who is it? It's, um, just candies for me. You see? There's no way that one's going to abandon you. Who's that? It's my mum. What do you want? Just checking you are coming to see me today, aren't you? I said I would, didn't I? OK. Don't let me down. I won't. Mum, is it um, OK if I go around to Candice's for Sunday dinner? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, thank you. Ah, oh, heck, it's parky out there. I'm fair frozen. Think yourself lucky you didn't come. Can I have a word? No, I haven't got time to stand round talking. I'd best get busy if that madam's taking rest of the day off. There's things to do and precious little time to do it in. It's important. Not so important it can't wait. Dad. I know what you're going through. I've been through it myself. Just stop, will you? I need to think. There's things to consider. What's to consider? I'm sorry, lad. I know how hard it is on you, but I can't pretend. I can't tell you what you want to hear if it's not right. This business is really... I have a pub to run. Oh, lovely car. 
Hi, Gran. Hello, sweetheart. You hey. sure you don't mind me coming? Of course I don't. It's smashing to see you. It is that. Sit yourself down, son. Oh, <laughs> now, does your mother know you're here? No. Don't you go telling her, will you? <laughs> well, uh, I doubt I'd be seeing her to tell her anything, my love. I just came to show you my new football. Ah, is this the one you want? Yeah. Look, I want my new signatures. Oh, it's lovely. Look, have you seen it, Archer? Aye, that'll be worth a, a bit in a few years' time, and no mistake. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting it mounted properly. You know, so I can put it on wall in my new bedroom. Your new bedroom? Yeah, we're moving. Didn't you know? Uh, you're moving house, you mean? Oh, yeah. Where to? Other side of Manchester. It's brand new, loads of room. There's a bloke coming around tomorrow to give us a price on ours. Can I get a drink, Gran? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. You know where it is. Go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> First a new car, now a new home. That man's taking my family from under my nose, Archie, and we're not going to let it happen. <laughs> I don't see how we can stop it. Well, we've got to stop it. Richard Hillman is a killer. We've got to keep an eye on him. If he gets Gail and the kids away from me, goodness knows what he's going to do to them. Why are you bothering to tell me if you've already made up your mind? I just wanted to know what you think. You know what I think? You shouldn't go anywhere near him. He's nearly killed you once. You owe him nothing. But if he's innocent and I don't do anything, I won't be able to live with myself. Yeah, well, that's up to you. I've told you what I think. Are you just jealous because I'm giving him so much attention? No, Sarah. I'm worried you're going to get involved with something that could backfire on you. But this is a bit of a pointless conversation, isn't it? Cheers. Well, it was good of you to come at such short notice. Well, you know me. Anything for a drink? Well, we just wanted you to hear this from us and uh, not pick it up second hand. It sounds ominous. Oh, no, not really, but it does affect you. Uh, we've decided to move. Oh. Right. Whereabouts? Wentworth Meadows. It's about half an hour from here, other side of Manchester. Obviously, I mean that David will be farther away from you. Yeah. Well... Thanks for telling me. It means a lot more room for the kids. And, of course, you'd be welcome to visit any time you like. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah. Business must be good, then, eh? New car, new house. All looking very rosy. We hope so. Yeah, in fact, we're having a little do here tomorrow night. I mean, uh, you'd be very welcome if you could spare time. Well, I don't suppose I'll be doing anything very exciting. So, yeah, why not? Thanks. Yes, Kevin, what can I get you? Uh, a pint of best, uh, medium white wine, yeah. please. Right. And how's life treating for all of you today? Well, kids are out of friends, was in here. What could be better? Hey, was that young Joshua? I thought I heard him crying. How many's woken up? I'll actually see to him. No, he just popped over to the corner shop for some nappies. Well, you see to him, then, if you're that bothered. I'm serving. A mobile phone? That's what she wants. No way. Good idea, at least we'll know where she is. Oh, and that's what she said, is it? Hey, come on, my little precious. Oh, there's your granddad. You take care of it till your daddy gets back. What have you brought him in here for? There's no place for a baby. I can't leave him in there on his own. Come on, take him and I'll get on. You keep all of him, he's happy enough. I'll see to customers. I didn't know whether you'd come. I didn't want to. So you've got something really special to tell me. Oh, I have. Don't worry. My solicitor got the results of the blood test the police did when they picked me up the day after the murder. So? So, they found out a drug in my system. <sighs> and I'm supposed to be surprised. I'm not talking about blow or E. I'm talking about diazepam. A? A sleeping tablet which you can only get in prescription. And I had enough of it in my system to knock a small horse out for the night. You were taking sleeping tablets? No, I wasn't. That's the point. Well, how come it was in your blood? I was hoping you could tell me that. Peter, is this meat done? You got them. What are you doing on that phone? Get over here. I need to know if this meat's done or not. Oh. We'll be fine, that, love. Another half an hour, 45 minutes. 45 minutes? They're going to be here any 
time now. Shell, they're not going to expect to walk straight through that door and sit down and eat, are they? I mean, there is this ancient art of pre-dinner drinks and chit-chat, you know, love. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit stressed, that's all. Look, you're doing great. Let me get you a glass of wine. Right. Here. There, Thanks. calm down. I know, um, I just want everything to be right, you know. Love, it'll be fine. If Deirdre and Tracy decide to talk to each other. Oh, give over. I'm tense enough as it is. Oh, right. There they are. No, 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 hang on. Let me get my penny off. Oh, right. How's my hair? Shell, look, you look great. Just calm down. Take a deep breath. Right. Right, OK. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Let him in. Right. OK. I came to see you. I lied to my mum so that I could come. And you're saying that... I might have something to do with all this. The only way that drug got into my system was if I took it in without realising. Well, I don't see how I fit into that. OK. The day of the murder, you remember? You left me a bag with some crisps, biscuits and a bottle of vodka. No. I told you, Candice and Todd, that was on a leaving party. I never left you anything. I never went near the squat after I saw you. So it must have been Todd, then. Or oh, Candice. It couldn't have been because they were with me all evening. Nobody went near your place. Look, somebody left me a full bottle of vodka that day, which I drank. And whoever left it spiked it with enough tranquilizer to lay me out while they murdered Maxine Peacock and beat the living daylights out of Emily Bishop. You think that was me? No, no, of course I don't. I just thought it was you that left the bottle of vodka, that's all. And what, and I spiked it? No. But somebody might have given you it. Somebody who'd already tampered with it. You, I didn't bring you anything that day. Well, somebody did. And while I was dead to the world, they killed Maxine and planted the evidence on me. Who'd want to do that? I don't know. But whoever it was, should be in here and not me. Oh, I'm really proud of you, mate, how you've handled this. It's not about me, Martin. It's about so Joshua. Yeah, it still takes a big man to do what you've done. Yeah, well... I just wish my dad could see it that way, that's all. He's not took it well. And I don't want losing after all it is, it's took me find him. You won't lose him. He'll come round. I'm not so sure. This blood tie thing, well, it's really big for him. Well, that is exciting news. But we'll miss you. Absolutely, the place won't be the same. Well, you have to seize the time when it comes, don't you? Well, of course you do. And good luck to you both. Thank you. So we can count on you coming along tomorrow night, then, can we? Try keeping us away. <laughs> Emily, how lovely to see you. I, I was just saying to Rita, she's very welcome to come to our little party here tomorrow night. Uh, how about you? Uh, what are you doing? Um, well, I really don't know. Well, well, we'd be very glad if you could come along to our little celebration. Celebration? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're moving house. Oh, not far, I hope. Oh, don't worry, Emily. I'll never be very far away from the people who are important to me. I must say, something smells very good. Yeah, and this is a truly spectacular claret. Ah, oh, well, chosen with care, you see, because I know how keen you are on your wine. <laughs> it's really good of you to go to all this trouble, shall I? Aye, and you've saved me from slaving away over a hot stove all morning. Well, we've been thinking of entertaining for a long time and we thought, well, who nicer than the family? Oh, excuse me. That'll be Tracy. Hi, Hi. I, uh, I didn't think you'd mind if I brought Dev. Well, it's nice to know you're appreciated. Well, you've always known that I've appreciated you. <laughs> Not you. I mean, the neighbours. Oh. I was really pleased when Rita said she'd miss us. Well, of course we've been missed. Law-abiding, upstanding neighbours like us. I mean, we're not easy to find, you know. <laughs> you flatter yourself. Well, if I didn't do it, nobody else will. <laughs> <laughs> you two drunk. Whatever gives you that idea? Maybe it's because she can't stand up straight without leaning on the banister. Come here, cheeky. Give us a kiss. Uh, in your dreams. Oh, come on. I'm determined to have one. Hey, get lost. Richard, will you stop her? Oh, sorry. Never get in the way of a determined woman. Well, kiss him, not me. Yeah, I won't run away. Wouldn't you? Oh, <laughs> please. Let me out before you start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know what you're missing. No regrets. None. 
Do you? None at all. Good. Because I got something for you. When? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I brought him. So, have you uh, heard any more about this Aiden Crouch? What do you think you are playing at? No, what do you mean? No, Bringing in when you knew full well your mum was here? Yeah, well, I thought this was supposed to be a fresh start. You know, bury the hatchet, all that. Ah, oh, thank you. Look, please don't think me rude, but I think it's probably best that I just leave. I think that's a very good idea. I'll, uh, I'll show you out. Uh, no, sit down. You look, you're my guest and I invited you. I don't think so. And I'm very sorry. I had no idea that you'd be here. Well, what does it matter if they're here? Look, you're my boyfriend. We're going out together and they're just going to have to get used Tracy, to it. Tracy, please. No, I'm sorry. Look, I want you to stay. Dad's my guest. Yeah, but he's not mine. Well, don't worry, Shelley. On my way. Dev, no! Thanks. Well, that were great, wasn't it? Mm. I'm really sorry. I, I had no idea that she'd bring him. Oh, that's Tracy all over. She loves to surprise you. That's you, where's my dad? Oh, I think he's gone out, love. Did he say where? He hasn't said a great deal all day, if you really want to know. Could leave our Josh with you for a bit. I was just sleeping back, so we shouldn't be much of a problem. Of course you can, love. Is anything the matter? No, no, everything's fine. I just need a walk. You take your time, love. We'll be here for a while, love. Thanks. Oh, that was a lovely pudding. I couldn't possibly have a bit more, could I? Well, what's wrong with that? Better than wasting it. You lot's not even touched yours. Yeah, Blanche. Pass it your dish. Oh. Can you want some more? No, thank you. No, that was very nice, really. And uh, actually, I think it's time we were making tracks. <laughs> oh, but we've got cheese and biscuits oh, yet. I couldn't, really. Well, at least stay for a coffee. Ah, not for me, thanks. Yeah, no. enough's enough, eh? Yeah, and I've had enough to last me till this time tomorrow. Yeah, food, that is. It was a very nice meal, Shelley, thank you. What about me seconds? <sighs> Mother, I think you've had enough to eat for one day. Oh, rush, rush. Just when I was starting to enjoy myself. Right, OK, well, I'll show you out. Well, um, thanks for coming. Oh, thanks for inviting us. And I'm, I'm sorry about... Look, you weren't to know, Shelley. You really weren't to know. Thanks, Ben. Oh. It's been very nice. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. 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 Thank God that that's over. <laughs> oh, oh, look, come on, love. It's not your fault. You know, you did well. You poisonous bitch ruined everything. <laughs> look, as much as I hate to say this, love, but, you know, you did invite her, didn't you? Yeah, but I didn't think she'd bring him with her. I mean, she knew her mum would come in. Oh, Blanche had a good time, didn't she? That's one thing. She had a great blowout. He's not funny, Peter. How can you think he's funny? Well, I'm not. I just, you know, I'm trying to be positive. Well, you're not helping. Look at all this. All the trouble I went to. Shell, it's just a daft meal. I don't. Why are you getting so upset? I can't believe he can stand there and say that. I did this for your family. I wanted it to be a special occasion. Yeah, well, <laughs> it wasn't a special occasion, was it? So forget it. Look, Shell, I don't need this now. I really don't need this. Oh, well, I do need it. Look, if you're going to carry on, I'm going to go out for a walk. What? Well, leave me with all this. Well, well, lighten up, then. Just forget it. I'll tell you what, look, let's... Let's have a drink, eh? And then I'll tell you what, then we'll have another drink. Then, in an hour's time, if we're sober, we'll try and tackle them pots, OK? Yeah, OK. Relations. Who would have them? You sure you want to leave these pots? Yeah, well, if you still want to walk in daylight, yeah, we can do them after. In fact, I'll do them. You can lie and have a drink in front of the telly. Now, uh, what have I done to deserve all this? I mean, first you cooked me a Sunday lunch and then you offered to wash up. Oh, well, I like to surprise you now and then. Well, I'm not complaining. Yeah, well, you deserve a break from the kitchen sink. You've been a real support this year and I just want you to know it's paid off. Yeah? 
Yeah? There's a promotion in the offing, and if I get it, I'll be getting inspector's pay. Oh, well, that is brilliant, that is, because we need the extra money. Yeah, well, don't get carried away. It's only up for grabs, and it'll mean doing a two-week course. Well, you can hack that. What, residential? Oh. Oh, I see. So it'll be me, Ben, and the kitchen sink again, will it? Yeah, but it'll be worth it. Where you'd gone. Right, how, how, how would you I don't know what you were doing. You know what they say, don't you? Mighty hope some little acorns grow. I'd rather not talk about this, Ashley. Well, I'm sorry because it's got to be talked about. I've got a son to bring up, this son. And I want to know if you're going to rub him out or you're still going to be his granddad. This isn't fair. I told you not to take that test. But I have. And no one know it doesn't make any difference. And I respect you for making that stand. You're a good man and you're doing a selfless thing. No. I'm just his dad. And you like it or not, you're still his granddad. No. As much as I think about that little trap, as much as I care about him, and I do, he'll never be my true grandson. He's already a grandson. He's been your grandson since the day we were born. He's another man's child, Ashley. And you're willing to give him up, are you? After all that's happened, after all we've been through. Why did you have to do it? Why did you take that damn test? I had to know. And I can tell you this. Now I do know. It doesn't make a difference to me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, my Josh was my son. And if you can't handle that, Dad, well, then our relationship's over. I don't want to lose you, Dad, but I won't be forced to choose between my father and my son. As far as I'm concerned, it's no contest. Said something about moving. Oh, that, yeah. You don't sound so keen. I'm not really. Look, I'm really sorry. I can't think about that just now. What do you have the matter? Well, if you must know, I've just been to see Aid. Aidan Critchley? But he's in jail. He's on remand. You've been to the jail? He has to see me. He said he's got some new evidence. Really? New evidence? Yeah, and if what he's told me is true, which I think it is, it means he couldn't possibly have killed Maxine. Eh? They found a sleeping tablet in his system when they arrested him. Somebody left him a bottle of vodka spiked with diazepam. He slept through the whole thing. Diazepam? Are you sure about this? Oh, yeah, it's official. Even the police know. Have you told your mum? No, I've just found out. Anyway, she'd kill me if she knew I'd been C8. Yeah, right. Look, I'm sorry, love. You have got to tell her this. It's very important. <sighs> well, hang on. If Aidan Critchley didn't do it... Must have been whoever spiked the drink. We know who that is, don't we? This could be the breakthrough we've been looking for. Yeah. Yeah, it could. You know what, Archie? I think we finally got him. <laughs> the police did test on Aidan Critchley when they arrested him, right? And he couldn't possibly have attacked Maxine and Emily because he was drugged to the eyeballs. Well, they're all on drugs, these thugs. Yeah. Not sleeping pills, they're not. Huh? He was absolutely full of it. Full of diazepam. Now, that's what I was supposed to be on, you know, months back. But uh, I left it behind when I ran away from our gales. Well, the lad drank a whole bottle of vodka that he thought Sarah had left for him. But she never did any such thing. No, and the sleeping pills were in this bottle of vodka, right? So, come on, who could have got hold of those pills... And who could have put that vodka where Aidan Critchley could find it? Richard Illman. Mm. Exactly. But what do we do? I'm in the police. Oh, what? I'm frankly sick of the police looking at me like I should be in the home for the bewildered, not to mention a few other people. But anyway, I've said to our Sarah, I said, Sarah, you must go and tell your mother exactly what you've told me. You're going to have to tackle Gail yourself, though, as well. Well, you know that, oh. don't you, Audrey? My daughter hates me for all the things I've been saying about her precious Richard. She absolutely hates me. 
Oh, all right, all right. Mm. Bye, kids. See ya. Bye. See ya. Time you two were at school. Oh, Mum, your eternity <laughs> ring looks great. Yeah, doesn't it? Just. How much did Richard pay for it again? I don't know. Mm. It's not polite mm. to ask. Mm. It's not money than a ring, mate. It's not the money that matters. Mm. It's what the ring symbolises. That means what it stands for underneath. Hey, yeah, I, can I know. Have... I'm not thick. Because, I mean, think about it. Not everything's what it seems on the surface. I mean, look at Aid Critchley. Everyone thinks he murdered Maxine Peacock. <laughs> That's enough about Aid Critchley. I don't want to hear his name mentioned in this house. I'll get it. Yeah, but... Ma I mean it, Sarah. When I think of the harm that wicked boy's caused in his short life, the subject's closed. Morning. Morning. Hiya. Uh, do you fancy walking to school with me? Uh, yeah, she does. Thank you, Todd. You're dead right not wanting to marry the baby's father just cos you're pregnant. I mean... You're not just getting a husband, are you? You're getting all his family as well. I mean, I did. And my brother Peter, his fiancée, Shelley, she's called. Well, she's going to get all our lot. Actually, she had a bit of a preview yesterday. Oh, yeah? What happened yesterday? Well, she invited us for Sunday dinner. Mm. So there was, like, my mum, my dad, my gran, me and my boyfriend. And a little bit of bickering. And she just couldn't take it. I mean, I do not know what Peter sees in her. I don't really. Oh? Oh, she's so ordinary. I mean, not bad-looking, I suppose, but wet. Well, your brother must see something in her or he wouldn't be engaged to her. Yeah, well, what it is, I don't know, because he could do a lot better than that. Lucy's florist. No, we can't talk. Because there is nothing you can say that will make me change my mind. Hi, Peter. Four today. Hi, mate. How are you, young man? Hey. How is he? I don't know. I think he's missing his mum. Makes you wonder what damage it'll do, you know, and not having a... Yeah, well, no use worrying, Ash. You just keep him warm and fed and loved. Can't do more than that. I'll just be best I can for him. Yeah. Won't get any help from your dad, though. Sold another flat. Oh, that's brilliant. Well done. At the full asking price, too. Gail, somebody up there likes me. <laughs> somebody down here likes you, too. Mm. We'll sell all the flats now, no problem. I'll be able to repay the bank loan in full. We'll make a nice, tidy profit. So no more worries about whether we can afford our dream house or not, right? <laughs> so you and me have really got something to celebrate with our friends in the Rovers tonight. Yes, we do. Makes you think, though, doesn't it? There's poor Ashley. And here's us. Everything going right. No more money worries. Bail hostel scheme cancelled. Yeah, I wish that bail hostel scheme had never been thought of. You're right, girl. Well, it's not about justice or fairness. It's just blind chance. If you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I wish it had happened sooner. What? Scrapping the bail hostel. I wish it had happened weeks sooner. Well, at least it's happened now. So all's well that ends well. Do you want me to come with you to see Gail? Thanks, Archie, but I don't think so. Be like two red rags to a ball. <laughs> Kids. No matter how old they get, you never stop fretting about them. Makes you glad you're only the one. Yeah, well, I've got three myself. As well as David, I've got Sarah Lou, Nick. Ah, yes, well, David's your own, isn't he? That's what I mean by only the one. No, I don't know. Take Sarah. I've been in her life from her being a toddler. I never lived to be a hundred. She'll still feel like my kid. But that's what it's like when you take on a kid from being a little one when you take responsibility for them. So it makes you feel like they're yours. And I tell you this, Fred, I won't swap that feeling for a gold clock. Oh. Is it all right if I come in? What do you want? I want to talk. I'm still your mother, girl. Whatever's happened between us, I care about you. OK. Come in. Is he out? If you mean Richard, yes, he is. Good. <sighs> so, I can ask you, what about this bombshell of Sarah's, then? What? The test that Aidan Critchley told her about. Oh, sure, she's told you she's been to see him and what the solicitor said. Oh, just a minute. Are you telling me Sarah's visited Aidan Critchley in prison? Gail, now, don't be angry, please, because, um, what we know now is very important. The lad was drugged. No, it's not a tale. He's had tests done. 
Tess, the police did. You never let up, do you? Will you listen? The lad was drugged to the eyeballs on sleeping tablets, stuff that really knocks you out. I mean, they found that out by giving him a blood test. So he couldn't possibly have attacked Emily or killed Maxine, not when they said it happened. Somebody else must have done it and then made it look like that. But just stop this. Stop this now, before you bring Richard's name into this fairy story. Gail, I do understand that it is not easy for you, but you have got to start facing the fact that the man in this house is... Is my husband! That's what he is! And you'll stop at nothing to split us up! Oh, don't be so ridiculous! Come on, do you think I like telling you these things, seeing the way you look at me? He tried to kill Emily so he could get at the money. But then he killed poor Maxine because she walked in on him. You get out of this house. You get out now. The man is a killer, Gail. You are not safe and neither are the children. The point is, you went visiting Aidan Critchley. And what's more, you know you did wrong because you did it without telling me. I had to find out from somebody else. Who? Oh, Todd, I suppose. No, your grandmother. Well, she was on at me to tell you. I don't know why. Well, I do, so you peddle a mad fantasies about Richard. What's he got to do with Richard? Look, all A told me is that the police did tests on him, found drugs in his system, which shows that he couldn't have been... That's conscious. enough, Sarah. I'm sick of hearing how thugs like Aidan Critchley are misunderstood and innocent while hard-working, decent people are abused and slandered. And I'm disappointed in you, Sarah. Go in behind oh, me back. OK! OK, look, I'm going to go and give Bethany a bath. What did he claim he was drugged with? Sleeping tablets, tranquilizers. He did say it was, um, die, die as he saw it or other, I can't remember. Right. Go give Bethany a bath. Gail, something wrong? Oh, I didn't hear you come in. Somebody ill? Looking for the aspirin. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you sure we feel up to coming to our little farewell celebration at the Rovers tonight? Yeah, we'll be fine. Well, as long as you're sure. Hey, come on, sit down here. Let me find those aspirin for you. There you go. Whee! Strong boy, aren't you? It's going to be difficult on your own, you know. Don't oh, me on my own. But with Joshua. You know what I mean? Have you to go with the little lad? Feeding yourself and him, all the washing, keeping the house clean. There'll be a lot to do, is what I'm saying. Oh, will manage. You don't have to do this, Ashley. I mean, you're doing fine here. You've got help, you've got backup. I don't want to stop where one of us isn't wanted. See, you're making too much of this. Now, will you stop that and talk to me? For goodness sake, can we not have speech about this in a reasonable manner? Oh, no. My mother's here. Don't let it upset you, Gail. Granted, they tried to blacken my name and drive a wedge between you That's exactly you and me. why it does upset me. But they haven't succeeded. That's the point. They've lost and I've won. Oh, hi, yeah. We've won, I should say. They can't hurt us. Once we move house, we'll not be around for them to annoy us with the whispering and the nasty books. All that will be behind us. Hey, hello, Gail Richard. You all right? Can I get you a drink? Oh, no, no, no. I'll get these, Martin. I insist. After all, it's our party. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelley, can you make sure everyone has a refill? Yourself included, of course. Oh, thanks, Rick. Nice to meet you. It's all right. It's it's all right. Just very good here. We've been talking about this house you're moving to. It sounds wonderful. Yes, you can tell why Gail thinks it's a dream house. Yeah, and I've told Kevin one day we want a house like that, don't we? Oh, and I've told Sally in that case. Going to have to keep them in a lot, right? <laughs> I mean, Steve could have had one of Richard's flats, rock bottom price, but uh, no, Steve knew best. Give it a rest, Karen, will you? Oh, a uh, nice bracelet, Gail. Is that a Christmas present? 
No, it was a present from Richard before we got married. Must be nice to have an husband that's got a head for business. Buys you really nice presents. Shame I can't say the same, eh? Steve. Grab hold of this, girl. Uh, won't be a minute. Uh, don't go away. Thanks. Look at him, surrounded by his admirers. That man got away with murder. It's a great pity you couldn't get through to Gail. But I'm sure you did your best. I might just as well have held my breath. I mean, she is besotted by the man. It was in the wrong in her eyes. But stop going on about Richard buying Gail presents with you. Well, when's the last time you bought me a bracelet? Oh, look. When's the first time you bought me one? Anyway, listen. Richard didn't buy that bracelet. I found it on the site when we were building the flats. And Richard, the cheeky beggar, said, oh, I know where that belongs to. It was the woman that came around to see the flats early. I'll make sure she gets it. Next thing, Gail's got it on her wrist. Shut up. I'm telling you. Tells lies for England, that bloke. At my time of life, a man's not making many plans. He's stacking stock. He's trying to make sense of what he's been and what he's done and what he's not done. One thing I didn't do and I regret it. I should have let you know I'll be your father sooner, a lot sooner. Yes, you should. You can't rewrite the past. So a man like me finds such comfort as he can in the present. And happen the future. The future after he's long gone. I'm trying to explain to you, Ashley, why when I found out I weren't Joshua's granddad by blood, why I were upset. A man likes to think summit of himself goes on. As I go on in you. I thought I did in Joshua, but I don't, and it were a blow. I'm sorry that I showed it. You love the little lad, I can see that. I want to do the same. And I will do the same, if you'll let me. Well, blood or no blood. I'm Joshua's dad in every way that matters. You might think I'm stupid now. But it were Maxine's, you see. Every time I look at him, I see her. And while I've got him, I've still got a bit of her. So I've not lost everything. Not everything. And I loved her, you know. I know. I mean, look at him, holding forth with all his admirers. <laughs> Oh, frankly, I can't stand any more of this. I'm going home. I don't want to be in the same room as him. Oh, Norris. Oh, drop your phone. You're the metal one. Uh, Ma'am. Oh. No, I'm sorry, Gail. I won't be congratulating you and Richard on your so-called dream house. I want to ask you something. Oh, well, yes. I absolutely loved being thrown out in the street by my own daughter. Is that what you wanted to know? What I wanted to ask was... when you were staying with us after the fire... What were the sleeping pills you had? They were called diazepam. What happened to them? I left them at your house. Come on, Archie. Oh, I know you won't believe me, but uh, it was diazepam that they found in Aidan Critchley's bloodstream. Uh, what's wrong? More trouble with your mother? Uh, nice, Richard. You and Gail aren't leaving, are you? Because we um, want a speech, don't no, we? No, yes, no. Yes, speech. Yes, speech. Yes, oh, no, no. Yes. Dress the bar, this should lubricate your tonsils. Come on, speech. Oh, the figure of speech. speech. Mm. Oh, well, uh, Gail, uh, we didn't expect all this, did we? Uh, well, the, um, the idea of having a few drinks here this evening was, uh, was just our way of, uh, of saying thank you to all our friends, people who we're going to miss. Good neighbours who, who turn to each other when there's trouble. We've been through some, some difficult times lately. Um, had a lot of nasty shocks. I don't think I need to dwell on the details. Um, we were close to losing our Sarah. I've had uh, business setbacks. Overcome now, I'm glad to say. We've had a lot of pressures. And through it all, I've had the unstinting support of my own princess, Gail. She's been my rock. And I, I want to say, and um, I mean this sincerely, I don't think there's 
a greater blessing in life a man could have than a, a wonderful and loving wife. Shell, like, here's a couple of scotches, will you? I'm sorry, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Not at all, Ashley. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was just getting a bit uh, sentimental. It's one of my biggest faults. Well, let me just um, finish uh, by saying that uh, we're not moving far. We don't want to go away from our friends. Uh, we'll be back frequently. Uh, Shelley, um, if you'd like to do the drinks again. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And so stay all the bus. And so stay all the bus. A toast to this little chap here, our Joshua. Long life, good health, and happiness to him. Your dad said, I'll flit him then, back to your house. Ah, uh, we've got to do it sometime. I'm not going to leave the adult yet. Fair enough, if your mind's made up. I've got a favour to ask you. Let me move in and all. Now, hang on, it makes sense, does this? If you go to shop, which in my view you need to, I'll be there to mind Joshua. Then when you come back of an evening, you take over, and I'll come over here to see all's well with the rovers. You see? I can be useful to you and to him. I'll be much obliged to you, Dad. <laughs> Do you know, girl, this little party's been quite an eye opener. I had no idea we were quite so popular. Hey, you okay? You look a bit under the weather. Richard, you said something this morning. We were talking about you selling another flat and the bail hostel scheme being cancelled. Yes. You said something like, why couldn't it have happened sooner? What did you mean? I'm sorry, I'm not with you. Well, suppose it had happened sooner. The bail hostel scheme being flung out. What difference would it have made? Oh. Well, for a start, it would have saved us weeks of worry, which I, for one, could have well done without. Oh. Is it a headache? Something's the matter, I know there is. Now then, you two, you must come and have a drink with me and Deirdre, Gail. No, I'm fine, thanks, Ken. Well, Richard, you can manage another. Come on, come on. No, I insist. Hey, come I insist. on, Richard, come, come on. and have a drink. Have, like? have a oh. short. Oh, uh, all right, uh, just a small brandy. All right, small brandy, please. No. Actually, it was a favour I wanted to ask you, Richard. We've got some savings that we'd like to put to better use, and they don't quite know where to go. Oh, thank you, that's quick. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Look, I hope this isn't an imposition, but we really would value your expert advice. I'm sorry, Ken, would you run that past me again? Um, it, in fact, um, could we have this conversation tomorrow? I've, uh, I've really got to go. Sure. Right. Mum, is that you? Yes, love. Everything all right? Yeah, I've just got Bethany off. David is fast asleep in bed, which is where I'm headed to have absolutely shattered. Good night, though. Sweet dreams. You left me at the pub. What's the matter? Those sleeping pills me mum had. She left them here the night she took off. What happened to them? Your mum's pills? Search me, you're going back weeks now. 
Wait a minute, I think I remember throwing them in the bin. Well, with kids in the house, you don't want that sort of thing lying around, do you? You had those pills. I saw you with them. It was the night Maxine was murdered. What is this, girl? What's bothering you? Something is. I'm wondering about things that have happened. All the trouble with me, ma'am. Oh, she's been putting the poison in, has she? That's it, isn't it? No, not just that. I saw the way you looked at Ashley tonight. Like you were seeing terrible things. Oh, come on, Gail. I have to know, Richard. I can't stand what I'm starting to think. Please, tell me the truth. I always tell you the truth, Gail. Please, please tell me the truth now, Richard. You didn't kill Maxine, did you? Did you? I won't lie to you, girl. Perhaps this is all for the best. Yes. It was me. Is this a joke? It's true. I'm so... Oh, no. Don't come near me. Okay. Okay. I didn't want to burden you with something like this. <laughs> no! Don't! It's an accident! No. Let me explain! No. Turn back the clock. But I can't. I can't. You say that. You say what you've just said and expect a shoulder to cry on. Then what do you expect? I just wanted to understand. How can I understand you? Stupid, stupid, Let me evil, explain. lying! She was a young mother, a whole life ahead. It was an accident! I could it be an accident? She was hit over the head with a crowbar. She wasn't supposed to be there. It was Emily you were after. No. My mum was right all along. It was aid. I wanted to get rid of aid. The scumbag who nearly killed our daughter. That was the main thing, to get rid of him. Let's not wake the kids. We don't want to get them involved, do we? No. I've done a terrible thing. I know that. And you've every right to be angry. But please, before you do anything else, let me tell you what happened. OK? OK. I found out that Sarah was taking aid, food and drink, from out of our fridge. After everything he'd done to her, she was still seeing him. I had to do something. in the garden. I forced my way into the house. But I swear to you, I never meant to kill anyone. You've got to believe that, Gail. I just meant to stage a robbery and leave enough evidence to get aid out of our Sarah's life once and for all. And you'd have thanked me for that when you were in that hospital and our Sarah was at death's door 
You'd have done anything to see Aidan Critchley rot in jail, wouldn't you? Yes. But that... And his parent would. It's what he deserves. But Maxine... No one deserves that. But it was an accident, I swear. She came back unexpectedly. Emily woke up. I panicked her. I lashed out. And I regret it to the day I die. But I just couldn't abide the idea of our Sarah being with Aidan Critchley. I wanted to protect her. You understand that, don't you? I just couldn't understand why she was still seeing him. Why she was attracted to scum like him. She gets it off her mother. You don't mean that. Don't I? I'm not scum. You're a killer. It was a mistake. You meant it. No. You meant to kill Emily Bishop. I didn't. You knew she was there. If you wanted to stage a robbery, why didn't you just wait till she'd gone home till everybody was asleep? I needed an alibi. To break into Maxine's house. No, you didn't. Who'd suspect you of that? I don't know, but I... You needed an alibi because you broke into that house to kill Emily Bishop. That was your intention all along. To kill an innocent old lady. To get aid. Because... That was the intention. With Emily dead, her house reverts to Keller Oldings. To me and you. Um, Archie, Norris, they were right all along. They knew what you were up to, and I was too stupid to see it. Old people have died. We've inherited their property, and I thought nothing of it. Anyone whose property we've inherited has died of natural causes. We've got a brand new car, a big new house, and it's all paid for with blood money. The riding's paid for it. How did you get it, Richard? You know how. Did anybody die? Mrs Lawson did. You know how the business works. She died of cancer. What do you think I did? Force feed her wood binds? What about Dougie Ferguson? What about him? One minute he's your business partner. You develop in the place together. The next he's lying dead at the bottom of the stairs. He fell. And Patricia. Missing for months. And tonight. I find out this thing, her bracelet, the thing you said she threw at you after an argument was actually found by Steve MacDonald. And where did he find it? At the building site. Because that's where she threw it at me. Liar! Where is she? Where is Patricia? What happened to Doggy? How many people have died because of those flats? Tell me the truth, Richard. Those flats were cursed from day one. Mrs Lawson died, like I told you, of natural causes. But then her son turned up, wanting his inheritance. I had nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to apologise for. When she signed that contract, she didn't have cancer. She had no intention of leaving that house to her son. She wanted to enjoy her retirement. So, she had a lump sum up front, and for the rest of her life, Kellett Holdings gave her a decent monthly income. And I don't care what the law says, Kellett Holdings had more right over that property than ever he did. And I knew I could really make something of it. I knew it could transform our life. So I arranged a bank loan and bought it off them. You bought it off yourself, for your own company? Got a good price for it, too. None of this is legal, is it? I'll tell you what is legal, Gail. For a son to let his mother die alone. For a son who couldn't be bothered to nurse his mother through a terrible illness to inherit her property after she was dead and buried. Now, that's not right, Gail. It may be legal, but it's not right. 
We deserved that property more than him, and I made sure we got it. <laughs> but then I got Dougie Ferguson involved. That was my big mistake. You warned me, Bar. I didn't listen. He made a mess of the foundations, and he was stealing all the original fittings. All my problems go back to him. So you killed him? No, no, I swear. On our kids' lives. He fell. I saw it. I, I was there. But I didn't do it. We had an argument. He leaned on a banister. It collapsed on him. It was his own shoddy workmanship that killed him. But I saw him lying there. And I knew he'd taken me for a fool. And I knew he had money. A lot of money. You robbed a dead man and left me to discover the body? I hated myself for it. I couldn't sleep for weeks. Well, it wasn't too long before cracks started appearing in the walls. <laughs> Forty-five grand that underpinning cost me. And then I found out about the bail hostel. That almost bankrupted us. And Dougie knew about it all along. <laughs> he ended up costing me far more than I ever got back off him. And he deserved everything he got. But you didn't kill him? No. What about Patricia? Did you kill her? Yes. <laughs> Girl, you don't know what a vicious, spiteful cow she was. She hated to see me doing well. She hated to see me with a family I'd always wanted. She had a decent divorce settlement, but she wanted more. She wanted me to, to buy her out of Kellett Holdings, but I couldn't afford it. I'd only just heard about the underpinning. We had the wedding coming up and the honeymoon. I was under a lot of pressure. She kept on pushing, pushing, demanding money. Insulting you, threatened to expose the company, tried to blackmail me. She threatened our whole future. I had to stop her. What did you do? It wasn't planned or anything. What did you do? Hit her with a spade. She's buried in the foundations of the flats. That's why Steve McDonald found the bracelet there. Must have uh, slipped off during the struggle. It was, it was heat of the moment stuff. It was done in anger. But I killed her. There's no getting away from that. And killing her made it easier to think about killing again. I thought I knew you. You do. You know every terrible detail now. What am I going to do? Turn me in if you like. I won't stop you. There's the phone. But before you do, think about it. You and the kids will have to live with the stigma of this forever. You'll be alone. I'll be in prison. It won't bring Maxine back. And it won't help Ashley and his baby. So maybe the best thing is to keep it a secret. To protect David and Sarah and Bethany from it. It's all I ever wanted to do. Protect my family. To be everything my dad wasn't. Everything I've done is for you, Gail. I might be a killer, but, but I did it for you. I've Killed for you, Gail. Would any man you've ever known do that? Did Brian or Martin love you that much? They didn't even love you enough to stay with you. They betrayed you. Like most men do. With their seedy little affairs. But I would never do that to you. If you live for a thousand years... You'll never find anyone who loves you more than me. 
It's like that quote from my wedding speech. The one about our marriage being like a pair of scissors. Joined so we can be separated. Sometimes moving in opposite directions. But woe betide anyone who comes between us. You remember that? That's us. That's what this is all about. Some people got in our way. Threatened our future. I had to get rid of them. I'm not proud of it. But what's done is done. And it will never happen again. Are you sure? Positive. Because I've got all I ever wanted. All I need is for you to stand by me. If you can do that, you and me will be so special. We'll leave this tatty street behind and we'll live happily ever after. So, it's up to you, Gail. This. All that. You'll need some time to think about it. I understand that. I mean, it a lot to take in. I'll, uh, I'll put the kettle on. I don't need time to think about it. What are you going to do? you love me. How you did it all for me. It's true. You tried to kill my mother. I didn't. She was right about Emily, right about Patricia. Why shouldn't she be right about you setting fire to our house? I was with you that night. I was asleep that night. You could have slipped out. I didn't believe for a second that you did, which is how you got your alibi. But you did, didn't you? Admit it. You messed with her mind and set fire to her house, didn't you? Her mind was going anyway. Well, you better get going, cos I'm going to ring the police. No! <coughs> Don't be scared. Just let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Do you think I can forgive what you've done? What you did to me, ma'am? She's had her life. Would you forgive someone who tried to kill your mother? I would have thanked him in the end. You know how she suffered. You know what I went through. In the final year or so, it would have been a kindness. So you were doing her a favour? What's she got to look forward to? She's 62. And her best days are behind her, just like Emily Bishop's. And what lies ahead? Disease, illness, a slow, painful decline. You don't know what it's like, Gail. I've been there. I've seen it. You're not just evil. You're sick. Do you know that? Getting old these days. It's a nightmare. Pension systems at it. Care for the elderly's a joke. Too many old people, not enough young people to support them. So you bump them off and steal their money? I just put my family first, like every other animal on the planet. Natural instinct, Gail. Survival of the fittest. And what happens when you get old? I wouldn't want to be a burden on my kids. You've got no kids! I, I like to think of them as mine. Why not? You were too good to last. They never will be. It was just a row. You heard what she said. You'll be good. She didn't mean it. 
She won't get better than him. Not at her age. What do you think they're arguing about? I don't know. I bet he's gone in the morning. Should we go down? No. They'll just send us back up. Leave him to it. What a perfect father you are. I'll try my best. Oh, you'll never be like your father. What your family means to you. It means everything to me. Oh, yeah. You'll do anything for the kids. Literally anything. Yet you've got none of your own. Why's that? Just the way things worked out. Did they go the same way as Marion? I never killed Marion. I would never harm a child. Take some explaining, Mr. Family Man. Three wives, no children. And you, we never even discussed it properly, did we? Well, our age... No, I was pleased with it. I don't want any more. But you... Why wouldn't you? It wasn't even on the agenda. Never has been, has it? Stop it, Gail. It's not me you love. It never has been me. It's the ready-made family. And you love it because you can't make one of your own. No! <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. You sounded like Patricia. <laughs> Things she used to say. She blamed me because I didn't tell her before we got married. But I didn't know. I thought it was Marion's fault. We'd been trying for years. Then Mum got sick. But Marion wouldn't help. It was a baby she wanted to care for. Not a senile old pensioner. So she left me. <laughs> but I didn't know it was my fault. Patricia wouldn't believe that. And she never forgave me. That you've got to. I love you. I love you so much. And I don't care what you say. I always will. And I would never do anything to hurt you. All the kids. Ever. What's going on? You all right, Mum? You. I would never hurt your mother. It's all right, love. Just got a few things to sort out, that's all. Go to bed. Are you sure? Yes. Go on. And don't come down again. Are you just saying this? No. Go on. You got school in the morning. I'm dealing with it. Well, we'll keep the noise down then, because you're going to wake Bethany up at this rate. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good night now. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. What for? Not telling them. They'll find out. They don't need to. I've made my decision. You'll make them live with the stigma? I'd rather they live with the stigma forever than live with you for another second. Gail, I know I scared you just now. But you can trust me, I swear. 
No one else will ever get hurt. And now it's out in the open. There's no need for any more lies. I'll always be loyal to you. Oh, yeah. You'll never have a seedy little affair. But you might hit me in the face with a shovel. No. Never. You think your dad running off with another woman's a worse crime than clubbing someone to death? You're twisted. You're Norman Bates with a briefcase. And I don't want you living under the same roof as my family. You're not in any danger. How could I ever be sure of that? I promise. Please, Gail, we can get through this. Bankruptcy we could have got through. There's a million normal problems we could have got through. If you'd have been honest with me. I was ashamed. I, I felt like a failure. I could have lived with a failure. Wouldn't have mattered. I did love you, Richard. This. How can I live with this? I can't live without you. If you're going to the police, I might as well be dead. Suits me. Good riddance. Don't say that. You don't mean that. I do. Please. It's over. I love you. I hate you. I hate you! It's over. Mom? Sarah, I can't. Please just, just leave me. Please see to Bethany. Please. You'll try on what we tell you to. Too right. I'm not taking the whole day off work to watch you try on dull wedding dresses. <laughs> we want frills, nets and petticoats. Yes. I think the cost of your wedding is going up by the word over there. Probably. Shelley, love, are you all right on your own? I promised our Ashley a single lullaby. It's a bit old 
for that, Annie. Not him, our Joshua. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Well, they never sailor? came back, did they? Huh? Gail and Richard. No. A bit rude, leaving their own party, don't you think? Oh, don't ask me, Norris. I'm not supposed to go poking my nose into other people's business. Look, I never said that. All I said was whatever's going on for them is their business, no one else's. Well, I only said there's more to some people than meets the eye. Oh, yeah, it's Richard Hillman. No, Angela and Tommy Nelson. Oh, really? Look, why is everyone obsessed with gossiping about other people's families? Because gossip's always more exciting than what's really going on, isn't it? Everything felt right. The flats. The house. Should have seen that house. Had one of them baths with taps in the middle. No taps end. Couldn't be more perfect. Oh, where are they? The police, they should have come straight round. I didn't ring them. What, you haven't rung them? Why ever not? Oh, they should be out there looking for him, oh, Gail. Everything felt right. Not just the house. Us. We felt right. Listen, will you just listen to me, please? I know your head's all over the place. Of course it is, I know that. What would I tell them? The police. What he's done. What he is. What he is? No. Oh, I'm going to phone him. I don't want them around here. Everybody know him. Well, I'm taking you to him, then. No. No, ma'am, please. No. Gail, come on. Come on, now. You and I have fallen out enough over this. Now, trust me, my darling. I've had a lot longer to get used to the idea than you. Gail, the man has done some absolutely terrible things. He's got to be found. I phone Martin. He can come and sit with the kids. What will you tell him? Well, whatever you want. Nothing if you don't want to. You can go and sit in the car. You don't need to say anything. Oh, sweetheart, come on. I'll be with you. You've got to do this, Gail. If not for you, then, then for the children. And for me. He's moving in. <laughs> well, he has come round. Hey, that's great news. I couldn't believe when my dad said it. I really thought he was washing his hands with a pair of us. Nah, he wouldn't do that. Right. Uh, my wife expects to change his mind, though. I couldn't cope with any more nasty surprises. Ashley! He's still scraggling. I reckon he weren't tired. Oh, look, what lullaby, then? I don't know if he found the actions a bit distracting. I'll get that! Well, he's bound to come to you if Joshua's not settling. You're the lad's father. Don't read things into it. I'll go and see to him. <laughs> Martin, what? for you, Audrey. Yeah. So much for switching me phone off for a quiet pint. Uh, divorced a woman, mate. Mother in laws for life. Shall I know? If you fancy asking your soon-to-be-in-laws to stop after, then that's fine. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, you make your own family, don't you? It's cause for celebration. Oh, thank you. Uh, what, what, what was it Audrey wanted? What's going on? Where's Gail? She's in the car. What's going on? Just look after the kids. They're upstairs. I'll explain later. Thanks, lovey. We well, just want to pay for the flowers. Yeah, look, I don't think we're going to do out special about flowers, Dad. Are we now? Should need a bouquet. Well, that's a lovely gesture. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, I think it's time we were going. Oh, no, no. Fred says we can stay for afters. Kind of a family drink for my uh, in-laws to be. Oh. Very nice. It's a bit of a turnaround, isn't it? Weren't you your husband's alibi for the fire at your mother's house? I thought he was with me all night. But he slipped out while I was sleeping. So I'm dragged out of bed? To be told that not only have you changed your mind about that, but that now he's murdered his ex-wife and Maxine Peacock as well? Have you and Miss Fillman had any kind of domestic problems recently? Domestic pro... Will you look at the state of her? She's not making this up. He confessed it all. Maxine, the fire. 
Look, we told you months ago to look into his ex-wife's disappearance, me and Archie Shuttleworth. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember. And I remember looking a fool. But it became quite clear that Patricia Ullman had good reasons to make herself scarce. And she's probably tucked up in bed somewhere, fast asleep. Like I should be. She isn't. She's dead. She came asking for more money. Demanding money, so he... He killed her. It's OK. It's OK. Come on. Look, we went through all this the last time. With you and your friend, Mrs Roberts. Patricia Hillman had reason to disappear. And if she was dead, there would be a body. There is. He buried her. And he told me where. Mmm. Oh, well, that's gone straight to my head, so I think I'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all very well, this drinking all night, but when you get to our age, when it gets round about ten o'clock, you start craving a cup of tea and bed. Hey, <laughs> speak for yourself. And I am speaking entirely for myself. <laughs> Where's Peter? I'm gonna find him and tell him I'm going home and Ken's going out clubbing. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. It's me again. Oh, come on, Luce, pick up, please. Look, I don't think you're being fair. I need an answer. We need to talk, Lucy. Please, please. Right, we're off now. Okay. Listen, remember what I said about the flowers? It's going to be an important day for us too, you know. See ya. Good night. This is Detective Inspector Monnery. <laughs> Mrs Hillman, I know this is difficult, but I need you to go through again everything you've been telling the detective. No, I need to get back to my children. The inspector needs to hear what your husband said. What if he comes back and I'm not there? He's very unlikely to be coming back. But if it makes you feel better, we can move the children. Is it somewhere you prefer him to be? Well, yes, yes, it can go to mine. We'll send the car. I'm coming with you. Uh, perhaps, Mrs Roberts, you could go? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not leaving her. She'll be fine with us. Yes, ma'am, please. You go. But don't tell the kids. Not yet. OK, OK, love. And I'll come straight back as soon as I've sorted them at mine. All right? So they'll be fine. Your mother seems a very capable woman. He tried to kill her. My own ma'am. All I did was punish her. How has this happened? You find him. You get out there and you find him. You know what, I was awake. Her snoring kept me up. What's he done? Ignore the wife. It's a bit funny when she's been woken up. Actually, she gets a bit funny all the time. You recognise this? <gasps> yeah. Richard Elman picked it up at the site when we were underpinning the flats. Gail's been showing it off to us all night. Well, what's happened? She found out it's nicked and killed him or something. No, not like that. Do you think you'll be able to remember where Mr Hillman picked it up? I reckon so, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, acting really weird. Not just about the bracelet in general, that's why it's uh, stuck in my mind, really. We need to locate the exact spot in which it was found. What for? We've reason to believe there may be a body buried there. Now, go and get some clothes together, you two. We're going to stay at mine. Go on. Well, is my mum OK? She's fine. Look, um, and get Bethany ready as well. I'll explain it all when we get there. Off you go. Where is she? Go on, kids. Do as your grand says. Go on now. Audrey, what's going on? The kids think Rich has left, has he? If people had just listened to me, Martin. I mean, I said he was dangerous. I warned Gail, didn't I? I mean, if they'd just believed me, Maxine would still be alive. Maxie? And what's she got he to do with... He killed her. It was Richard. Oh, Audrey. You don't have to take my word for it, Martin. You can ask the police. They're outside. No. 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 Not my kids. Living with a killer. 
I'm not hearing this, Audrey. Aye, barmaid. <laughs> Servicing here is hopeless. Shell, come, come sit down for a minute. No wonder he's dead. <laughs> what do you want? What's up? What's up? Hmm? You know I love you, don't you? I should hope so, because you're going to marry me, aren't you? And you've got everything going for you. You're beautiful, you're funny. Keep going. <laughs> you're one of the most kind-hearted people that I've ever met. It sounds like you're going to propose to me again. Well, you can't do that because you proposed to me already, haven't you? <laughs> I have. I have, yeah. Oh. There's so much to do out there. Is something going on? Only my fiancé proposing to me. Sorry, to me again. We could have a double wedding. No, no, the police. See, I saw from the bedroom window there's police cars out there. Oh, come on, come on, let's have a nose, come on. Ooh. Why are the police taking us? What's going on? Yeah, the police are helping to find Richard. Why is he OK? Yeah, just be patient, Axel, and I'll talk to you when I've had a chance to speak to you. Man. Just get in the car, all right? Has something happened to Richard? Look, we'll explain it all when your mum gets home. Yeah, but why is he? Please, Sarah, my love, no. Come just on. wait till then. I don't want David getting the press call. In the car. Right, OK. I'll lock up here and uh, see you over at yours, all right? All right. Thank you. I thought there were a lot of car doors banging for this time of night. Audrey! What's happening? Is everything all right? Can't tell now, Fred. I'm sorry. It, it's Richard, isn't it? What's Richard? Well, what's he done now? Please, just let me get these kiddies to mine. Oh, come on. Whatever's going on is now to do with us. They don't need more rubberneckers. It was all open round here to a couple of metres. And the bracelet, where was that? Uh, that was over there. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I know this sat there at the back yeah. of my hand. The bracelet was on the edge of the trench the day we were filling it in. We'd hardly seen him all week. The day the concrete arrived, we couldn't get rid of him. If I were you, I'd, uh, I'd start digging about here. All right. George? Can we get the digger in, please? As deep as we can. Let's go. I'll make us a drink. What do you mean? Well, David loved Richard. So? Well, it, it doesn't seem right somehow. All of us getting him wrong. It's all very wrong. Where's this come from? He's confessed, he admitted it. Yeah, but why would he do that? Because it's true, that's why. But he's been under a lot of pressure lately. <sighs> Maybe things are getting to him more than he's let on. I mean, I just... Get it right in my head. One of us should have picked something up, but we didn't. None of us did. Well, one of us did, me. Gail. Oh, you're not having doubts now, surely. I know it's early, but I thought you might pick up if you thought it was somebody else. I need to know, Luz. I need to know if you'll marry me. No, look, I haven't had a chance to tell her, have I? <sighs> Shell. Shell, why don't you come sit down? I know it's terrible, but I could rattle her, I really could. Well, after what you've been through. <sighs> yeah, well, it's the kids, though. She wouldn't let me tell them the truth because she wanted to do it herself. Well, yeah. And now she won't tell them because it may not be true. Oh, gee, well, what do they make of it all? Yeah. Well, they know it's serious because uh, we've kept them off school. And they know the police are looking for Richard. And they're worried someone's happened to him. <laughs> worried. <If> only... <laughs> Hello, Martin. Yeah. Toast. 
Oh, no, I don't think I could, love, thank you. Oh, not you, Star. Kids are sat staring at the breakfast as if someone's growing on it. <laughs> Look, uh, why don't I take them out for a couple of hours, you know, give you a break? Oh, Archie, would you? Well, uh, I'll see if I can persuade them. Thank you. <laughs> Davey's not said a word all morning. Oh, poor little lad. I'll tell you what, if I ever see that man again... I can't believe I was about to wave my kids off to start a new life with him and all the time the old flaming thing's off its head. Mm. Your dad would have been dead proud to give me away and all. You're bound to think of it, love, when you're planning your wedding. Yeah. I just don't know I'm going to get to do it. I suppose it would have been Dougie if it's open around. Gonna be in the way things are going. Well, what about your mum? I mean, why does it always have to be a bloke who gives the bride away? I saw that. How's your headache? Fred! I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm coming back. Okay, thanks. Well, work could give me a couple of days off. Well, you didn't say anything, did you? What did you tell them? Uh, that my kids need me. Is that all right with you? Come on, he's upset as well. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come through. Thanks. Oh. Have you found her body? No, not yet. She wasn't there? There's no body? Well, we don't know yet. The foundations of that building, well, they're very deep and it's a delicate process. We'll keep you informed. What about Richard? Well, we've got officers all over the country looking for him. Ports and airports are alert here. Well, we'll find him. I'm just, uh, just sorry there's not more news. We'll keep you updated. OK, thanks anyway. I'll show you out. Thank you. Uh, so you let us know. Look, I'm sorry being short with you. It's a lot to take in. Yes, it is. But we need to tell the kids, explain everything. They need to know the truth. Well, one thing at a time, when the police have news. Well, there's no point in upsetting them till then. Gail! You don't really think he's made it all up, do you? Well, last night, when he was telling me, it all made sense. It was like watching him turn into another man in front of my eyes, but... When I go over it in my mind, uh, he only confessed because I pushed him and pushed him. Well, of course. But well, why else would he confess, Gail? Well, he could be sick. Something wrong with his mind. Saying what he thought I wanted to hear because I was pushing him. Oh, so many lies. How can I know what was true? I'd be telling Norris. Oh, look, it's not some cheap bit of gossip, you know. I bet it's right round the factory now, isn't it? Hey, Norris, you've got a prime spot there, haven't you? Well, uh, Audrey and I had him down as a killer all along. But would people listen? <laughs> to think poor Emily could have been saved all this suffering. And as for Maxine Peacock... Well, it wasn't Maxine Peacock he buried at the flats, though, was it? Buried at... What, what, what's this? Well, he must have bumped somebody else off. The Dibbles had Steve out of bed, pointing at where the grave would be. Well, not, not, not at the flats where he threatened me. You all right, sweetheart? Not really, no. Oh, what's the matter? What's up? I want to know what's happening. One minute, Mum's still angry with you because of all the things you've accused Richard of. Next minute, Richard's disappeared and you two are talking again. Why did you tell me to let my mum know about the drugs he found in Aid's system? It has something to do with Richard, doesn't it? No, my darling, just listen. What's going on, Gran? What did Richard do? No, just take listen. Why don't to you me just me. ring his mobile? Maybe if I told him that I like the new house. David, you... please! Mum, did Richard kill Maxine? You what? Who told you that? Nobody! No one's telling us anything! Richard killed Maxine? Did he? We don't know anything for sure. Oh, get for goodness sake. Not our Richard. Not Richard. Go through. Dad, what's going on? Richard didn't kill anybody, did he? Sarah, go see to Bethany. 
No. Sarah, go on! David, go with her! I am staying here! Just say what they have to Gail. say! Gail, just, just let her know. Right, go on. We found a body. In the exact spot your husband said it would be. Wait, a body? A dead body? And we've reason to believe it's Patricia Hillman. <sighs> I really don't believe that a nice man like that could go around killing people. Oh, yeah. I never trusted him. Oh, you could see it. Dead smimey. It's still only tittle-tattle, Janice. I mean, the evidence they have against that boy, it couldn't have been strong if they'd caught him in the house. Well, according to me... Uh, hiya, love. All right. How are you doing? Hiya, all right. Hiya. Haley reckons cos he had a tie and a big smile, he can't be a murderer. Well, I'll mention that theory to the investigating officers. I'll see you later, love, yeah? Right. Obviously, I'm not saying it's confidential. Oh, don't worry. Norman wants to know everything and all. At least it's something we can talk about without arguing. Well, it had to be him, any road. Nobody else has buried their wife under them flats, have they? What are you asking me for? Well, you're Steve with her, weren't he? No, what are you asking me for when you hadn't had one friendly word to say to me for weeks? There have been developments in the investigation into your wife's death, Mr Peacock. We've discovered a body uh, under a block of flats owned by Richard Hillman. What's that got to do with Maxine? Well, apparently Mr Hillman told his wife that, that he also killed Mrs Peacock. No, Couldn't it? Well, that critically you said. All the evidence, it had to be him. Yeah, we obviously need to speak to Mr Hillman. But as you may have heard, well, he's just disappeared. You mean you made a complete pig's ear of it in first place? The evidence was overwhelming. His flaming mother-in-law saw through it. Yeah, his, his wife didn't. Well, Maxine... He had not against her. It seems his intended victim was Mrs Bishop. But your wife, well, she walked in on the attack. Oh, Ashley. I'm that sorry. You do know he spoke at the funeral. We were grateful. Moved. He didn't just kill her, he made a mockery. He's taken everything. That's our grum. Gail, you know we can't send them to school. They've been through enough. Last thing they want is all them endless questions. Oh, and uh, Martin's coming over to take Bethany to nursery. Well, maybe we'd better think about going home today. No, well, there's no rush. Uh, let's wait till everything's settled, shall we? Eh? I know this has been a shock, but I promise you, if Richard was going to hurt us, he'd have done it by now. He cares so much about us all. I'm sure when he's had time to think about it, he'll just give himself up. Are you going somewhere? No, I thought you were supposed to be meeting Sunita. Yeah, I am, but the shops aren't even open yet, and I'm sure even your more serious punters don't want to put bets on at this time. No, uh, no, I've got to meet uh, Richie Orney, you know him, up in town. Oh. Hiya. Well, you best get going now. Right, OK, see ya. Aren't you even interested in what kind of dress I'm going to buy? Well, I love you. Yeah, of course I am. It's just, uh, I thought that was supposed to be bad luck. Don't you think it's more than bad luck not to show an interest? Oh, OK, all right, I'm sorry. Go on, then. No, it's all right. Get going. I'll tell you about it tonight. And you've got to sit there and listen. <laughs> Henley, uh, they, 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 they were looking for you. There's no need to be concerned, Mrs. Bush. Two police officers come looking for me. It's, it's difficult not to be. I suppose you've heard that Richard Hillman's ex-wife's body's been found. The thing is, Emily, he told Gail that it was him who attacked you and Maxine. It, it, it's all right. No. No, no, it can't be. 
He was so nice, so thoughtful. I trusted him. Are you sure? Uh, hey, yeah, love, on the house. Cheers. Are you all right, Emily Love? Hey, have you caught him yet? Vera, um, could you give us a minute, please? Oh, charming. It was Richard. We don't think there's any danger to you now. We just thought you had a right to know. You were right, Norris. I was the target all along. I can't be sure of that, Mrs Bishop. Oh, I think we can. I think we can be very sure. Do you excuse me? I... I think I want to be alone. Oh, hey. oh. Oh, Emily. A bacon butty. You've had no breakfast. Did you hear what he said? Aye. It makes no... Her Audrey knew, but Gail didn't. Well, you were her husband. And every time Audrey said out, it was Gail that said she were going mad. She didn't believe her own mother. She said she didn't. Where are you going? I think I'm out to answers. Ashley! Look, I keep telling you. All I want is to speak to someone who can tell me what's happening to Aidan Critchley. If they'd listened to us from the start, that poor lad wouldn't be sharing a cell with robbers and rapists now. What do you mean, us? Could you get them you were all for putting a noose round his neck when they caught it. Apparently, anyone who was involved in the case is out working on it. Keeping their heads down, you mean? Embarrassed they didn't believe you either. Oh, love, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. And I'll bet a lot of other people will be and all. Well, thank you, but this isn't about me, it's about justice. If there is any justice, you'll end up with a medal. <laughs> anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to meet Sunita and we're going to help Shelley to look for a wedding dress. I don't suppose you want to come? Do you think I've got nothing better to do? There's folk round here with humble pie to eat, after what they said about our Kenneth. And I'm going to make quite sure they get very large helpings. Did you hear that? Not only is she going to put you up for a medal, you're our Kenneth now. There's been no sightings. Nothing. What about the ports? Airports? Well, according to the police, his passport's still at the house. Well, <laughs> Ashley. I've had the police sound. I'm so sorry. I want to know. Uh, just take no, it easy, okay. eh? What can I tell you? You must have known. I wish I had. She kept telling you, but you wouldn't even listen to her. I reckon I know why. Ashley, mate. You just stay out of this. Because it can only be one answer. You had to know you had to. You could have stopped Maxine from being killed, but you didn't do a flaming thing. <laughs> Sorry, Audrey, it just, it, it just ran off. My mum didn't know, honest. Dwan, please, will you tell him? Yeah, go on. Tell me. You don't really mean what you're saying, Ashley. Just looking for someone to hurt, which you are doing. She laughed him all along. How could he try to set fire to your house without her even knowing? Do you think I'd say nothing if I knew he tried to kill me, Mum? I'm Maxine. You remember Maxine, don't you? Of course you do. You were there at the funeral when your husband got up and told the whole world how lovely she was. Oh, but you didn't think. Where was he for them ten minutes? Fifteen. How long it took him to bash her head in? You leave her alone! Jewel it, mate. Jewel it. Are you still covering for him while he gets away, oh, are you? Come on, I think this is doing no good. Please, I'm so sorry. Sorry? Sorry for what? Sorry that you don't get to play happy families in your big new home well away from me and our Joshua! I best go after him. <laughs> now, I quite like the idea of gold. Um, well, I sort of set my heart on white, really. I do. But it's different, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Can I help you, ladies? Oh, um, we're looking for wedding dresses. I think you should probably work that out. Uh, <laughs> modern, traditional, formal headdress tiara. Oh, uh, don't know, but I think I'll know when I see it. What about mother? Any ideas? I'm not a mother. <laughs> I'm a twin, though. <laughs> <laughs> we do a full range, formal, of course. 
anything uh, casual can be purchased at a non-specialist establishment. If you see a style you like and it doesn't fit, we can tailor it. Only it would help if you don't suddenly go on a crash diet or start eating two packets of chocolate whole meals a day. Why would you do that? I've seen it too often. Either starving themselves, even if they're matchstick thin, or comfort eating and ending up two stone heavier than when they walked in here. And for what? Some ne'er-do-well who'd rather be with a field full of sheep than at home. Are you married? Uh, living with someone. You give him 22 of your best years. Then suddenly he tells you he's off to be a crofter on the Isle of Mull with 50 sheep. Oh, and by the way, your baggage not wanted on voyage. You know, I don't think I'll bother. Take no notice of me, dear. By the time you're walking down the aisle, your groom will be whimpering with gratitude at the vision of loveliness that's agreed to be his wife. Oh, whimpering. I do love whimpering. <laughs> do you know what? I really like that one. Oh, oh. Shelley, that's yeah. fabulous. Ladies, this is the first day of a very long haul. We need to concentrate. Focus. Right. The tail of the tape. I thought he said whole. Not Mull. I couldn't understand why they needed shepherds in Hull. Do you ever get tempted to attach a tag to one of these buttonholes saying it's not too late? Or, or he's sleeping with the bridesmaids. <laughs> All three of them. <laughs> Would you get married again? Well, I'm already married to Robert. No, I mean down the line. Nah. Nah, I've been there and I've done that. What about this guy now? He's tall, dark, handsome. Dev? Oh, I don't know where that's going, if anywhere. Anyway, it's you that's been proposed to. Well, when a guy finds out you're pregnant after he's asked one way or another, is it mine, he does either one of two things. Either he offers to pay for an abortion or he offers to marry you. <laughs> either way, you can't rely on them to put the money where their mouth is. So a second, you're still saying no? As far as I'm concerned, it's me and the baby. And you know what they say? Two's company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be about an hour, yeah? Yeah, yeah. See you later. Yep. See ya. Oh. Bye. Bye. Lucy's florist. Hi, Mandy. No, I, I just thought you might be someone else. <laughs> no, no, not a customer. It's just there's a, there's a guy that's been pestering me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, if somebody's just come in. I've got to go. Yeah, bye. I'll tell you what. She makes a flaming good guard dog, our Tracy. She's only gone round the corner. She'll be back any minute. Well, we'd best not let her back in then, had we? If I want promotion, I've got to go on this course for me. Yeah, if you want promotion. Oh, don't start that again. You know I do. Don't let me go back and apologise and you're wasting your breath. Let's go home, Ashley. Have a cup of tea. And another thing. The pub. It's not my home. I need to get back to the house. Ah, uh, you say? No. I mean now as soon as I can. You used to do this when you were little. If I'd told you off or stopped you watching television. We had a big row once about Doctor Who. Cyberman. <laughs> Gave me nightmares. Oh. Wish that was all that was stopping me sleeping now. Yeah, well, good thing about nightmares is that you wake up. So, am I awake now? Still seems like a nightmare to me. Oh, come on. You know, um, what Ashley said, I never believed that. Oh, you said it once, ma'am. Said I must be in on it. And I was wrong. Now, come on. We both said things that we can't be proud of, haven't we? But that man has done some terrible things, Gail. And they can't be undone. Maybe there are a few things that we can put right. Really? Mum, I love that man with all my heart. I thought he was what I waited all my life for. And I had to listen to him tell me he was a murderer. That people 
people that died for us. There's a large part of me wishing he'd killed me too. But you know, I still don't think he'd do that. He couldn't. For how long? How long before you did something or one of the kids to upset him? I mean, do you think you'd feel safe then? <laughs> the man's a psychopath, a deranged psychopath. I mean, he's not just killed people, he's ruined people's lives. I still think there's something wrong with his mind. Yeah, of course there's something wrong with his mind. It's a monster. Oh. You've got five minutes. Oh, don't I even get a coffee or anything? Well, if you want me to spend five minutes making it, your choice. I love you, Luce. I never stopped loving you. Well, I, I for one, am relieved to be even standing here today, because it, it took me to... Well, I can only think of it now as the house of death. Oh, yeah. yeah it showed me exactly where Dougie Ferguson died. Yeah, it makes you wonder if that were an accident, doesn't it? If, if, if I'd taken my eyes off him from one second, I could have been under those foundations myself, but I didn't, you see. I looked him straight in the eye, defied him to do his worst. Take it you've apologised for doubting him. Oh, yes. No, I, 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 I should, think you should be asking yourselves. If I hadn't been on to him from the very start, how many more would he have killed? Well, I thought, me lucky stars, it could have been me and our Jap next. Well, why should it be? Our money's invested. I mean, if that happens to us, he doesn't see a penny, especially with our talents around. Left to Emma Watts and her cronies, he'd have got clean away with it. It's only because I nagged Ken into checking the lad's story that Hillman ended up confessing. All this business, Angela, it must be terrible for you. I mean, it's bad enough for the rest of us, but with everything you've been through... Tommy reckons we're jinxed. He reckons that we should let people know and then get towns to pay us not to go and live there. <laughs> <laughs> but he can see the funny side. Well, we've had enough of the other side. After that, all you can do is laugh. It's all right. No, fine. I forget how resilient they are. <laughs> what is it then? What can I say to you? How can I tell you I'm sorry? Oh, it doesn't matter. I can't believe how I've hurt you. <laughs> Neither could I. But, oh, anyway, no buts. This has been the worst time of my life, Gail. Losing Alf, losing Alma. I mean, yeah, they were dreadful times, but... Losing you. Oh, I'm so sorry. And you never even gave me a chance, did you? Not once. You believed him. You believed Richard. Gail, you didn't even give me half an hour. Not with an open mind. Not with any love for me, really. Respect, even. I was so convinced you were ill. And now you've not even said I told you so. You were there for me and the kids. No questions. The second I asked. Gail, I'm your mum. You know, I've been thinking that I should have called the police first. Never entered my head. I wanted my mum. A mum I don't deserve. Hey, come on, lady. Plenty of times in the past when I wasn't there for you, eh? Too busy having a good time. Let's say we're evens, eh? No. I'll never be able to make it up to you. My darling, that is the whole point. You don't have to. Come. <laughs> cool. 
I look all right. He's uh, my partner's son. She loves him. Mm, you don't approve. Well, me and Peter haven't always seen eye to eye, but he makes her happy. Tell her. Shelley, you look absolutely gorgeous. He's a lucky fella. What do you think? Well, I think it's really nice, but I prefer the one we tried on a couple of hours ago. This, this is not just about the baby. This is about us because I came to see you before all that. Do you remember? Come on, you must do. You must know that I want you. And you just expect that I want you? No! Of course not, no! Peter, what happened that time when you came round before you found out? What? I told you to go back to Shelley. Well, yeah, but look... Look, this has nothing to do with Shelley, Luce. This is about me and you and our baby. I never even intended for you to find out. Doesn't that tell you something? Luce, I hurt you. I know I did. But look, all I'm trying to say is that I love you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you and our baby. I don't know, maybe we can have more babies. I don't know. I don't care as long as I'm with you. Do you understand? But what about Shelley? It doesn't matter about Shelley. But what if I turn you down? Are you going to go back to her? You won't turn me down. Luce, I know you're not going to turn me down because we're too good together. And yes, I admit, I was wrong. I made a mistake. Big time. And now I want a chance to put that right. So what can... Marry me. I mean, what else can I say? Answer me. Honestly, Peter. Honestly. If I wasn't pregnant... Would yes, you... yes. And I keep saying it. When will you believe me? I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you and our baby. Now, Lucy, please. Please. Get down on one knee. Do it properly. Go on. Lucy Richards, will you marry me? I must be mad. But yes. <laughs> <laughs>